Rally X is brought to you by Cooper Tires, Olsbergs, and Thorns and Keel. Dagen är kort och det är alltid mycket som ska göras. Saker som de flesta inte tänker på. Sånt som får samhället att fungera och som många tar för givet. Våra kunder bygger samhället, ser till att det finns mat i butiken och skapar arbetstillfällen. Året runt lägger de grunden till att vardagen fungerar. Och de förlitar sig på sina maskiner. Deras arbetsredskap som måste fungera för att samhället ska göra det. Även om vi inte syns vet våra kunder att vi alltid står vid deras sida. Om något händer är vi där och ser till att arbetet kan fortsätta. Våra kunder är aldrig ensamma. De känner oss. Och vi känner dem. Visst, vi jobbar med några av de främsta varumärkena inom entreprenad, lantbruk och park och förvaltning. Vi har flera avancerade anläggningar där vi kan göra allt för de maskiner vi säljer. Men ännu viktigare är att vi är tillgängliga. Vi finns i närheten och kommer när våra kunder behöver oss. De vet vad de kan förvänta sig av oss. Eftersom de känner oss och det gör att de kommer tillbaka. På Staffare säljer vi inte maskiner. Vi säljer trygghet och kunskap. and we're here for day two, round two. Open two wheel drives out on track for Q1 already. We'll be going fully live from Q2. And uh, yeah, what, how, what? I'm Andrew Coley, this is how rich. We're just two blokes with big stupid grins on our faces. We're still at the side of a rally cross track. We're actually in the pre-grid. How good was yesterday, mate? It's great to be back. Oh yeah, first of all, fantastic to be back. Uh, been really looking forward to the start of the, the season proper up here in, in Rally X and uh, the old school Scandinavian circuits never fail to deliver, do they? And especially here at Nisim, a, a, a brilliant venue, got lots of unique aspects to it, and the racing was fantastic. Yeah, we got a brand new Joker app as well, which is just over my shoulder over here, which is inside turn two. And we, we're now we're all excited because we've realised there are four opportunities to do the Joker in just three laps. That's Simon Tiger just going down the straight with 10,000 million horsepower, wherever it was. Um, behind us, we've got Guillaume de Rida walking through the pre-grid just here. Is Guillaume? There he is. It was a wave. Uh, he's looking after Victor Franks. So Victor Franks yesterday, Hal, he won the, the Pro-Am category in supercar. Yeah, amazing drive by Victor in his electric uh, RX2E car. Okay, it's turned up a little bit compared to the supercars, but he was delighted last night, wasn't he, with that performance. Uh, a stellar drive from him and then in the supercar final, you know, Peter Hedstrom holding off Johan Christofsson, made the best start behind us off uh, this unique starting position in the middle of the lap, went around the outside of Johan, and then had that massive pressure. And how many times in all the different Radicos championships, specifically the World Championship, we've seen Jörn Gustafsson come from behind and pressure the driver in front into a mistake or just be quicker than them. Hedstrom set purple lap just before Gustafsson jokered and then beat him on pure pace. So, yeah, you, you, maybe the best win against Johan I've seen from any driver in a very, very long time. Yeah, it was a lot of pressure. He'll, uh, Johan will be looking to get back onto the top step of the podium, I'm sure, today. Andreas Backward, I've just seen him, spoke to him. He really struggled with the starts and he just said the dust at the first corner was, was really difficult to deal with when he lost the start. 
Pal, we, the, the track is a lot damper this morning. That means we won't see the dust. So potentially visibility will be better. And actually, if you get a bad start, you might stand a better chance of recovering. True. I think it's going to dry up very quickly. The sun's out. OK, it's freezing. I've got shorts on and all the Swedes are laughing at me. But uh, <laughs> the cars are now all on dry tyres. They were on wets this morning for the, for the warm up session. We were just in the paddock and a lot of the open two wheel drive drivers were debating, do they still go with the wet tyre because you've got the, the blocks in the tread to try and move some of the wet dirt out of the way? Now they've all gone on slicks, all these light car, lights cars here are, are on slicks and if there's more temperature in the sun I do think it's going to dry out and we'll get a bit more dust. We need to just have a quick look over here. This guy here, come over, come on Hal. So, number 99, Lucas Anderson stepped up Hal from Crosscar Junior, skipped Crosscar, he's 15, and went straight into supercar lights and he won. Amazing performance. The pace he had in the final was incredible. He came out of uh, turn two in fifth, I think. There was a bit of kerfuffle at the start and then just slowly chipped away. Uh, stunning, absolutely stunning performance from such a young driver. In, uh, there's a real ladder here, isn't there? Junior cross car lights, up to supercar am and supercar pro. There's a, a, a great learning ground for these young drivers and then you know, competing in the same field as world champions competing in the same tent in the JC team for Lucas as Andreas Backerud it's uh, a great place for him to be. Andreas said he was watching his onboards with him yesterday and he, he was in fifth gear and he said he just looked too nervous to take sixth gear because the straights here are fearsome aren't they there's a big dip bump at the end of this one and and the double crest in the other so gonna be a great day's racing here for day two from Neeson we can't wait to get started I think it's about time we headed up to the commentary rock so let's go. And as if by magic, uh, we've made our way up here, because that's just how fast me and Hal Ridge are. We sprinted, we're not even out of breath. Morning, mate. Hello, mate. How's it uh, going? Yeah, I'm, I'm good now we put this on. So, we, you know, with that lovely view yesterday, we had a lovely view until about five minutes ago, and then a hurricane came in. All the grids for Q2 were over near Vigo, or I possibly... Uh, was, Sweden. Was, yeah, Sweden, <laughs> over the sea. Uh, so it's windy. It's much colder today. There was rain overnight, as we were just discussing down there. Conditions are dry now. I don't think we're expecting any more rain, are we? No, not the weather forecast suggests that's not going to happen, but it's cold and there's lots of clouds around, so uh, you never know, do you? No, you don't. Now, yesterday was a beautiful sunny day and we had some amazing racing. Uh, Hal has already hinted at how brilliant Peter Hedstrom was. If you missed it, we're going to take a look back at some of the highlights from yesterday's supercar final. So, Hedstrom got a great start. Christophson on the inside of him. Look, Backerud was desperately trying to way through, find a way through. Andreas was saying he just couldn't see anything. Now, watch this, because Bolevski ends up in a right mess on the inside. Ericsson nearly drops it. Bolevski cuts inside and goes over the tyres. Andreas actually he stopped on track, he said. We might see here, he said, he said Bolevsky was up in the air, <laughs> which is fair, and he couldn't see where he was. There he is, stopped. So he was gone now. Yeah, lost a lot of time there, didn't he? I love the attitude of the Polos as they come over that second crest down the uh, long hill. That tyre stack was pushed out, but fortunately for everyone in the race, it wasn't pushed out too much. Just Christophson doing his classic early joke. He didn't joker as early as he normally does. This is Hedstrom responding. Hedstrom smashed in the fastest lap of the race and then Joker to get back out of the five-time world champion. Peter Hedstrom, with uh, not loads of recent seat time, uh, did, as we said earlier, an absolutely stellar job to beat Christophson, and uh, that's what it meant to him. Yeah, amazing. Into the donuts again. Bit dusty yesterday, so he only did the one. Champagne spray, though. Good job by him. Johan was really pleased for him as well, Hal. You showed me a picture, didn't you, of Johan, with a full smile on his face under his full-face helmet. Uh, and he was just he, he, you know, full of congratulations for Peter. He, he, Peter beat him, fair and square. Yeah, and the, and the drivers love racing in Rallyx, don't they? So Christophson said all weekend how much he enjoys being here, racing these cars in this environment. There's a lovely vibe in the paddock, isn't there? In, uh, yeah, OK, they want, to, they want to beat each other. But someone like Peter, who has been at this game a long time, won lots of Swedish titles, but doesn't race that often, I think it's hard to hold a grudge against someone when they deliver a performance like that. Yeah, a lot of pressure and he pulled it off. I think we could take a look at the championship standings in supercar from yesterday, after yesterday's race, I believe. Have we got championship standings, lads? Are we doing championship standings or are we going to look at Q1 instead? You let me know what you want to do. What should we do? No? <laughs> OK, well, we'll just stand here and chat then. I mean, you know, we're getting them. Apparently, we're getting them. So we'll just get those posted to us and uh, we'll have them ready for you any second. Now, we've got a guest coming in in a minute as well. We're going to have Andreas Eriksson joining us to discuss the next round, which is Tiep in Sweden. There are the standings. Hedstrom on 28 points. Uh, Johan Christophson on 27. Eriksson, Balevski and Andreas backward. Hal, you made the point yesterday. Hedstrom's committed to a full season and obviously some of these drivers are going to be off to other series later in the year. So he's laid down a bit of a marker here. Massively so, yeah, and uh, we don't know what car Peter's going to be driving for, for all of the rounds. He's a, he runs a commercial team like, like many of them do, and if someone comes along behind the Hyundai, he might end up in 
one of their polos or, or something else. But a, a great start to his campaign. And to be fair, we saw we saw great performances and uh, brilliant winners in all of the categories, didn't we? We had fantastic racing all day, and I think. Uh, the dust being a little bit less today is going to make that even more exciting today. We, uh, I, th I think Hedger will be gutted if someone comes along and hires the Hyundai. After yesterday, he sits so fast on the straights, he's like, I can't quite keep up with it. <laughs> he was very honest. We kept up with it brilliantly in the final. So, as you'll know, we're about to start Q2. We're going to take a look back at Q1. So, you saw open two-wheel drive was going on behind me and Hal earlier on. And shortly after that, um, we had supercar. So, remember, in supercar, um, we've got the RX2E. We've also got the Pro and the Pro-Am category. Yesterday, Hal, Ulrich Linneman, look at that. He won Q1 yesterday outright ahead of everybody and then had another sort of Linneman-style day. Yeah, had, um, had some difficulties. Ended up in the uh, tyres a few times. Uh, had clutch problems, which they were trying to sort in the paddock. And and also had some contact, but he had a very clear run there in Q1 this morning, and uh, that would ultimately take him to the fastest time. This was one of the more interesting moments during the race. Belevsky actually got a penalty for this move, for cutting that corner there. I wondered how he came out, because we were stood over the far side with the spotters and we couldn't see, could we? He came out of turn one so far in front, I was like, wow. OK, that's the end of the straight, so we couldn't okay. see that either. Yeah, so he's gone wide there, clipped the cone on the entry, and then Christofsson's uh, sunk it up the inside. They've had more contact, and belevsky has gone more sideways. That turn one, turn two incident's interesting, isn't it? Because uh, you've already been pitched that way. I don't know if you're left with much option. And then here's another example of the first corner. Kevin Erickson using all of his experience there just to back out of that uh, that squeeze backward hanging around the outside. He tried to go all the way, but watch this. It's a little bit too dirty. You get the rear wheels in the fluff there, and he can't quite get the power down. He does get in front of Kevin Erickson at that point. Um, but yeah, great stuff. Oh dear, not so great for uh, Morton Schnack. We saw a couple of people actually in the wall. This was a brilliant move by um, Andreas Eriksson at the end of the straight, up the inside of Hedstrom from a, a fair way back. Impressive stuff. Andreas yesterday suffered with the dust, but hopefully not so much dust today, I say, because it's a little bit damper. But he'll be hoping to win the start. Win the start and you don't end up in the dust. Here's a man who's won a few starts, Andreas Eriksson. Welcome. Let me just lift that up for you there. Thank you. How are we doing? Very good. Marvellous. Uh, what happened to the weather? Me and Hal said we would only come and work on this series if it was sunshine every event, and we're, <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm sorry I can't give you that, but yesterday was a fantastic day to be in April, and, and today is not so bad, but the wind is coming and going, but I think it will be dry all day and good racing. Well, it wasn't yesterday great. Did you enjoy it? I mean, I know you have a, you have a lot on, obviously, with the team here and also running the series, but I, I thought it was a fantastic way to start 2023. No, nah, it was. I mean, I'm, all the races and all the classes was a very high level, and, and this track is very difficult in the first corner as well. So there's a lot of action happening there. So the, we hope that they, I really want them to, to, you know, get through the first quarters. We have all the racing all the way to the finish. Yeah, that's what we want as well. We're going to take a quick look at the uh, map for the next event. So we've got Tiep coming up in Sweden next. Uh, and Andreas has come up with a, uh, one of his fantastical plans to do some, some mad <laughs> stuff. So we've got the Rallycross Palette. Oh, I see the word Burnyard, Andreas. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy already. What's going on? Yeah, so, so, <clears throat> yeah, so this is a, a plan I had in my head for a long time. And we were planning it back in a couple of years ago. And we thought, when we have an opportunity to go to the Europe again, we, we thought, OK, let's do it. We have short of time to do it, but we, we work very hard to get it. So we have a Burnyard in the middle where we have a, a very we will have drifting cars and we have every kind of you know car it's kind of a tribute for for ken and ken block as well because i work a lot with him and i did a lot of things back in the days with him so i thought we should do something that we can celebrate you know uh, not celebrate yeah you know you know what Absolutely i mean celebrate his life yeah the exactly influence, the influence he had on on both car culture and motorsport yeah. we've got the rally cross track at the top now i believe the layout is different to the last yeah. time you, you guys were there i've not been to tier before how has but you've changed the layout yeah no so we have changed the layout on the track and but also here as you see we have an S X S S side, S by S side. side by side track and these cars is coming as well so we have done a cooperation with them so they're coming and brp is coming and and, and we can so th see these cars as well and i think it's quite exciting to have this together with the burnyard uh, with the rally cross with everything on the same place so the audience can go and you know back and forth on this area everywhere so um, so this is something new the drifting and the burnyard is something new and also the rally sprint that we do together with everything is also new we There's a lot of things into it, and th that's just a mix, and it all mixed together. You have my attention. I mean, I'm excited. Hal, what, what, do you, what do you think? 
Yeah, I, I, where do you where do you look? There's all sorts of things to <laughs> look at. So uh, we've only got two days. I think as a spectator, it's fantastic, isn't it? Because you can go and experience all of those different things. Plenty to do from competitors. I'm sure we're going to get some great entries in side by side and the rally sprint. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. No, it's going to be exciting. And we need to go racing. I think we've got cross car on the line. We have indeed. Andreas, do you want to stick around for a couple of races? Sure. Okay, that'd be perfect. So uh, first of all, the winner of Q1, Algot Hammerquist, is on the inside. Then we've got Riku Hukar. We've got Nick Mas, Lucas Jensen, Elias Spenson. Eric Nilsson and Ronald Baldings. See if Hukar gets a wheelie from slot number two. Got a few yesterday. It's a long old hold on the lights for these guys, isn't it? That's a super long one. Hukar does get a big old wheelie. Gets just in front of Hammer Quiz. Gonna treat an inside line surely into the first corner. Does He's on the limiter through there, and you can hear immediately the difference. A seesaw immediately the difference, having the visibility. Like yesterday, even if it wasn't the leading car, we couldn't see who it was as we see Baldin slots up into the Joker app on that one. Just what Hukar needed after the uh, disappointment of yesterday. Out front again, this could be a final, couldn't it, with the list of names in this race. Baldin's as well, as you say, Andrew, joking on the first lap. He had all sorts of problems yesterday. Baldin's is often either at the very front of the field based on pace or having misfortune. Doesn't seem to have a lot of luck consistently, does he? And uh, yeah, yesterday was another example of that. Flames pouring out the back of uh, one That's of the cars. Oh, Hammer Chris with a problem, losing a couple of places, or oh, losing two definitely. Three wide, and then you can hear Baldin's absolutely lit coming through in the background as well. Elias Fenson absolutely gained there, didn't he? Could got past Eric Nelson and uh, Hammerfist in that move. It's Jensen that's moved up to second behind Hukar. Oh, and Fenson gets two sideways, gets turned around by Nelson. Yeah, Nelson. turn two. Is it turn two when it's towards the end of the lap? One? Well, we're not really sure. Andreas, maybe you can tell us, what is that turn two? Because the thing is, it's turn one, obviously, then it's turn two, but then at the end of the lap, what is it, turn seven? What do you do when you're looking at driver data? What corner number is it? I, I, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I, add, I wanted him to add a first split as well, because when you look at the times, it's also very hard to know where you are. Yes. This, this track is different. But it's, uh, I guess you can have many names for it. It's a difficult corner. <laughs> Fair enough. We were calling it turn one and a half yesterday. We're absolutely loving the new Joker layout. I can't think of a track where the Joker is after the second corner, but then also just before the last corner. And it's brilliant. Four opportunities to take in three laps. For me, that's almost the blueprint of where all Joker laps should be. But you need that special start that comes across the track to use it. No, I agree. And I, I mean, it's not in the first corner that the car splits. So that you, you have a good action corner, but you can still split up and have a good race for the finish. I, I think they nailed it here. I think it's a great. Everyone was worried about the exit, you know, of the Yorker, but it, it's good racing there as well. So I think everyone likes it. How? What? Uh, what's he thinking? Hukar's doing a, a great job out front here, extending the gap. Still yet to Joker, of course. About three seconds the margin was yesterday in in Crosscar. Hukar does go into the extra route. That's great camera angle, isn't it? That's different to yesterday, where you can really see the elevation change, and he has done it. Look at that big flick sideways, sends the car back around the other way. On the throttle, check a flag. So let's see what the time was like. In the first session, Algot Hammerquist was a 2.36.954, and that's a 2.40.432. Um, I'd normally ask you, Hal, about track conditions, but I suppose we should ask Andreas Eriksson, shouldn't we, really, as, as he's here with us? So what, what's, uh, in, how do you see the track developing? With all your experience, obviously it's a bit damper than yesterday. That's four seconds slower than, than the first session was. Why? I, no, I, I think it is, it, the gravel is kind of, they put a lot of uh, dust sticks on it as well, and you have this mix on it. So it, it's a mix, it's drying up and it will be a sweet spot soon. But yesterday you saw some hard spots and I was loose on top of it, so I think I think the track is normally a little slower right now because it's loose. And uh, during the day, they will scratch some off and so on, and you will have more hard surfaces, and then we go faster again. Okay, so you like this uh, this fastest first, don't you? Because the track might develop now in favour of the others. Now, me and Hal Ridge, we like fastest last. So yes. how, can we can we persuade you to change it or not? No, but <laughs> this this is basically why there. I, I understand on the TV point of view that it could be interesting to build up the hype, but uh, why don't give the drivers that have a problem, uh, 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 you know, some kind of advantage to come back. When the track gets quicker. If the fastest guy always have the fastest track, then it's kind of, it could be a boring race. See, that's why Andreas Eriksson's in charge. We shouldn't really ask him questions like that live on TV, but he's laughing as well, don't worry. Um, throw the boss under the bus. Uh, Sebastian Inholm, then we've got Yugar, Grana, Eliasson, Merst, Adam Person. 
Merstad with a good start from P5 trying to come across, but Sebastian Enholm's going to get the whole shot. Merstad trying to come around the outside and does come around the outside. Great move from Thomas Eek Merstad gets in front of Enholm. Hal, I think we saw these guys have a pretty brilliant battle yesterday. Yeah, fantastically difficult to uh, tell their cars apart as well. They look basically identical apart from the bit of blue on the front of uh, Eek Merstad. Eek yeah. Merstad's car. Yep. Massive battle going on in the background. Yugar passing Elias soon as they come round uh, through the what is the last corner, but I say three and a half laps in each of these heat races. The end of this straight, Hal, for me, the commitment in cross car is insane because they're so light and they break so late. They're almost on the tarmac before they hit the anchors. Yeah, whereas in a supercar weighing 1,300 kilos, you're just riding the brake a little bit, just going under the bridge where they're crossing over at the moment. So that bit of weight actually helps you a bit in, in feeling the balance of the car to get it to stop that corner because the cross cars are so light and they, you can break quite, as you experienced racing in RS150 a couple of weeks ago, you can break so late in them, can't you? But it's terrifying and I think that's the hardest thing to adjust to actually. And Clara Anderson said the same thing about just it's where special cool. she's come from extreme e most recently hasn't she and those cars are even heavier than a world rx rx1 e car so it's yeah i mean it, it's uh there's just it's ultra late on the brakes me and hal were stood with their spotters at the far end by the start and i, I think you were doing the same as me watching when the brake lights were coming i was watching christopherson and baby's brake lights as they went under that bridge and just comparing the point at which they won on was was fascinating geek <laughs> and of course every car's set up differently isn't it so you, you've got you, it's very basic to be looking at someone's brake, brake lights to, to decide when they're braking, whether they're just settling the car over those bumps under the bridge with a bit of a left foot braking. This is uh, Enholm in the Joker to try and come. Yeah, that is Enholm, isn't it? It is Enholm, yes, yeah, Merstad is still out. So Merstad still out, he's covered off Ugar nicely. Andreas, we're loving cross car. Obviously, the, the level in this, the number of people that can do a top time is insane. You make one mistake and you can find yourself P15. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's great. I mean, the competition is what makes this driver faster. And I think it's more competition, as better driver you can develop. And, and we've seen that, you know, we've, I've seen so many great drivers coming up through the, through the cross cut now. I think that's, I mean, and even when I drive rally and so on, I did a lot of cup cars and so on. That's the only way to be better because you push each other to car. the limit all the time. Eek Merstad's gone joker, he had 4.4 seconds, comes out easily in front. Yesterday we reckon the Delta was out 3.0. Target time bottom left of the screen, 240.4. Might just take that, yeah it does, 239.9. So still a couple of seconds off uh, the previous quickest times. But uh, a good run, so nicely done by Thomas Eek Merstad. How are you looking at lap times and things? Are you in, in uh, full, full sort of yeah, coverage they're mode? They're How's just, it well as Andrea said, the tracks got slower. They're, they're almost a second slower on ultimate lap time than uh, Hamakovic's best lap time of a, of a 41.6 earlier on today. So, yeah, clearly the track isn't as fast as it was either yesterday or this morning. So, we might see people going quicker later on in this session. So, Andreas, um, anything you want to tell us about? We're looking forward to the rest of the season. We're going to a couple of... I haven't been to Tiet before, but we're heading somewhere in Norway that I don't think me or Hal have been. So, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, Greenland is a track that we had in the beginning of Rally X uh, birth. Uh, it was a great track. It's, you know, we grew out of it. it was, the paddock was too small and so on for a while. Now they are extending the paddock and we've got a good relationship. We have a great race. The track is like a newsome. It's a fantastic yeah. track. Jumps, corners, outside. You can... Basically, we have some good shots from that, that, that stick in my mind and some good memories. And now, when it all comes together, we go back there, it would be a fantastic race. Yeah, can't wait. There was some, some brilliant action there with, with your son, Oliver, making his, his debut there. Oliver Solberg was, was fantastic there as well. And Chirp has some, some good racing in the past as well. Just explain a little bit about the change you've made. How, just, sorry, just to interrupt you, there's a huge puff of white smoke from the back of Alexander uh, Hume's car just a moment ago just as you were asking Andreas. Let's get this underway. Penton with a massive crash yesterday back, but seemingly no problem for Hume. Gets a good start. Penton gets a little bit of a wheelie. You've got Osterberg, Jorgensen as well. OK, so tired of Hume. Seemingly not a problem. Massive blue and white smoke in the back of the car. Go on, sorry, yeah, and, and just to, to finish it off, massive effort from Penton's team. They were done at two or three this morning, I think, to, to get the car repaired. Crucially, the chassis wasn't too damaged, so they were able to, to fix the car. And get him back out. But yeah, and address the changes to the to the rallycross track in Tier. What have you done there? No, so basically we've done the car. You know, it's, it's funny we make it a little shorter, but we have a long straight and we have two chicanes that was very difficult in a way, and it was also kind of uh, dangerous. Some people thought, and the fast guys liked it and so on. But 
we slow that down so the track is a little shorter it's more uh, intense so the quarter so basically we took away long of a bit of the straight so and make it shorter so for people who saw before it's not using the, the dragster kind of exactly. right down to the stadium it's, it's all more up on to the, where the loose surface section was before yeah so it's more technical now and it's not about just power and also we saw the crosscut juniors doesn't have the, the top end speed and we thought like we need to build a track that fits for them as well the sure. supercar could do it but other cars kind of run out of speed or side by side underneath the bridge that's hume getting through is it jorgensen in front he yes. was yes yeah, so passing jorgensen at the end of the straight there a little bit wide through there but then gets the car back in you see the difference in traction that just been one car further out jorgensen makes a bit of time back up let's see if jorgensen responds at the end of the straight we saw some great moves here yesterday and that pass from backer this morning in q1 Oh, it makes you nervous, doesn't it, when they come from that far back? I love this place, brilliant. Andreas, I'd love to ask you, what is, what's your favourite rally cross track? I mean, you, you know, you've been around a long time, I mean, he's not that old, but, you know, he's, he's done a lot of rally cross. We're going to places like Church, we've got these incredible old school tracks. We're going back to Hollius, which is always at the top of everybody's list in terms of tracks, you know, and then we've got the, the new generation of Nitro rally cross tracks and World RX tracks. Like, what, what, what's still up there for you? Germany. History. Really? How come? Because that's the best action track there is when it comes. The only backside is that you don't see it really. But when you drive that track as a driver, it's so technical, it's so hard. And to win that race, you need to be on it. And you can do mistakes everywhere. It's a fantastic track. And it's the one that I, if you tell me if I can choose any track to, to, to race myself on, that would be. There we go. That's great. That's no, I don't fantastic. think anyone would want to race Andreas in the first corner in in Estering. It's a total lottery, isn't it? And that's why it's so good. Is because you can make all you can do all the analysis, make all the plans you want, and it's all about how you execute that first corner as a driver based on what's happening around you. I'm thinking of another Ericsson when I think of uh, Estering in Turn One. I, I Andreas did it first. It did just, he really? Just no one was filming. <laughs> right. Okay. I want to see Andreas Ericsson versus Kevin Ericsson and Oliver <laughs> Ericsson up in Turn. Maybe we we'll get Maria Ericsson out as well and, and just have a full family send up into Turn They'd One. They'd have to let Maria win. Cool. Uh, where, where are we going to take? We want to take Rally X to the UK at some point. Me and Hal. We think that'd be fun. I know. We, what about Estering? Would you like to go there? Yeah. No. No. I, I had big discussions with them. I like it to take the series there. That was one of my plans. But they changed the rules now with Ness and so on. We, there is some more opportunities. But at the same time, we need to keep the cost down for people that are traveling. Yeah. But Germany, Denmark, I mean, it could be a good connection with Denmark, you know, yeah. because it's very close. So you can do two races together and have a good race. And then, so, so we're looking on different options, but we need to talk to the paddock and see what people want to do uh, and can do. There we go, you see, and that's what's, in, that's what's great about this series is, is that the likes of Andreas heading out talking to people and finding out what they want to do and, uh, and constantly trying to innovate things. And also, cleaning screens yesterday, leading the charge of the road sweepers through uh, through the final corner. You, you were everywhere yesterday. Yeah, we were run, running out of time. <laughs> I was very worried that we ran out of time. We ran out of time. <laughs> and I was, you know, basically we, we, we got some extra time and, and then I started to be worried that we ran out of extra time. <laughs> I think Andreas said he bought some extra time there. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Maybe that's what happened. All right, well, look, thank you so much for joining us. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. We always appreciate you coming up here. And thanks for having me and Hal on the broadcast and, and bringing a great show to the fans. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Great Looking job. Looking forward to Tierp. Thanks, Andreas. So Andreas Eriksson, a rallycross legend who is uh, joining us here in the... who was joining us here in the box. Great to hear from him. And uh, he's going to head off now, and I don't know... Cha you know, change the world rally cross. It, it makes some plan for some crazy track somewhere, or I don't know, maybe, maybe lead the charge of the road sweepers again. But um, he's a fascinating character with a with a huge history in this sport, and how I think a, a lot a long future as well. He's he's in everything, isn't he, in this sport? Yeah, I mean, he's had some balmy ideas over the over the years, but incredibly pulled many of them off. And uh, it's so refreshing to have people that are willing to push the envelope and, and do different things. You don't have to agree with everything anybody says, but you. But people who try hard to make the best of what they've got is uh, is inspirational, isn't it? And Andreas is right at the forefront of creating many of the things that are in Rallycross today. Look at the Supercar Lights concept. I mean, many people would believe that wouldn't work when it when it first came about, and it's been so successful in many different series through the years. So yeah, and you see that with with, with Rallyx, you know, we're, we're pushing the envelope. We're going to different places, trying different tracks, going back to old school tracks, and getting super experienced drivers like Johan Christophson who love racing at the very highest level of the sport coming here just because it's so good to compete and, and that's fantastic. Yeah, I, I love backward coming here and just being like, I'm so, I'm, he was just so excited about the track he was going on about how brilliant he thought it was, wasn't he?
Uh, you know, yeah, really interesting. I might fire up this heater in a minute. What do you reckon, mate? I think it'll melt the side of the tent. I noticed you took your woolly hat off. Yeah, I did. I've got, the, hat, the hat's OK. It's my feet are a bit cold. The hat's OK. Oh, your head's OK, you mean? Yeah, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah head's right, warm yeah. enough. Yeah, it might be these lights, which I'm, I'm sure are giving me in hell an incredible suntan. <laughs> the, the, the light, I'll post a picture of the lights on Instagram or something. I mean, it's ridiculous in here. It's like being in a, in a soccer stadium or something. They won't do it justice. No, it won't. It's, yeah, it's bright. Basically, if we, if we look like we're squinting, we are. Uh, we could wear sunglasses near the lights are so bright, but that was mainly to combat the sun yesterday. But Eric Anderson leading this race from the front, got a 3.1 second margin, having not jokered and uh, nor is Paul in, uh, in second. So we were talking to uh, Eric's dad, Lars, a little bit earlier on, weren't we? And he was just saying they don't have the speed that they uh, that they want, but this is going all right. A 43.0 on the lap times, so and not a million miles behind. Uh, Thomas Eekmerstad either, so they've obviously found something overnight and Eric feeling more comfortable in the It car. was interesting, wasn't it? What he, he did, I don't they think they could specifically put their finger on what it was, but he's like, we're just looking for more speed everywhere. Yeah, and and must be such a difficult position to be in. Oh, I, oh, I know it's a difficult position to be in when you're a little bit lost like that. I think Derek Toll in open two-wheel drives a little bit like that as well at the moment. They're yeah. coming with a new concept on a car they know. And... You know, to quote uh, the late and great Craig Breen, they're throwing the kitchen sink at it because you just don't really know wh where, your, where your operating window is. And uh, when Well, they've, they've actually thrown 80 kilos at it, Al, to be, <laughs> to be specific, haven't they? So on, on uh, Friday afternoon, Peter uh, McGarry, who's a very accomplished rear wheel drive, rally across himself, said, where can we get some lead? I said, well, speak to Linneman. You know, he's a, he's a local boy. He'll know people around here who've got some weight. <laughs> As it turns out, they went to Linneman's gym at his house and took all of his dumbbells off his uh, gym equipment and they've nailed them to the bottom of his Fiesta. They can't put any more weight in it because they've run out of washers, bolts, nuts. I love that. It was pretty good. We've got, we were out, they're out of space, basically. <laughs> they said to Derek, didn't we? Look, if you get the engine mapped how you want it, you're going to take the weight out. He's like, I don't think I have, to be honest. So he, he again said to us this morning, I'm looking for another two drive shafts. So um, I said, why don't you bring the supercar? But um, yeah, why doesn't he bring the supercar? Ah, he's got a uh, rheumatic. Derek is one of the biggest Rallycross fans in the paddock, and that's saying something because there's some massive Rallycross fans here, aren't there? And uh, yeah, he, he had amazing memories with racing his two wheel drive car up here in Scandinavia. That's where his career really took off, and um, yeah, wants to have a bit more of that. Understandable. Uh, we've got 32 entries in cross car, which is uh, how we're getting down to these last couple of heats. Tiana Herskin and Tudor Gotherson and Orav. Three Estonian drivers in this one. Sweden are thin. It is the uh, Swede at the minute, Kalla Gotherson, who looked like he had the best start, and then say that immediately loses out, makes the cut back to the inside line, but can't quite hold on to it. Well, this tent is going to take off in a minute. I'm holding on, on to it. So if, uh, if it takes off and I disappear, <laughs> that, that'll be fine. <laughs> Lisa, Hal, Hal will look after it for us. At least you'll get home quickly. Yeah. Very well. Or end up in Sweden quickly. I think it's more likely. We'll be ready for Tierp at least. That's a good point, yeah. Where are you next? I've got Hungary. Yeah, European no, I've got a weekend off next weekend. You're, you're hungry on Euro, then back to Tierp. Yeah. Tierp, I've got Extreme E. So, yeah, it's a busy time, busy part of the season. I love it when everything kicks off and gets going again. What is it about the year? Because January, it doesn't drag by any means, but January's a, a nice pace, and February, for the first part of February, and maybe pe February's quite a bit shorter, isn't it? But you, And then you get to March, and all of a sudden it's May. Like, how did that happen? I th oh, yeah, I don't... Oh, a little cheeky look, but not quite close enough, and the gravel on the road up there makes the grip level so unpredictable. I don't know, it's just... It, we, our season's always traditionally been, hasn't it? I would always have said, if you ask me, it's March slash April through to October slash November is what it was. Now Nitro goes through the winter, and obviously we had some rally X on ice stuff through the winter, you get Race of Champions, uh, Formula E, you know, there's, there's motorsport has kind of spread out a bit more through the course of the season. We all work on a number of different seasons. Uh, sorry, a number of different series. And seasons. Yeah, yes. And, yeah, me and Hal very confused about what year Nitro is and uh, whether it was last year or this year. And, and um, it's basically a season, isn't it? And um, Formula E's done it for quite a long time. They've kind of gone more traditional now and gone back to calendar years. But I do like having some stuff to do in the winter. It's always the thing, there was nothing in the winter. It was like everything stopped. So I've quite, I've certainly enjoyed over the winter having a couple of ice races do. It was, was great fun. Run Eric's on ice was a great concept uh, a few years ago. Another uh, Andreas Eriksson and Joel Christophson uh, brainchild. That, that was good fun with the I'd love cars. it if that came back. I never made it up to that. You went to a few, didn't you? Yeah, a couple of uh, seasons. Oh, lots of smoke oh, there. Oh, lots of flames. Oof, OK, that needs to pull in over at the side of the road right now, surely. 
I just know, OK, we need to get that car stopped by a marshal point ASAP. That will be getting hot in there. Yeah, although the flames appear to have gone out now. I wonder if it was... Uh, Some sort of fuel fire? Still, oh, no, it's still, uh, still there. Fortunately, it's the last lap, though, so uh, it doesn't look like it's... I'll tell you what, that is some drive. So Hurst Gein is reminding me of uh, uh, Matthias Ekstrom in the Race of Champions, patting a fire out on the inside. Was it a lights car? But somehow holding it, I can't remember. But either way, uh, the winner of this one is Tudo. But it's Hurst Gein, and with that fire under the car, I wonder where Hurst Gein is going to park here. Or if she's going to bring it back to the paddock. There was a lot of flames under there at one point. Vigo heading up to his uh, landing pad. Is he going to get out? Of course, these drivers yeah, do have out. spotters in cross car. So um, maybe we'll have had that information. I imagine his, uh, his rear end, as in his backside, will have given him a fair <laughs> amount of information as to what was going on under there, because the heat comes fast. Yeah, there, there's a firewall, isn't there? There's a, there's a bulkhead between the engine compartment and the uh, and the drive. Well, the, the it's seat. not really a compartment for the yeah. engine, is it? It's where the engine lives, and then the compartment the driver's where, in. Where your bum lives. <laughs> six well, inches your away. bum lives in the driver's compartment, doesn't it? It can't be outside of that. No, no. <laughs> but. Uh, Toasty. Yeah, it will still be warm. Yeah, it toasty. Still be still be Warmer warm. than it is up here, but yeah, not, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, not I'll, I'll take the coldness, thanks, over uh, over that. Yeah, look at that. End of the straight. says so something, a line or something let go, didn't it? Whether it's uh, whichever flammable fluid it was, has let go at that point. Usually when you see a fire like that, there's uh, the Comrades made a bid for freedom, hasn't it? And it's all oil over the exhaust or something. But obviously the, the rod's still going up and down for the rest of the race because uh, he's still going. But there is a lot of oil or liquid at least down there. I wonder if it maybe an oil line's come off on an oil cooler yeah. or, or something like that. Hopefully no lasting damage to the um, the engine, but have to get that bad boy uh, towed back in, aren't they, I think. So Tamo Tudo takes that one. Got one more uh, run for these cross cars in Q2. Anybody trouble? What sort? The times haven't really improved through the session, have they? So, uh, yeah, the track hasn't hasn't improved as much as it as it might have done. Certainly, still not as quick as it was in Q1. Do you think we're allowed to ask Andreas Ericsson questions like that on there? I did quite like it. He did smile. You didn't give much of a choice, did you? No, really? not really. No, the bus came, didn't it? <laughs> I mean, but he justified it, didn't he? He did. You know, yeah. That, we, we, to I be do fair, get it. I see. So do I. I see both sides. Yeah. But um, there is a nice. Uh, Momentum to having the fastest last, yeah. certainly from a television point of view. Because when, all of it, yeah. When we used to flip the order in World RX, I, I never used to like that either. I've always liked fastest last. And sometimes the fastest. Oh, get, with the roulette wheel. Yeah. So yeah, do you remember that? Uh, sometimes the fastest get stiff by the weather as well. You know, so it can go the other way. You, do you remember how many times did we see? Was it Nittish who went out in in Hollius in dry rolled, conditions? Rolled in Q1. Yeah, but mean? then he went out in the dry, didn't it? Rained or something, and I don't know. Maybe that's another race. But it, he was. No, no, you're right. And then yeah, he finished and, on the podium at the end. And everybody lost tons of time in the weather. There's wet, a great so. insight into your memory because there's bits there. You just need yeah. to piece it together. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of a mess. Like this. It's, a <laughs> like it's, it's a bit like that. It's a bit like that. It's a bit like that roulette wheel, mate. To be honest, you know, you spin it round, anything can come out. That's the danger of live TV. Is especially what do we do yesterday? Six hours, forty was it yesterday? Somebody uh, politely asked me on. Uh, Instagram, why didn't we do Q1? And uh, I politely explained because we, we can't manage it. I don't think the cameraman can either. It's, it's just a bit too long. But thank you for your kind messages uh, from everybody. We got some lovely messages yesterday on Instagram and, and the comments on YouTube. Like and subscribe, RallyX. Uh, they've got a great channel. There's some awesome old racing on there, which you can go and take a look back at. And I promise you there's going to be some fantastic racing to which come. Which old race would you well. look at? From Rally X, mm. uh, okay, we started in 2020, and yeah. I have to say, from I, the last four years, I mean, yeah, I, I loved that first Magic Weekend because it was COVID had been happening and, and everything was a bit rubbish, wasn't it? And then, oh, here we go, Andreas should be out there any minute now. Where's the bloke on the quad bike with the bag of sand from yesterday? Um, it was, oh, it was just, it was fun, wasn't it? It was nice to get back in the paddock when we all kind of thought motorsport was going to stop. We didn't know how long it was going to stop for. Um, and I really enjoyed it. The Gronholm thing is still one of my favourite things ever. I thought it was brilliant. Let's take a look back at this uh, this moment again for uh, the, the flame out, basically, for her sky. And here he is, look. So there's a fair bit in there. Still 15th overall oh. in the time Look sheets. how high up it's coming in the in there, Hal. I'm sure I saw it in the window. Can we see it on the way into the hairpin? Have you got it further back, guys, in the truck, the TV truck? We can see it on the way in. So as it comes under the bridge, you'll see it goes. And then I wasn't sure if I saw it in the left-hand window of the car. 
Here it is. So uh, on the right, here it goes. Boom. Yeah. Do you see it in the window there? Am I right? What is that? You see what I mean? Mm, yeah. Wonder if it was in. I didn't. Hmm. I come to the studio. Talk about the Can't. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to tell with the window whether it was a reflection of the ground or not. Certainly. <laughs> oh yeah. It could. Could well have been. It was remarkably calm, wasn't it? I mean, finishing a race whilst you know your, your chassis is on fire is always impressive. Uh, race of champions, wasn't it? Matthias Ekstrom. Was it a lights car? Yeah, it was. Yeah, and he yeah. battered it out of his hands. Sort of he? patting down the side of the tunnel. It's on fire. My favourite bit about that, of course, is Matthias would have had a guest in the car who's probably not experienced the car being on fire before. On, on, the, on the way, you know what I mean? I'm going to go for a passenger ride. Oh, wicked! Who with Matthias? Oh my God! Absolutely terrifying. And the car catches fire, and you like, dude, look at the case. That's fine. Pat, 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 we're all good. We go, we carry on. Did he win? And he did win. I think he won that race. Did he win Race of Champions? I think he might well have done. He's won Race of Champions a lot, hasn't he? I think it was on Sky, Sky F1. I haven't got that, so. But he has won Race of Champions a lot. I can't remember. No, he's a now. legend. Matthias, are you watching? He's Hi, not mate. watching, is he? He's in Mexico or something. Oh, yeah, of course he is. We might have jet lag. It's warmer there than it is here, I tell you. Yeah. He's racing a side by side. In Mexico? Well, I think so, yeah. Oh, awesome. With uh, oh, holes in my knowledge here, so I'm going to shut up. Well, there's uh, our good friend Viestas is out there as well, isn't he? Yeah, multitasking as usual. Yeah. Hey, Viestas. There's Dan again. You remember him yesterday? He was chasing that other one. Dan sweeps the sort of business card you'd see on a pub wall in uh, the UK, isn't it? For a chimney sweep or something. We've got um, we've got a brilliant concrete company near where I live. So so uh, I live in the southeast of England, where the very famous 1066 Battle of Hastings happened with uh, William the Conqueror. So there is a concreting company called William the Concreter. And it, I just think that is an Do you laugh every time you I see do, a mate. Every lorry. time one of those lorries comes by, it's turning things. up. And go, it's great, isn't it? What a brilliant idea. Someone who's a marketing genius. And Dan Sweep, you're a marketing genius too. Do you think his name's Dan? It's got to be, isn't it? Ah, he's probably called probably Robert, Robert or something else, doesn't it? Let us know if it makes stupid as usual. Do you remember the other year and we said something like this? Didn't we? Like, no, that's not what it means in this language. It's like, yes, yeah, sorry. We're not uh, not multilingual enough. There he is. Go not mo multilingual at all. No, that's true. I can order a beer in a few languages, but that's about it. So where how where did that go pop and how long did they carry on for? It's thinking about it. It was the end of the straight, so on the gravel it doesn't matter so much, but then would have come down was it the final lap? Yes it was. So it's really the what is turn two through to the finish line again. Well, yes, though, how slippery was it after mm, we, we had the yeah. oil dump from the supercar? Was it Tam? You Tam, yeah. Yeah. I'm still trying to think of my favourite Rally X race. Oh, yeah. Go on, him. Ulu was good, wasn't it? Yeah, but why was it good? There's just some great racing, wasn't there? And uh, lots of action down into the first corner. Lots of intrigue with uh, the penalties. It's a fair bit of action in town, wasn't there? Seeing as the <laughs> Ulu had just come out of well, lockdown. Well, we were, we were totally baffled, weren't we? Because it didn't get dark ever. We've both been no. to Trondheim a few times. Yeah, but, uh, and it, Trondheim gets mildly dusk-like for uh, hell, doesn't it? It was but just daylight. All it was broad daylight at three in the morning. I remember seeing with how, not that we were awake at three in the morning, obviously, because we are terribly professional. Um, on the final night, maybe, we sat eating a pizza uh, late at night, and it was broad daylight in this square. It's just absolutely bonkers. It really is. Um, but it was good fun. It was good fun. I'd happily go back up there. I say the town had just come out of lockdown, and, and it was just, it was, the atmosphere was incredible. I say there was some, some good memories and things getting back to normal. I hope you guys had good memories as well of, of watching some of it, you know, and, and knowing things were going to come back to normal. All, all events in, in Finland are good, aren't they? There's a massive passion for motorsport in general uh, in Finland. Slippery how to see again mistakes from people just through those last couple of corners. Yeah, that's. Uh, Turpering, isn't it, in the uh, the TM5, the Thierry Neuville dream child uh, cross car from Belgium. Oh, oh no, dropped at the end of the straight. So I wonder if there's still a bit of oil on uh, on Tanner's tyres. Virginie oh, Amy in the 74 coming through in P3. That is all crossed up, catching a wasp in the uh, in the cabin there, definitely. So what we got in this, we've got a Kazma, a YMS, a Life Live TN5, a Speed Car Extreme and a Speed Car Wonder. That's pretty much the full set, isn't it? Just missing an edge, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah. I'm usually missing the edge. Yeah, very much, I am. Love this, long corner onto the straight. That's where we stood this morning and, and filmed the open to the show. And Simon Tiger coming through there yesterday with that wheel. We're going to see them in a minute, the open two-wheel drive. With that front left wheel, Ah, oh, still parked at the end. Oh dear. So yeah, cross car Q2 coming to an end. 
I'll tell you what, why don't you let us know? Drop us a message. Which was your favourite uh, Rally X race? Yeah, I'd be intrigued to know what, yeah, people, uh, yeah. what people think. What, There's what, been some brilliant, some genuinely brilliant finals uh, and some brilliant moments. We've seen some of the very best Radicos drivers in the world performing at an incredible level, haven't we? Especially yeah. with with Christofsson and Larson and Gronholm. And Kubler, I, you saw that they put the start of Kubler on into the other week, and I was like, OK, that was busy. You know when you, like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, much yeah. went on on the run up. To, I do love Kubler's start, but that funnel makes me a bit nervous. They were all saying, weren't they, the other day about going across the gravel there. There's sand and then there's gravel and, and you're not getting out. Got a car roll up there, didn't we? I like the people sort of accept that that can be a line. Yeah, it's like the yeah. Liam Duran line, isn't it? Just to keep it pinned yeah. and drive through the gravel on the outside. Well, it's really, you could say four wheels off, and the trouble is there is no definition as to what's off, because it's the dirt corner off the sand, not the gravel. So it's just like, well, as long as it goes back in but between the armco on the far side, you're right. But there's also, there's no real definition between four wheels off just on the inside of the corner and being in the next field. You're still four, only four wheels off. Yeah. I need, yeah, it's, I don't think it's so well. if you're off, you may as well go well, probably off. Yeah, it's not really an advantage, is it, either heading out into that different postcode off the side of the track up there. And there's the puddle of fluid there still on the loose, but that won't really affect anyone because it's not on the line. If you ever get the chance to go to Kuvala, go and stand on the jump line at the back on the outside. It's great fun, where they come through turn one into... It was basically turn one and turn... Uh, sorry, turn two, really, where they funnel back into the armco and then come over the series of jumps and into that braking zone. And the long, uh, they, I mean, the understeer just must have picked up just a patch and just terminal understeer through the corner. There's a lot going for Kovler, isn't it? It's a nice town as well. Good yeah. chicken restaurants. Yes. Ah, the famous Three Wings. We did actually go back there, didn't we? Yeah. Last year, year it was before? different, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. So Vigo's got the drone up. It is uh, a little bit windy for him. He said there's some stuff he just can't do in these conditions, but he has still got the drone up. There it is. It's a brilliant shot. You saw a shot yesterday, held, didn't you? The drone looking like almost like it was under somebody's wheel arch, wasn't it? It was, um, well, was it during a shunt? I can't remember. Or was it in the last corner? It was just a great shot. Oh, it's when Belevsky mounted the tyres in the first yes. corner of the final. Yeah. And I thought, oh, it's weird. What's that? Weird, yeah. weird. The damper's a funny colour, aren't it? It's just a drone. In, in, in the, the gap wheel between the, the wheel and the bodywork. <laughs> because Vigo's a legend. Uh, open two-wheel drive. Two-wheel drive cars. L it's not fair to say the rules are loose. There are rules. They're loose. It's the entire... OK, that's fair then. As Hal Rich said yesterday, this is Radcross. Um, but these, these cars are great. And we were talking to Derek Togel again this morning. I have to... Derek, the quality of Derek's build is stunning. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And the quality of these is too. But what we were saying is that just the... I love the innovative approach, the fact that everybody has gone down a different route. And that's what I mean by this is Rallycross, because, um, yes, there's some amazing single make categories, and uh, that's what produces real talent in, from a driving point of view, like Supercar Lights and RX2E. But this is where you see uh, home-brewed innovation, and I, I truly believe that this needs to continue to be a part of, of Rallycross at uh, the level it is to, to accompany those more recent single make categories that produce future stars. So looking back at Crosscar, Igmer's dad won that session uh, and actually won yesterday, so very much on form. The winner yesterday in open two-wheel drive was Simon Tiger, who's on the pole here. You've got Stevenson, Engsvik, Steerer and Pong. Bad start for Simon Tiger, gone backwards off the line. Normally can make up for that with uh, all that horsepower, but he's now fourth in line, so that's not what he wanted. Meanwhile, out front, great start for Engsvik and for Kenneth Kong as well from the outside line. All of the top four in this race had the potential to win yesterday. They were all at the front at some point. Tiger opts not to joker behind Severson on the opening lap. Sensible decision, I think, because uh, there's a little bit of clear air there that we can get the hammer down. Interesting talking to Derek this morning, wasn't it? Because we were saying to him, look, you know, there's other people out there with a million horsepower, um, but they're managing to get it down. What, what's the issue? And obviously, we heard us say he's put some weight in the car. But they're going to have to remap it again, aren't they? Just for drivability, basically. I Delivery. Think, I think that's also an indication. Derek's using a supercar concept here, isn't he? It's a two-litre turbocharged engine. We'll see that in the next race in the session. And I think people maybe don't appreciate quite how much a supercar engine is managed through the course of a weekend. You know, the, the, the mapping is constantly being slightly adjusted. Look at the front wheel on these beautifully set up rear-wheel drive cars. You could lie underneath that. If you were brave enough to lie there on the exit of turn, whatever it is, seven or two. Yeah, this one. So this was the one yesterday, wasn't it? There it is. I'm not brave enough to lie there again. No. No. But you could put something there, couldn't you? You could put an apple there.
That's what they put on William Taylor's head, wasn't it? Got to look at it. today's like history lesson, isn't it? William Tell, William the Conqueror. A GoPro would do. Yeah. Th that's yeah. what we need to do. We need do to get a GoPro. Oh, proper for Engsvig. So Engsvig, was that just a mistake and a bit of lost time? Maybe a missed gear, but loses a position to Kenneth Kong. Is Tiger going to go Joker, surely? Yes, I thought so. So I thought he might go on the previous lap, but he behind Severson's already gone and wasn't that far back. I think Severson's going to get him, yeah. Tiger sideways in the Joker, so Severson has got through in front of Tiger. That'll update on the ladder when they cross the line. There they go. And he's only 2.3 back. So Jorgen Severson here, Hal, he's, he's probably going to get this lot. He had great pace yesterday as well at points. Had a problem from memory later on. Just having a look back at yesterday's results. Second quickest in uh, Q3. That was behind Tiger, so clearly had pace. This is Kong into the Joker on the final lap. And there you go, coming through. Jorgen Severson in the Fiesta. Obviously not a front-wheel drive Fiesta. Kenneth Kong gets P2, Simon Tiger. And Exvig, 3.0 across, only 5.4 across the whole field. Interesting what happened next week. I don't know if we'll see it or not. Look at Tiger's start and how that's... It's unlikely to be reactions, is it? It's maybe a bit too much wheel spin off the line. Well, whatever happened, got caught out. And then in that train, clever enough to know to stay on the inside line, really inside line. Dust coming up a little bit. I think it will dry. I think the finals will be trickier, especially with the wind. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is drying. But you don't get the... Uh... Look at that. There we go. Look, it's easily a GoPro. Get it. DSLR under that can well maybe not the end of the corner. You do get the, a little bit less. Um, there, there it was. Look, that side. Yeah, another, an, another small mistake. We saw a few of those men's figures yesterday. Great pace, but um, it's not. That's not strictly fair. He had a puncture in one of the races, but you just get offline a little bit, and then you get eaten up by someone who's using the grip on the line. Even through these last couple of corners, you can see where the rubber is down now. I think track track temperature will play a part, won't it? Because the tyres just won't work as as well as they were uh, yesterday in the. Well, it was 18, 19 degrees yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, it was lovely. But cold feet today, didn't I mention it? Uh, Severson Kong, Tiger, Engsvig. Let's look at that pond. Give me memories of Fraser McConnell. Park of the FC 1 in 1. I mean, it's never, no, it's never ideal. The stories him and Larson tell about Larson going to help him, but neither of them wanted to put their feet in the water because they weren't sure about the batteries. And then they used the batteries on backwards car the following day. So. Uh, Burton, Burtonson, Toehill in the middle, Norman, great start by Toehill, that's using the power a bit more, then he gets a nudge from behind, now he's sort of sandwiched in between. That's from the Nunes off at DT, another uh, little nudge in the rear. Norman, go on, Hal. Oh, Norman just had, had, that car is actually quite agile, Can, it doesn't look very agile, does it, when you look at it from, uh, from a distance, but he was able to get back to the inside there into turn two, it definitely is turn two at the start of the lap. Bertelsen raced with us a few years ago, didn't he, for a few rounds, and then uh, hasn't done much since. But um, fantastic to have the Danes here. Hopefully they come up to, to Sweden and Finland, because it would be good to have these guys for the full season. Look to Hansen in the Mercedes 190 Evo Hybrid, which Merck never made, but he has. He's got a BMW Mini Electric Drive train in it. Derek Tohill was fascinated by that this morning, wasn't he? Even his mates, it's just brilliant. Oh, side by side over the crest down the hill. I'm, I love Marcus Norman's CLK, um, so it gives me uh, Black Series vibes, the, the uh, CLK 63 AMG Black Series, which was the F1 pace car for a while. And I've been lucky enough to see uh, a couple of those in, in uh, a past life as a, an instructor at Mercedes-Benz World. It was a hell of a car. What are the engine rules? Could you come in with a 6.3 V8? I don't know if that fits the rules, I don't think it does. In, in Super National, uh, the, the engine, in, so traditional Super National categories in Scandinavia are based on engine capacity, so a, a 2.4, for example, would, yeah. be the, would be the main class. Open two-wheel drive is much more open than that to do what you want, it, open two-wheel drive being the name. It's a bit more like Super Modified Super National in the UK, where the basic concept of the regulations is the engine has to be in the original compartment yeah. and has to be the same number of cylinders. How that works when you put a Wankel engine in a Mercedes That's is, what I mean, uh, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I'm not sure how... I, I don't think you can do that at home, but I think this is even more open, so... We, we have seen, of course, things like, you know, a Renault, a Renault Clio with a five-cylinder, what was it, uh, Renault van engine, and it wasn't it, which used to sound like the Audi 
and that was it as long as it was from the same family. But I say that's in supercar, isn't it? Yeah, and the, yeah, and these the rules are a lot drive looser. Rules generally, are more open than that. I'd love to see a V8 class just for the noise. Or, or an, what, compulsory V8? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, you go right. You have to use a V8. <laughs> would, would you take V8? Would you take a Wankel or a V8? Ah, the noise of the Wankel's great, isn't it? Yeah. V8 is probably a little bit more reliable. Yeah, but we, yeah, yeah. The rebuild intervals on, on, a, on no, a rotary they, engine. Are they harsh? Yeah. Are they really? Yeah, yeah. Right. The only thing I'm told is you don't get so much engine braking. Your Hansen coming through, uh, going to take it, and it's quickest, or oh, by a tenth of a, less than a tenth of a second. Um, yeah, I gather you don't get as much engine braking with the Wankel engine. So when you lift, you don't get that thing of the nose coming down quite so much because mm. of the way the compression works in the engine. So that also changes the way the car feels to drive. Yeah, massively, yeah. You don't realise if you, if you drive a, a... Look at the start on the outside. Look at that. Your has got it just fully hooked up. This is the start your hands are needed, isn't it? From uh, a difficult day yesterday and then being sixth in, in Q1 earlier on. New bumper on the front of that car. I'll post a picture on my uh, Instagram later on of the front bumper from his car last night, which was basically missing. It was, and it wasn't, wasn't it? it had fallen off. It'd it'd just been, a bit, it had just been it just been machine gun by the by the loose. So yeah, great that he's got a new bumper on there, and he'll be looking to fight back today because this is a long season, and he'll want to be scoring as many points as possible. it for open two-wheel drive. Uh, Victor Johansson wins the session. Simon Tiger won Q1. Where was Johansson? Ah, oh, Victor was P10 in Q1, Hal. We didn't see, I say we were down filming uh, yeah, at the time. Yeah, so he was so six. Was that that was wrong, because he was on the outside of the grid. So he was obviously last in Q1. I thought he was on pole, but he was on no, I've got you, so I've got okay. you. So yeah, so he's, P, he's had a P10 and a P1. So that's some, that, that's some turnaround. Uh, while Simon Tiger has had a P4 and a P1. Look at that. OK. Lucas Anderson, Caspi Anderson, Isaac Schockfist, and uh, Mats Oskerson. Good start on the inside. Yesterday's winner, Lucas Anderson, holding off Caspi Janssen, who's got a couple of titles in NRX next to his name. In the background. Oskarsson and Hockvist getting into it. Hockvist getting forced out wide there by Oskarsson. Just the uh, rough and tumble of a rallycross opening couple of corners. Isaac choosing not to joker on lap one. Sensible decision that, and you can only really make that decision as a driver. Your spotter can't help you at that stage. You, you, you choose not to joker to follow someone in. And um, as we were talking to Ollie Eriksson yesterday in, in the studio, it's hard to, to sort the joker strategy out over three laps, but absolutely the right decision not to follow someone in, in on that one. We were actually, we talked as well, didn't we, last night to Guillaume de Ritter and Victor Franks, and he was saying about some of the terminology we'd said in the show yesterday about joker option, and Hal rightly pointed out, obviously, a lot of people use different language. Uh, and they have joker opposite, which is one of their one of their things they say in the car. And basically, you only look at the car in front of you. If you're third, it's irrelevant what happens. Uh, Kasper Janssen goes joker. Irrelevant what's happening two cars up the road. You do whatever the car in front of you doesn't do. And then yeah. that's joker opposite. And it, just, I, I love all that. It's brilliant. So Janssen has gone joker to try and get around Anderson. We're on lap two out of three. Do you think they'll send Anderson on the next lap? I reckon they will. Maybe, yeah. Shukrist has got the uh, fastest lap of the race so far, by almost half a second ahead of Anderson. But Anderson's got over a second and a half difference over the last split. Anderson won yesterday with some fantastic pace in the final. He was fifth going into turn two. You're right, Andrew. He is going to joke on the opening lap, I think. Isaac's going to go again. See whether or not he gets in front of Janssen. He does. So that's a good lap by Anderson yesterday. So Anderson yesterday, Hal, in quali was P3 in Q1, which was really good, but then 8th and 7th. So ended up 6th in qualifying and, and got the win from there. Had a bit of traffic, didn't he? Shukris goes fastest again on a 41 one last time around. Gap's only 1.8, though. Not going to be enough as it stands. So the times are coming down now compared to earlier. That's faster than Chukvist or Anderson managed in Q1 earlier on. So track conditions improving a bit. You can see the dust coming up. So I'll happily keep the dust down just so we get more action in turn one. But oh, yeah. Anderson so late on the brakes there. Some brilliant shots yesterday of Kevin Erickson. Absolutely like on the stoppers, wasn't he? And right out in the dirt. And just a, a wonderful shot. Take a look on Insta at Rally X's account for that. Yesterday's winner, Anderson. 
goes quickest, 15 years old, driving for the JC team. And that is a 236.5. How, what was the time in Q1? It was a 237.9. So, so it's a little bit quicker. But the best lap for Anderson there was a 41.356. Janssen did a 41.287. Hookvist did a 41.136 and Oscarson said a 41.693. So uh, there's so little to choose between the front and the back in this lights category. I think as well important to note that with the track getting slightly quicker, we got some very quick. Well, we got Olofsson and Enland in the next one and Exberth as well, either Tornholt. And then in the final race, you've got um, Haug, two Haugs, Lars Eric and Nils Christian. Uh, and you've got Ola St Henry Steinsholt, who had a bit of a shocker, broke his car in Q1. So if the track is getting quicker, we, we're going to get a good idea. So 236.5. Have you got any individual lap times, Hal? I haven't got any individual lap times. I've just got the overall. Yeah, so Shukvist did a 41.136. OK. You can play along with us as we figure out what's happening with the track. Thrilling, I'm sure. Well, it is getting quicker. We know that. Yeah. yeah. I like it. I'm a bit of track conditions, chat. He does. Olsen yesterday had an absolute shocker in the final. Leading, I think, wasn't he, when it went wrong? Yeah, they, uh, they'd had a problem starting the car. Good awareness there from Martin Enland. Gets up the inside of uh, Martin Exbeuf, and he's still inside Martin Exbeuf into turn two. Tornholt also decides to uh, continue on the standard lap. Yeah, they had a problem starting Olsen's car ahead of the final, so they bump-started it, got it down there. And oh, Enlin in the wall, comes out, runs across, rear suspension broken, big old slap there. Look at that rear corner's off the car, and he knows. Wow. We've seen a few people here that get away with it, Hal. Yeah, we've also seen quite a bit of damage from there as well, haven't yeah. we? But Kevin Erickson was the was the biggest person to... Uh, yeah, get away the biggest with impact it. and get away with it yesterday, for sure. So, go on, yes, yeah, so Olofsson, getting back to Olofsson. So, Olofsson, yeah, so uh, it, it died, they lost electrical power. Um, last night and then, uh, or in the final, sorry, and then there was a lot of head scratching going on when we left the paddock, which was quite late when we left. It was 9, 9.30 or something in the evening by the time we left. Was uh, messaging Sandra Holgren into, later on into the evening and uh, it was it was pretty late when she, she sent a message to say they talked it. Largely thanks to the support of uh, Isaac Hooker's team as well. So oh, great cool. camaraderie in this paddock that uh, no reply saying, I, lo I, I love this championship, I love Rallycross, and she said, I agree. But, you know, Hooker's team, there to, uh, to help solve an electrical problem. And those are the worst sorts of issues, aren't they? We, we yeah, both know from our own misery. competing that you, if the wheel falls off, you can fix it. If the engine dies, you can replace it. If, if you lose all the fluids from the, the oil system, you can sort that out. But when the electrical system dies, you can't really see what, uh, what the problem is. So uh, quite often a head scratcher. 41.8 for um, Olufsen last time around. That's half a second slower than Shukvist. So not... Uh, what are you saying, lap times house? Or just, uh, 4 2 one, seven now for XBF. They're going slower than um, the fastest laps of the previous race, but they're going slower than both uh, Anderson and Hookvist. Sorry, Isaac, I still can't say your name correctly, oh, but sorry, it's one of those Swedish names where you have to use... It's quite... But it's regional, too. So we got some messages last night. A very kind Swede sent me on Shukvist, which obviously in commentary we anglicise things a little bit. Forgive us for that. Um, we do try and we do ask. And, and then George McGinnis, I, I owe him an apology. Olufsen, 238.1, so not quicker than Anderson. Um, George had studied Swedish for four years. We're like, you're not a proper Swede, George. I mean, he's not a proper Swede, but he did no, have a good I idea. I stand by that. But he was saying uh, North and South Sweden would potentially say it slightly differently. So, yeah. So let's take a look. Watch particularly for Enland and the and the barrier clatter. So we did have that cross car blow up. Uh, it's a few races ago now, but still, if you if you catch it wrong. So Enland's inside here, look. Assertive and, and, and gets it done. Good, great, great moves. Now wait for this. Uh, he goes through the right and then through the left. Are we going to see it from the drone? I think we potentially are. P2 car here, look. Just understeered wide, hasn't he? And then got there. Or I think it's the sand howl that they put, not the mm. sand, the, the dust stuff that they put. To, oh, did well that that wasn't a bigger impact afterwards. And the map barrier is not moving anywhere, is it, with a big bang behind it? So uh, any impact like that is going to be punished. They'll get that fixed, though. 
That's the beauty of these lights cars. It'll have broken the suspension, but but nothing else, no. and uh, he'll be back out for Q3. Because that, that car was mint, uh, literally. 36 hours ago, and have now absolutely gravel rushed to hell across the front. Sandra Holkin, of course, had to pull an all-nighter at Nitro recently as well, changing the engine for the NRX Next machine of Olufsen. So they, they, they're pulling the night shift all the while at the minute. Same car. Simon uses his own car. That must be the most used lights car. Should really work that out, shouldn't I? But is that, yeah, that's his right. own car. Yeah. That's a 24. Yeah. Chassis 24. Yes, how rich. There's a book about that. <laughs> Niels Christian Haug and Ola Henry Steins. Oh, Steins up with a better start. Unfortunately, we're missing Lars Eric Haug. Uh, Hal, I think Lars Eric Haug missed the end of yesterday as well. Yeah, they were uh, one of the lights like, teams changing engines last night, or they at least had the engine out. Out. Um, and a crate with a new engine, as far as I can see. So I'll pop up there afterwards and, and find out what's going on. But massive shame for the Haug squad. Now running two cars in uh, in Rally X this year. Either Tornholt was the other driver that retired with an engine failure and um, yeah, that's where you see uh, the sort of stuff that you don't always see on the, the TV but Oli Erickson was actually covered in oil last night wasn't he changing the uh, yeah, he changing was. the engine and uh, as he talked to us about in the, in the studio it's, it's part of the service that they offer they, they don't do all the work but they oversee it and it's that sort of knowledge that's so invaluable when you're having to change an engine in a hurry and yeah. it he, he was ripping us a bit, weren't we? Like, what, what are you up to then? What are you doing? He was, you don't see me outside of the paddock. <laughs> but he said that actually they hadn't done an engine change before, had they? So he was, he was, he was say, overseeing, not doing everything, but overseeing and making sure that it goes according to, I guess, according to how OMSC would do it as the designers and builders of the cars. I thought someone had a misfire then, but it was actually a supercar doing a tyre clean, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the Hemi signs has been in the wars this weekend, doesn't he? He uh, had that contact in the first corner of the final and uh, ended up in the middle of the circuit and um, yeah, quickly got out because that's a very fast, fast part of the track and then got squished into that wall earlier on. We actually heard the clatter. I don't think you were watching at the time, when you? No, you I wasn't. Was that? Was what the hell was the noise? So, when you, you don't hear yeah. it on the television, no. do you? But when you hear it trackside, it's a massive, horrible it's noise. Bang, it's a car crash. The, 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 it sounded like a car crash, literally. And I looked up and all the cars were still going and I thought, okay, we weird. I said, how was that? And he said, he's tapped the barrier. But the noise was, yeah, it was huge. Starts up with a bit of tyre squeal in the tarmac portion of the joke lap on the exit. So lap times are, what's he done, 42.2, how's that compare? It's over a second slower than... It's not. Uh, so is it that it's missed. not got quicker or is it that our top driver... I mean, to be fair to Lucas Anderson, how's He's they... jokered on lap two, hasn't he? So you can't take lap one necessarily. No, OK, fair well, enough. Well, you can't because... Uh, yeah, because it's a flying lap. It's a flying lap. Yeah. It's not lap zero. So Anderson, yesterday's winner, had a P8, a P7 and a P3. He's already won Q1 today. I think he's about to win Q2. So, I mean, that's some, that's some improvement, Hal, overnight. Is that just a confidence thing, do you think, for Anderson? Massive confidence. You, confidence makes such a big difference like that. Yeah. Knowing you can do it is uh, very important. Stein's hulking across the line, as you'll see, he's not going to challenge the top times. 39 are put him 6th or 5th or 6th-ish. Hmm. Two session wins to Anderson. So yesterday's yeah, win with me sick with that, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. But big, big advantage. I'm, I'm surprised to be honest, because uh, Ola Henry super experienced in various different cars and uh, very very quick, isn't he? So uh, surprising that with a clean run like that, it looks like he's on new tyres as well, doesn't it? Because the wheels are nice and clean, the rest of the car's dirty. Unless, of course, they haven't managed to fix everything from from the previous session, but they've had enough time. Yeah. I would have thought. How learning uh, learning the lights cars and finding. Uh, the gravel traps. See the tiny bump there as they came off the loose onto the tar. Yeah. Just on second the car slightly. Oh, the wind's changed direction. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to another side on the tent. We really, I don't even know if we've got another side left. Um, we do have some sort of a break, I think, next, because lunch is slightly later today than it was yesterday because of the fact, as Hal pointed out to me this morning, uh, there was no um, practice this morning for everybody, just a warm-up, which is shorter. Supercar, here we go. Linneman, who won Q1, as he did yesterday. Backer at Christopherson Franks and Kevin Erickson, who pulled off some mega around the outside stuff yesterday. Backer gets a great start next to Linneman. Outside line though, Kevin Erickson's got another banger. Is he gonna pitch it in? He does, tends the Civic sideways. Right the way out to the dirt, Backer dropped back. 
Christophson up the inside a little bit backwards, gone from B2 to B5 somehow. Victor Franks is in B4, who's going to go Joker? Franks goes so back or it doesn't. And it's Ericsson who leads with another round the outside send. He's so good at that, isn't he? But you've just got to have so much faith that it's going to come back because you run right to the bank on the outside. I wonder if the bank's actually less uh, gradiented down to the circle than it used to be because you used to see a lot of cars running into it on the outside. Kevin didn't see the rear wheels lock as he gets the rear turned in down at the bottom of the hill. Do you remember yesterday when he came in there and just laid down four huge black lines? Basically, it was almost a half spin in as Chris uh, backwards going to get past Linneman here, maybe in the background. Watch for them. See if backward goes up the inside, he passed Hedstrom here earlier and he's going to pass Linneman too. Want to see the pass, want to see the pass. He's got him, so backward's got him, nicely done. Christofsson's in the joker lap, backward gets up to second on track, most staying on the standard lap. Christofsson couldn't joker on lap one because he'd run that little bit wide in that fight with Linneman and couldn't get back to the inside. Now Christofsson's joker and got clean air. Linneman's dropped back, so has Linneman got a problem now? Seems to be a fair way back up the 8.9 back, maybe. I'm near a misfire, can you? I think that's another tyre clean, isn't uh, it? You might be right. In the pre-grid area. Yeah. The gap between Christofferson and Kevin Erickson is 3.9. I would, if I was Ollie Erickson, I'd joke with Kevin now. They kept leaving Kevin out yesterday and he didn't make enough margin to get out of Christofferson. Well, great shout from Hal. Oh, Erickson with the ball send into the joker. He's absolutely thrown that in there. He's thrown everything at him and he's got him. That is a brilliant piece of pedaling from Kevin Erickson. Christofferson comes up, whoa, right under the curb. Just nudges his Cooper tire across the inside of it, pulled the car back out. Epic stuff there from Ericsson. How that's the most impressive joke lap we've seen all weekend. Kevin Ericsson, Johan Christophson have an identical best lap time of 39.208. So Kevin Ericsson has matched Johan Christophson on pure pace in this race. You cannot give Christophson clean air to do what he wants to do. Great spotting by Ericsson to get Kevin in and out of the joke lap. To, to the thousandth of a second. Christophson so late on the brakes. Ericsson early away there. He's done well, but that joke lap from Ericsson was epic. Into the last corner, Kevin Erickson going to take this uh, first race of Q2. Check a flag out. P2 for Christopherson. Backward is third. Backward, that start was mad. Franks and then poor old Linneman. Oh, not another day like that for Ulrich. He's got 150 guests here at home in Denmark and, uh, and we wish him well. They're all just on the right behind that catch fence. Look at this. OK, watch Backward. He gets a brilliant start. Linneman's there inside him. What happens to Andreas? He's P2 here, how effective one. Now he's third, because Ericsson's gone in. Linneman just gets him out a bit wide. And you just roosted to hell, he can't see anything again. But Christophson's used all of his experience there, hasn't he, to come out of the throttle into turn one. This is why he couldn't get into the Joker, because he'd gone so wide in that side-to-side -side battle with Linneman. Yeah. There was ranks into the Joker. This is backwards move on Linneman that we didn't see during the race. That's Linneman great. gave him a lot of space there, to be fair to Yorick. Yeah. He saw him coming, opened the door, Maybe he'd already got his issue at that point, but we have seen a brilliant pass from Andreas on, uh, say, on Hedstrom. Look at this joker, look at this. Look at the angle on the car and how close he is to the armco on the inside line. Look at that, look at that. Oh, I think he might have touched it. It's just, it was, and then here, Johan, look, he's in. See, see him turn it out, doesn't want to get on top of the crest of the curb. He just turns it slightly out and then back in again. Great stuff. Kevin will be pumped now, Wendy. That, uh, that was a great drive. Kevin Erickson takes the win from Christophson back with Franks and Linneman. Hal, you spoke to Kevin yesterday, and we know he's still struggling a bit with his ankle. So he's saying in the FC1, which he's raced all year in Nitro, the throttle, no, it's not the throttle movement, it's the seating position is more upright. And he says in the Civic, it's more like being in a, what do you call it, a formula car, didn't he? He said he was sitting really low and he's struggling for the rotation in his ankle. Yeah, we can, let's, let's talk about more yes, about this sorry, time. my bad, we're ready to go already. <laughs> Good, no rest. Roman Tam, baby, Hedstrom, Malevsky. Hedstrom yesterday's winner. Malevsky's been super quick, but has chucked it off a couple of times. Hedstrom backs out of it on, then decides to go to the outside line. Malevsky does a Kevin Erickson and throws it in. By the background, turned around. Inside line now, defensive from Malevsky. But OC, baby, up the inside. That's a mega pass in turn two by baby. Super opportunistic. Pivots the polo round and just goes, thank you very much, Yuri. I'll take that from you right now. Belevsky just around that little bit wide on the entry of two and then got over-rotated on the loose on the outside. It was Tam who spun in the first corner. Dennis Roman stayed out of the way. Oh, look at the polo moving around on the bump under the bridge. It's so bumpy there. He's saying there's a crest dip anyway in there. But let's give it tidier this time. That was superb by Baby to respond so quickly to what was a very small moment, really, for Belevsky and to capitalise on it. Yeah, Baby had a difficult day. So I said to him last night, I don't want to come anywhere near you, mate, because you've only had bad luck, but I don't want to be catching it. <laughs> and they're, they're, they're very loose on the outside there now, isn't it? So 
Vaby gets a little bit over-rotated. There's Malevsky in there, the EQS built, Volland, Grant, Audi in the Joker. These are the... the Hedgeson must have an issue, I think, because he's miles gone. behind somewhere. Forget about him, he's gone. So we don't know yeah, what's happened a, to Hedstrom. He's only coming through the final corner right now, isn't he? A puncture in the uh, in Q1 when we were watching where he's passing at the moment. No such issues for uh, Baby. He's driving the car that Christofferson raced in, in Rally X last season. So it's a uh, originally KMS built car from 2014. Of course, they've got... Oh! 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 So he's parked at the side of the road. There's another car parked on top of the crest, Hal, at the, at the jump, sorry, at the crest. I was looking at the timing screen. Malevsky going to get this surely. He makes a mistake as well. So what has happened there? Broken just away. Mentioned, I, think he's I think he's had contact with the car at the top of the hill and then spun so down who's the parked hill. at the top of the hill? Roma? Roma. Tam's still going, so it must be Dennis Roma's Volkswagen. Hopefully we can see that in the replays, because that must have been quite a moment. I mean, it's a ride over that double crest, it really is. So watch Balevsky through here, and you'll see as they go over the first crest, the cars themselves, but the problem is it's almost impossible not to case... Oh, oh wow. Not to case the second crest. So I was out of the car, because he's not in the car, he's just parked, isn't it? So I think oh, Baby's oh. I, I, I suspect there's been some contact up there, and that's where Baby's got the damage. He said he'd only had bad luck this weekend, Hal. Balevsky's been quick, but has had those little mistakes. No mistakes this time, other than the one that cost him the position to baby earlier. But uh, 232.6 is a fair way off the pace of Ericsson. There was a bit of carnage in there, and that's going to take uh, a bit of clearing up, I reckon. Yeah, front left headlight cover's missing from Baby's car. And it, was it, is it the rear left that you think the suspension's broken on? Yeah, definitely. So he's hit You can see it's crabbing with, down the road yeah. there, can't you? Oh, and now right on Roma. A rear yeah, right side. Look at that. Yeah, but that's like how look the dampers. So bottom right of your picture there. Look at the damper and the spring have been pulled out of the top mount. So that suspension's been rotated round. Yeah, that's. Um, so where was that damage. park to be hit like that? Start first of all. Hedstrom is late on the reaction time for me. Hedstrom had problems getting the tire clean done as well, didn't he? Before yeah, uh, so Q1. Q1, it was weird, wasn't it? So Belev is there. Sorry, Andrew. Belev no, gets the rotation done early, and then the front pushes on a bit, just doesn't have the confidence to keep the, the toe in, I don't think. And he's locked up there, look, locked up, run a bit deep, into the loose gravel, and Baby, thank you very much, pops it up the inside. So Roma and Tam in the background had contact, uh, and, and good to see Tam back out, by the way, after the engine issue yesterday. So here is Belevsky. So we're still look, top of the hill, Tam, down. top of the hill, the car's parked there already, you see it? Yeah. Just in the dust in the background. Here it is. Oh, no, he doesn't. He drops it on his own. But, so of course, he's had to avoid the car. He's just been distracted, I think, by the car. So if we look over our shoulder, Andrew, out of the commentary box window, Roma's car's right on the peak of the hill. And when you come up the hill, as we did in the rental car very slowly the other day, <laughs> it's completely blind and you're, you're just seeing the sky. So he'll have seen Roma's car in the middle of the circuit, obviously gone to the right of it to avoid it, and then that's just slightly put him offline. Levski takes the race win at 2.32.651. That's uh, some way behind uh, Kevin Erickson. Victor Vranks, the only driver from uh, Q, the, the first race of the session that's uh, slightly slower than Belevsky. Not, not the cleanest run ever for Belevsky. And uh, maybe did a mega job there, didn't he, to get to the end with the, the rear wheel pointing in uh, not the ideal direction. We're going to have another look at it. So uh, th this is the, the full replay package, but we, uh, we're particularly interested in seeing the bit with Vaby, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, this just uh, there, So there's the, there's the spin round look. So Tam gets spun round. Here it is. So watch, look, he comes up, he's all crossed up. And that's what I was trying to explain, is how the first crest pitches you to the second one. It's impossible not to case the second one. So you've got to be straight, because the suspension just can't cope with it. <laughs> look at that. We did I wonder well. if we can watch that last bit again while they're, while they're clearing here the car. Is, here, here it is. is. He's so unlucky to have broken the suspension there, because he barely hits the wall. We can he's see how loose the gravel is there offline. Yeah, he's going a fair old lick, though, isn't he? Oh, and then is he lucky? Oh, he, I'd say he's lucky not to get collected by Balevsky. Here it is from another angle. Yes, well done to the guys in the truck doing their best. Oh, and you see the guy put his hands on his head because he knows what's happening. It's going round. And that is maybe one of the fastest points on a rallycross track anywhere to have that sort of moment. Well, that, it, that, that double crest, it's just, it's like bang, bang. And, and, and things like the lights cars, for instance, don't handle that so well. I didn't, we haven't seen what happened to Roma, have we? So, but I don't think we've got it from what no. the guys in the truck are saying. Um, oh. But, he, but he's had that 
he must have run wide going up that. So that's uh, left rear, isn't it? So he's run wide out of the long left hander going up the hill and probably. Well, hit the arm co. Whack the, the arm co. I suspect. There's nothing there. Mind you, that in, that is. Some... There's damage on the arm co. I can see from here, but. Uh, sorry, that's... I'm looking at the recovery, which is yeah, no, uh, the I'm recovery's the, the wrong other end. way. I'm looking at the wrong end. See where yeah. these photographers are in yeah. the blue. Okay, so they're we're going to have another look back at the uh, the race and see if they're yeah, I think they're taking footage. They're taking a look on the EVS to see if we can catch what happened. There it is. The EVS is our replay machine, so they found this on the drone. Look at Vigo and his reaction time to get there and see what happened. I mean, it's just, I love seeing the drone flights, I really do. See the Ola Christian's rear wheels towing in there. Oh, look at Belevsky, Hal as well. He did have to give it a flick and a half yeah, to get he, away from it. And he lost all his momentum down here, but he was probably just gathering his thoughts, wasn't he? Because that was. He's a... just very pleased not to collect baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that wheel's not in a great shape, is it? I don't think the whole left corner, rear left corner. That's it, mate. Go on, sweep it up. Mega. Uh, it must be fluid, because they've put down the orange sand again, which is, I say, it's not sand. It's like a, what do you want to call it, Hal? So it's like a dust, special dust, which which is specifically designed. Is it like they call it an environmental spill kit, and it's designed specifically to to soak up fluids really quickly. You have to carry them in uh, in rally cars and stuff these days in motorsport. Well. I've just had a message from uh, Patrick Donovan, the reigning British Rallycross champion, saying how much he enjoyed the first supercar. I can't say exactly what he said because it's not airable. Did he say it was mega? He'd, well, yeah, basically. Although, overused term. Mega. Yeah, I agree. I've, have you ever said that word? Extra base. Greetings from Latvia. We are watching. Hey, Cheers, we were mate. talking about him the other day, yeah. weren't we, in our Lada race experience? Yeah, he's great fun. One of the best events I've ever done, that. I beat Guy Wilkes that day. Guy who? Guy Wilkes, say eh? how we and beat Andrew Guy Who Wilkes. and Guy Who. <laughs> yeah, you did. You beat both of us, and they rolled your car on its side to change its gearbox, which was epic, wasn't it? Do you think Guy's watching? No. Hello, Guy. Might see it later. You never know. Cal Award, Morton Schnack, Stephen Christensen, and Magnus Dahl to round out Q2. And then we're going to go and have some lunch. What do you think about that? Eh? Schnack gets a good start. Go on. Oh. And then runs a little bit wide. He's going to lose one place. He's going to lose all three. It's going to be tough to get back to the inside, but he does. Well done. Bit of a missile there from uh, from Schnack, just po pointing it at the apex. Magnus Dahl had a terrible day yesterday. All sorts of technical issues. Carla Ward missing the apex in the uh, corner before the start finish. I think Magnus Dahl's got more issues here with the uh, with the clear. We spoke to Cal Ward yesterday, didn't we, after watching him in practice. And he hasn't driven a supercar before, other than 12 laps, I think he said, at uh, Arvika, was it? Yeah, Arvika, uh, yeah. the nearest track to the... And, well, he, he did. Do you remember, we went over the... Because we were watching, it's in sort of out lap, and he went over the double crest, flat out, didn't he, with a lot of lock on. And I said, how? Bloody hell, he's not scared, is he? And we went and saw him, and he's actually... He's got a fair bit of competition history, hasn't he? Yeah, he's uh, been racing a circuit racing most recently, but he was... Uh, GTT4, was it? I mean, yeah, yeah. He, but he was actually part of the uh, Fiesta Sporting Trophy concept when uh, Andreas Eriksson was part of the, the founding element of that up in Scandinavia, worked with M-Sport as well in the UK, and that produced a lot of, a lot of very, very good drivers. Did People like Elvin Evans started yeah. in that sort of series. Elvin, of course, leading Rally Croatia the last time I looked up in the WRC this weekend. So, had all of that loose experience and then hasn't been on the loose for a very long time since then. He did a couple of JWRC events as well, he said. Didn't he? I think he said he'd done two JWRC events. So, they, you know... And then he said it was a very long time ago. It was. And, of course, if the, your last experience is GT4, let's be honest, you try and avoid the gravel in those. There's definitely no jumps. He is getting sent the ass out there. I mean... The, the dude can clearly pedal, Hallie. You can always see that. It's like when we first saw Casper Janssen, Fraser McConnell. You know, these people who come in all wild, but you can tidy that up. If you can't move a car around underneath you, you can't do it. And I, I think you'd be all right. It's just a case of getting a bit of seat time and, and getting into it. I absolutely agree, yeah. You, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're comfortable with the car moving and you're brave enough to stay in the throttle when you yeah. need to, then you can, you can sort that out with a bit of coaching, yeah. can't you? Yeah. If you? If you're terrified of the car moving around underneath you, then you're not, you aren't a bit of a hard into nothing, aren't you? So, uh, I've got great photos. I need a lot of coaching. <laughs> <laughs> That's about the size of it, but yeah. But that's, that comes from driving on the loose, Hal. And I'm always surprised that more rallycross drivers, yeah, that come in with tarmac experience, not Ward, he's obviously done rally, but just go and drive, some, drive on the loose, go and drive on the frozen lake, get the car moving around. It's not as hard as you might think. Ward takes it. 
T31.9, it's not bad, actually, Hal. T31.9 is going to put Ward in P4 in that okay. session. So, with all the Sandy McSenderson stuff out there, Cal Ward is going P4. What did he do yesterday? I don't think he was high up, that high up yesterday. Pilevsky didn't have the cleanest race of all time, did he, to be fair, in uh, the second of the races, and he was fourth going into that third one, but take nothing away from Cal Ward. Yeah, eighth was his best yesterday, and that's, that's a P4. And, and again, look, in, look at this, look. He was chucking it around a bit, and that's what we mean. Tied it up a little bit more, and, and he's suddenly going to find himself in the mix with, with the top guy. So, well done, Cal Ward. That's great on your supercar debut just uh, the day after and going P4. Shout to Stefan uh, Christensen as well, did a 39.8 as a, a best lap and uh, Christofferson and Kevin Erickson did a, a 39.2 so not a million miles away from some of the best rallycross drivers in the world either. There is confirmation of that result, Cal Award 2.31.962, Christensen, Schnack and Dahl. Dahl's had a difficult weekend at his home event. Be fantastic if uh, these Danish drivers join us in some other events. Great stuff. That is it from Q2. We've still got all of Q3 coming up, of course, which will include Junior Cross Car as well as all the categories you've just seen. That will round out qualifying for round two of Rally X 2023 and then this afternoon, semi-finals and finals. Hal, have we got an actual break here where we can eat some lunch or has that been eaten up by crashes and things and we'll have to just inhale something and come straight back? Let's see. OK, we'll be back soon. Keep your eyes peeled on the stream. Uh, thanks for joining us for this session. Uh, back very soon indeed.
So we're about to get into Q3 for all categories. This was Q2 for supercar Kevin Erickson. Another super sandy round the outside move. And, uh, and then this brilliant committed joke lap that we actually saw from a trackside camera as he pitched in over the top. Almost touched the barrier on the inside, Kostovsky almost touching the kerb. Epic stuff, great drive by Kevin. Yuri Belevsky ran wide in his run, OC Baby just snuck up the inside. He had this huge moment, big spin at very high speed over that tricky double crest jump. And that left uh, Belevsky out front to take the chequered flag. Final race, pretty even start, but it was uh, a great run by our new driver, Cal Award. I say new driver, he's done some uh, various Fiesta RST racing uh, before the, in the, the sporting Fiesta Sporting Challenge back in the day. And as you can see, he's not scared. Junior WRC driver as well in the past couple of rounds of that. Bit of rallying, some GT4 racing most recently. I just walked past him having his lunch. I said, well done, mate. And he said, he smiled and he said, it's fun. Yep, 600 horsepower and four-wheel drive is definitely fun. He's having, a, he's having a great time. But it was a good drive. And it, when you look at how, with, and I mean this with the greatest respect, how untidy it was, Hal, if he tidies it up, I think he'll be right up there. Yeah, absolutely. As we said in, the, uh, in commentary a few minutes ago, the... Ability to slow down a fast driver is, is always there, or to tidy up a fast driver, but to um, to sort a slow driver and make them go quickly is, is difficult, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah, he's got all the ingredients, and, um, yeah, first weekend, this track's so technical, lots of elements, it must be hard to get your head around it immediately. All the ingredients just need to make that cake. We'll get there, I'm sure. Uh, me and Hal are just printing stuff. We've managed to uh, inhale some lunch uh, in, our, in our hugely uh, long break there, and now we're just getting the paperwork together ready for, uh, for Q3. Peter Hedstrom leading the championship standings after round one. Of course, he won yesterday ahead of Johan Christofsson. 28 for him, 27 for uh, Johan, 23 Ericsson, 22 Bolevski, 18 for Backward. That's your top five there. Kevin Ericsson won that last session. Crosscard Junior down on the line. Right, let's give you a rundown of who's who. Lowry Hallinan on the inside, then Victor Christensen, Michael Uito, the reigning champion, Pauli Terpinen, Yoni Terpinen, and Oliver Solly on the outside. A couple of six car races, a couple of five car races. That's to avoid us having any terribly dull two car races. Have you printed the supercar lights, Andrew? No, I haven't, Hal. I've got as far as open two-wheel drive, yeah, sorry. Is all this to go? No. Okay. Hal's keeping some paperwork. Good for you, mate. <laughs> I've got a huge stack of, uh, of uh, stuff that's only suitable for writing notes on there. Do you know what I do? I, at the end of the day, I'm going to put all this in my bag and take it home, and then oh, I yeah. write notes on the back of it when I'm on the phone and stuff in my office. And then sometimes, when I'm really bored, I turn it over and go, oh, this was uh, Julius 2017. Yeah, Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I do that. I, I cut up old grids and stuff, and put them. they end up in the kitchen, stapled together to write shopping lists and stuff on. That's true. True story. We're both telling the truth. I normally chuck the final results in at the end of the day so I can do my stats when I get home, you know, sort the spreadsheets and stuff out. But to be honest, Chronomoto's website is so brilliant. If you've not been on it, chronomoto.hu, and you'll find the results on there, and I promise you, of every major rallycross championship, because they are the timing people behind all of them, because they're the best. So go take a look. Peter, Arnie, Attila, and the crew. Great guys and girls. They built start lights uh, at a recent event when they hadn't turned up, so they just made them. Epic. Seriously, they'll fix anything, won't they? You know what I mean? If, you, if you're in the paddock, you think, I desperately need to get something. I mean, there's plenty of rallycross teams that can fix some stuff, but if you really needed something electronic or, you know, some trickery built, you're definitely heading down to uh, there. Oh, look, this camera, sorry, this camera guy's going to need to move over fairly swiftly. We're getting the junior cross car off the line, though. Harlan and inside, currently in the TQ position, having had a P1 and a P2. Michael Luito, though, beats Hallinan to the first corner. What oh, a lovely cutback on the outside as well. That was, uh, I think it's Oliver Solly who made it up across about three positions coming from the outside to the inside. In, I think, the 195 down P3. You'll have to forgive us. We've only seen, uh, we only see Junior Cross Car for Q3. And that's because otherwise, literally, we would never get out of here all day. And I'm sure you lot would love that, but it's tricky. 
Yeah, he's Solly behind Hallen. And Oliver Solly's the driver who last year, if you remember, he, uh, he was in the commentary box, I think, with me, Andreas Backer and Matthias Ekstrom. And for some reason, Ekstrom said he could try his supercar. It turns out he's too short. So he's, for uh, some reason, yeah, Matthias. Yeah. Oh, God, he's brilliant, wasn't he? Yeah. Didn't he set him a challenge or something? Yeah, like, Matthias all over, isn't if you set He's him. a man of his word. I'm sure they'll, uh, oh, he they'll will. do it at yeah, some point. He'll have him in the car at some point. Yeah, it was great. And he was like, it, I can't remember what the reason was, but he's like, if you do this, I will do that. And, and he did it. So, unfortunately, he's about three feet too small at the moment to, uh, yeah. which isn't a great indication as to how young these guys are. <laughs> I know, yeah, they're tiny. So, uh, funny enough, I was looking in Hallinan's car, Hal, when we arrived on, uh, what day was it, Friday? Yeah. Friday night, I was looking at Hallinan's car to try, because obviously the, the chassis are, are the same, aren't they, basically, as the grown-up chassis, but it's where the pedal box is bolted into it, and you look and you see, the pedals are a long way back from the kids. Yeah, if I got one of these, I'd need the pedal box absolutely bolted as far forward on the floor as it can go, and, and they've got loads of leg room. I have to say, though, when you're offered a drive in anything, and as someone who's six foot four and um, not slim, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing what you can squeeze yourself into. Oh, mate, yeah, yeah. You can drive back up. Okay. Yeah. It's a seat, all right? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it'd be fine, mate. Yeah, I weigh eight stone and I'm four foot three. Oh, yeah, I'll have a crack at it. You do that, don't you? Get your knees up around the wheel, squeeze in, breathe in. And now I'm doing the seat position in my own car, and it's like you're moving it by millimetres, and it's not quite right. You're getting anything, just... It's hilarious, really, isn't it, mate? As long as there's a rat to strap, to strap, to strap you down, it's all good. You're good. Drone followed Helen and there through the Joker, so Helen is the leading driver to have Joker, but his gap back is 3.1. So that's borderline for Uito. Coming under some pressure at the end of the straight there. Didn't see what happened, unfortunately. It's Christensen yeah. again all over there, but Hallen must have an issue here. Did he joke at the cover? We, we were on the drones, we didn't see if he just joked at the cover off, did we? What's the gap now? Uh, we still, still haven't got an update, not so many loops. Or well, maybe just had a poor oh, drive so. out of that corner, but really under massive pressure. Yeah, it's not enough for him to get anywhere near Uito. You just Might get out. Solly. Solly's in the joke lap now, I think. Checked out again as he did yesterday, just massive ultimate pace. So Yuito's best laps are 45 5, and the next driver, okay, Hallinan, as they crossed the line, did a 45 8, so clearly didn't have an issue on the last lap. But until that point, Yuito had been more than a second quicker than anybody. Hallinan there on the inside. It's so strange to see a six wide grid lineup. Uito doing a bit of a Kevin Erickson, as you said. Look at the understeer there, just picks up on the kerb and uh, full lock, wound it immediately back off again. Of course, you don't want to apply full lock. Oh, great shot there through the window. You can see just how close they sit to the wheel. This was a great run from uh, Christensen on the back of Hallen. And of course, you don't want to apply full lock if you can get away with it because you're just scrubbing off speed. Those curves look massive when you're in a junior cross car, don't they? They look massive when you're in anything, to be honest. It's just a supercar's well more capable of driving over them, isn't it? We saw some on the roundabout down the road yesterday, didn't we? You were very yes. excited that they looked like well, they were from a rallycross track. They were exactly like the ones from the rallycross track. Don't know what's going on with the lights in here. It's like a disco at the minute. They're going on and off, changing colour. You can't see it, I'm sure. We, you know, we're raving. Eat, sleep, race, slash rave, repeat. Race two, Junior Cross Car, Yulalami, Schnatkinen and Darbak, Soderholm and Jensen. Kinnan with a mega reaction time. Nico Kinnan in the 33, the bright yellow and red. Does have to give best and ends up getting down. Look at that, see, great reaction, but it doesn't work out. Ends up hung out to dry on the outside. P4 would have been the best. They can hope more, and now it ends up being P5. So just not what you need. You've got to... Got to get that car positioned as well, but when the line starts, how it's so tricky, isn't it? When everybody does start in a line rather than a grid. I love the line starts, I really do. Yeah, but I do like the grid start for the for the final. Yeah, as because well. you've earned it by then. But yeah, in the, in these, I love the not the ran yeah the randomness of it, I guess. Yeah, I mean you can get away from almost anywhere on the grid here as the cars are moving around under the bridge side by side. That is uh, Solaholm who's taken the position. We're seeing a lot more side-by-side -side action down the hill now, aren't we? And there's a now there's no oil or anything down in that final corner. The the, the, uh, the exit of that final corner is much more consistent. 
Yulalami continues to lead. It's just gapped everybody a little bit, bit of action going on behind. Try and figure out what the gap is on this next one. So Uito has the benchmark time in the bottom left of 250.73. So Ito, our reigning champion, and also uh, P2 yesterday, Tulalami nicked it in the final. Yulalami's been quick for the last couple of years in this class. Another Finn. With, uh, I just can never get over how much experience all of these guys have got at their tender age. Kevin Darbach is uh, running sick for the moment. He uh, raced here last time we were here, I remember, in, in junior cross car. Makes you feel really old when they haven't raced in junior cross car for a couple of years and they're still in junior cross car. Not like uh, they've been in a, a car which is, um, you know, a senior car where they'd be ageless. No. Still there. Still way younger than us. Thank you, Hal. So there you have supercar light grids. Results after Q2 and the same for Supercar. Thank you, mate. There we go. Between us, we're managing to get the printing done. Maybe we should ask for a volunteer runner, Hal. I actually suspect there'd be tons of people that would do it. What do you reckon? Do you want to come and print grids for me and Hal Ridge? I was getting about Peter's uh, email address there for applications. <laughs> Maybe that's not on. <laughs> Well, you could call Andrew on 07 or 0044. Yeah, yeah, cheers. <laughs> Yulal Army takes it 250.959. Two tenths off. And that is close to Uito's time. That amazing start by Kinnan, but just didn't work out turn one. Just got ended up outside, look, see what, you see what I mean? And then here, two cars, well, one car up the inside just didn't work out. It was a brilliant reaction time. But a rally cross start is unlike any other. Pole is not really where you want to be here, is it? Certainly in the uh, five wide grid, unless you make a mega start. Well, er Kevin Erickson's proof, doesn't he? It doesn't really, wherever you are on the grid, if you just go in deep and chuck it in, you're right. But then we did see Patsy Penton and try that yesterday in cross car and it didn't work out. It's got to be well calculated. Pentonance not so much yesterday, but we still appreciate the send, Passy. Getting it done. Hampus Hagstrom, Christian Scheel, Carl Svedland, Gustav Atterblad, and Alex Antila. Spoke to Christian Scheel earlier on today. Met him for the first time. Obviously, we see them racing a lot. And he came up to you and said, Hey, I'm Christian. We were messaging last night on Insta. I was like, Ah, yeah, well done, dude. We're loving your name on the side window. Doesn't get the best start. That goes to Gustav Atterblad in the white car moving across straight into the whole shot. But Christian Shield trying to hold on to P2. Christian saying he's either going to do the Danish junior cross car or the um, or Rally X. And I was like, Can't do Rally X, do Rally X. But again, it obviously, you, you've got to take it step by step. And he may want to. May want to learn these tracks first of all. I was talking to our new friends as well at the Estonian team, Hal, that bought three cross cars with them. They are so excited to be in this series. Um, and again, he said, we're just, I'm learning all the tracks. The, the lad who owns the team had raced here back in 2008, but none of his drivers have, and they're loving it. There's some good tracks in Estonia as well. Maybe that should be uh, a visit at, at some point. Andreas Eriksson was talking about the uh, regulations around uh, NES. He was calling it NEZ. The European, European zone, zone yeah, yeah. That, that this series is in, and that's all about the amount of countries you can do outside of your zone. National championships are allowed to go outside of their own country a certain amount of times. Oh, as uh, Shields looking to the inside, he's going to get it done as well. Oh, very respectful there on the brakes. Chooses not to just sink it up the inside of Atterblad and now Jokers. The, the tricky thing for Shield there, Hal, is that if he hadn't had a crack at the move, he'd probably have had a better entry into the Joker, wouldn't he? Racing driver things though, isn't it? You've just got seen an opportunity, go. you want to go for it. Yeah, got to have a go. And he's still the leading driver, he's joking, but as you can see, under enormous pressure from Hagstrom. Hagstrom looking, Shield moves across to the inside line to defend it. Hagstrom trying to come around the outside in the background, look for them. And Shield holds on, oh, it goes deep on the brakes though, up the inside goes Hagstrom. One little mistake on the dirt, Shield now goes out wide, will straighten it out. Gonna try and do the move he did a moment ago, or attempted a moment ago, on the leader, Atterblad. And I don't think he's going to be quite close enough this time, so 
Unlucky with Shield. Just a combo of, you know, the attempted pass, then the late joker, and then, and then just, what, a metre late on the brakes, maybe? It was perfectly executed by Hagstrom, wasn't it? To go outside and then force the driver on the inside to brake too late. Oh, Hagstrom's going to have another look on the inside of Svedland. That is, yep. Hagstrom's on it. Look at this. But so, if we keep riding on board, this is exactly what he did last time, force the driver in front to break too late and then cut back up the inside. Yeah, and to go defensive, look, look, try for it again. But Svedland doesn't make the same state. Hagstrom is quicker here and is alongside again with two wheels off. That's allowed him rally cross. Really needs Svedland out the way, trying to close down that gap now, having a look up the inside again. This time makes it stick. So Hagstrom is on an absolute mission. I see where uh, currently in P11 with a P10 and a P13, but this is some great racing. Done the best lap as well, 46 2. Gets P2 though. Hagstrom was flying there, Hal. It was, it, it's, it's, not even, it's not even the laptop, obviously they're important, but I love the the, uh, the thinking racecraft. No, but and what is impressive that he's done the best lap and overtaken people. Yeah, good it, shout, it, it, yeah. My point so being... Gone offline, etc. So lost a little bit yeah. and still been quick. Really good. And classic, the, the juniors have caught the water track as well, so the track is improving a little bit. And that's the, uh, the downside they have in going first. That was Shield's attempted pass. Shield then went Joker, came out just in front of Hagstrom. Watch Hagstrom here, look. Out from literally almost a slipstream. Looks right. Shield's seen him in the mirrors. Goes left. Figo goes under the bridge because he's a legend. And literally, it'll be a few, it'll be a metre or two too late on the brakes. Then you get on the dust and that just magnifies it. Hagstrom again, look. Down the straight everywhere, trying to find ways through. I thought the tracks I might have been picked up then. Well, yes, it's my impression to hell. They're very good. They're not they're terrible. I'll do a decent turbo wastegate, but not right now. Just had lunch. Let's just chill. <laughs> I'm feeling the post lunch chill, are you? Do you, think, do you think we had too much lunch? No. No? Okay, interesting. But well, we're not going to eat again until about 9 o'clock tonight. Well, there is that, yeah. We'll have, don't, we'll have an eight-second break between Q3 and the semi-finals, which will be highly useful. Um, but, yeah, we are enjoying it. We hope you guys are enjoying it as well. So, yeah, I know we keep telling you to get in touch on social media. I'm afraid we genuinely don't have any time to look at that during the day, but we'll, uh, we'll get back. Uh, Hal's going to have a quick look and see if anyone's told us uh, what their favourite uh, race is from the last few seasons. As you'll see in Ericsson, Oscarson, Johansson, Nielsen and Larson racing in the final junior cross car run for Q3. And indeed their last qualifying run. Hallinan was P1 with 95 and a 1 and a 2. But Uito is going to eclipse that. He's got a 1, a 3 and a 1 if he wins this session. I can't see any of these drivers beating Uito because it's fast as first, remember. So it looks like Uito is going to take the TQ. I think he did yesterday. Let me see. No, he didn't. The Lama took the TQ yesterday. No, he didn't. The Lama took the win. Sorry, yes. And he did take the TQ. So it could be two TQs in a row for the reigning cross car junior champion, but today he'll want to hold on to the win from Yulalami. Yulalami's going to be right there. Yulalami was fifth in qualifying, but has just done a P2, so that should move Yulalami uh, up a little way. Three semi finals, remember. 18 cars to the semis, top two from each for junior cross car and cross car go through to the sixth car final. No semis for open two-wheel drive. And then uh, we have supercar lights, semis, and supercar pro and am will do their semis together. And then they separate for the pro and the am final. And then I think the am driver can still go in the pro final, which is why it's all in a strange order. And me and Hal get very confused, and Oliver Erickson told me they might change the rules for the next one. <laughs> well, you can only go in the pro final if you qualify, of course. Yes. Yeah. So that's what we saw yesterday, wasn't it? Because Tam had qualified for the pro final, then retired from the AM final, and... Uh... And you qualify for the pro final by being in the top three in either of the semis. So that's yeah. kind of what I would call traditional qualifying. If you're in the top three in either of those supercar semis, you are in the pro final. But at the moment, they're not also race. in reserve, are they? So, no. so if we have three AM drivers qualify for the final, then they don't start, then... Uh, It'll be a three sharp final, and we'll change the rules again. Immediately. But that's a, that's a much better grasp on the rules than we had uh, yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, quick chat with the Ericsons last night. All side by side, get stuck in Ericsson. Having a go up the inside of Larson. 
different gearing. Look, you can see the RPM, the cut kicks in, 9,300 RPM for the juniors. 15,000 RPM if you want it for the seniors, and no hold back on the set for the juniors either. Eric's never look at Oscarson now. Right, Hal, I reckon Eric's gonna go at the end of the straight again. Hal's run out the country box because the grids are blowing away. Despite the fact we've got five out of the six sides on. Oscarson goes defensive. Eriksson comes up the, from the outside to the inside. They're side by side. All contact again. But Eriksson, with a, a pretty aggressive move, has got past. Wowzers. Nielsen takes it, but a great battle going on behind with Eriksson making a couple of passes in that race. Uh, what was that for Nielsen? Uh, 2.53. So not far. I mean, look at that. Two, actually, 2.53. But Jonas Helgen Nielsen, Hegel and Nielsen, is, is going to be where? 253.5, going to stick P4, Hal. Yeah, P4, and lost a bit as well there in the fight. So it probably could have been a bit quicker too in the uh, yeah. overall times. That's always the battle in a, in a rallycross qualifying race, isn't it? To, uh, you want to oh, make the That was up. A, so late on the brakes from yeah. uh, Pontus Oskarsson. So, message from uh, Jamie on Instagram. Best Relax race was the Kubala final that Brinterson took on the final corner from Johan and Niklas. I'd forgotten that. That was mega, wasn't that it? That was controversial, wasn't it? Yeah. Bonus points for Ollie Larty in the grey crow with the front wheel off the deck. For so long, it stopped spinning. There you go. Cheers, Jamie. Thanks for sending that in. And if we've got any more that I can get to, now we're going to go racing straight away, so we don't have any more time. I'll just have to uh, reply later. Okay, cross car. Merstad, Hukar, Jensen, Enholm, Baldins, and Alexander Hume on the outside. Enholm got a mega start from slot number four, wheelie for Hukar from P2. Thomas Eek Merstad's lost out here, Enholm slots in, Hukar gets the whole shot, Enholm going to get P2, Eek Merstad's gone to the inside line, but Enholm's going to try and shut the door at Merstad's there, he can't. Contact behind between Baldins and Hume, out front Hukar's got away, Hume goes Joker straight in, I think, uh, is it Eek Merstad or is it, no, I think it's Enholm that's gone. Yeah, Eek Merstad's got yeah. his second to Hukar on track, it's so frenetic, first couple of corners in with six wide. Yeah, six cross cars that we only saw yesterday, bearing in mind they all change uh, liveries and stuff. Um, yeah, we're doing our best, if we get it wrong, it's up. Um, we got that one right, so it's fine. Who can't lead it from uh, Igmer's down? Baldins is back in there, come on, Ronald. He was on the uh, reserve list, and I say, I think we said yesterday, if you're watching, they've gone, you know what, we'll squeeze a couple more in. So we have 32 cars in this class. I think it's 22 in junior cross car. Andreas Eriksson probably thinking, oh, I reckon probably do six cars wide. You can always imagine his brain ticking over, can't you? Going, yes, we can take the extra entries, let's go. I'm, I'm up for it, I'm for it. I think six car wide in with... Uh, I'd like to see a six car wide supercar, and I'd also like to select the drivers that are going to start in it, because then we could create some real fun. What, you want all the carnage ones, or...? <laughs> yeah. But I, th I think that's the point, isn't it? With cross car and cross car junior, yeah, there are six cars, but they take up so much less space on track, and I do love that shot of them coming through there. 15,000 RPM. Um, there's a bit more room, isn't there, for six of these in turn one? Yeah. Only a little bit. Hukar is gapping Enholm. The first lap joker hasn't really worked out for Sebastian. Now 5.1 off the lead, so isn't going to trouble the front of the order. Merstad is almost a second behind Hukar. I think Merstad's going to have enough gap here. Merstad must be the joker, yes, and pops out well ahead of Enholm. So this hasn't worked out for Enholm, the earlier joker. Baldins, I think, is going to get consumed by the pack behind. Oh, it's going to be tight. It depends if he can keep the hammer down and increase that gap a little bit over Mercer. But that's uh, not the way, way to do it. it. He spun around this dead now. Just to say he needed to keep the hammer down. He kept it down a little bit too much. And now he's in the way of Merstad. To Baldins, almost half span. He managed not. He managed to hold on to it, but the momentum lost was enormous. And, and that's going to affect Merstad as well. I feel a bit responsible for that. Sorry, Ronalds. Oh, there you go, mate. But uh, Hukar has just checked out, hasn't he? Now, uh... Baldins goes Joker. 
Here comes Rick Guhuka, currently in the TQ spot with two P2s. Going to stop the clock with a 235.0, which is quicker than he's gone all day and would have been quick enough to win any of the previous sessions. So Hammerquist got Q1, Nick Merstad got Q2. And Hukar has just put the benchmark down for Q3, but you can see the gravel changing colour, getting lighter, the grip conditions are changing. Doesn't mean it's getting faster because of the way the dirt gets out sometimes on the rest of the track. Look at this, watch the wheelie from Hukar, get some. Front nose comes, front of the car comes back down. Look at that from the other side, it's brilliant. The reverse shot's epic. Imagine sitting in a car that wheelies off the line and then just pitches it in, look. And Eek Merstad on the inside. Look at Enholm, way ahead, way ahead, way ahead. No, you're not. Here he is. Big squeeze from Bowdens on uh, Hume. And then Hume goes Joker and Bowdens stay down standard lap. Enholm, that was a late decision, wasn't it, to go Joker, but it kind of worked ish. Just lost out so much on being on the outside of the first Ooh, with corner. The background, how did you see Hume went round as well? I didn't know. So Hume went. There was a there was a bundle of cars on the outside of that corner. Oh, I do love a slow mo cross car. Who doesn't love a slow mo cross car, eh? You don't have a slow mo cross car? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I thought you did. Ericsson was saying this last night. How much he loves cross cars, wasn't he, Andreas? Yeah. Big entries and uh, just loving it. Great learning ground. Yeah. You, and we're seeing the fruits of that from Junior Cross Guy and Lucas Anderson and the amazing performance he's had this weekend so far in uh, Supercar Lights. We are. OK, Eric Anderson, Tamo Tudo from Pace Motorsport, that team I mentioned earlier. Noah Jorgensen, Ronald Siena from Pace Motorsport, Bassi Benton and Jimmy Osterberg, who's running with Pace Motorsport. So there's a lot of liveries in here that are saying we will get this wrong, deal with it. Away from the line on the inside line goes Eric Anderson. He gets the best start, which is handy for us. Because he's easy to ID with his yellow wing. Going to get the whole shot. Passy Penton and slotting him behind. One of those three pace motorsport cars slots up to the inside line. But it's Penton, I think, who holds on to second place. And yes, they've been rolled over. Or side by side as they come through turn two and down towards the finish line or the start finish line. But the next lap knows one of the pace cars has got up to P2 now. It's Osterberg, isn't it? Osterberg got up the inside of Penton into two. Penton tried hanging it around the outside down the hill through three. Didn't quite manage to pull it off. I have to say, you're pretty brave to hang it out around the outside of Turn 1, like uh, Fenton and Wild, based on the massive crash he had there yesterday. Oh, where Anderson runs just a little bit wide, and Osterberg now all over the back of him. They're going to aim to, they'll obviously try and beat Hukar's time, but 2.35-0 from Hukar, as I say, is currently in the Tiki spot, is an impressive time. Flames from the back of Osterberg for the second he lifted off, right the way into that corner, yes. Lucas time, the best time of the day so far, I think, 35-0. Yeah, easily the best time of the day so far. So the track improving, but also a very good run from Riku. Riku the kid, as it says on the back of his race suit. Osterberg has got a hell of a run here on Eric Anderson. Anderson late on the brakes down into that long right-hander, tight on the entry, and then opens up and tightens again up the hill. I'd love to uh, write some pace notes for that because it'd be a, a mouthful. <laughs> it would, wouldn't it? What do you reckon it'd be? Um, I don't know. It depends what pace note system you use. Uh, I like the old McCray style of six fastest. Do you? Yeah, That's even though it's, it's nowhere near accurate enough anymore. Like You've got to go with the numbered system, really, for the angles. I like Yuha Kankanen. Yeah? Vague, descriptive. I like the... Uh, Flat, it's a very, flat very right. fast right and <laughs> easy left. <laughs> so, yeah. So I started in rallying with descriptive notes and very quickly realised that they weren't going to work because it's just I wasn't consistent enough. So I switched to the gear system. But to be honest with you, again, if I went back and did a rally now, I'd probably go with the, with the numbers for the in terms of steering angle. I just think all that you see all the top drivers doing. There's a reason for that. It's more consistent. Get your recce car. You know, put 18 bits of tape around the wheel. Head out for a couple of days. Which like Burns used to have like 35. He did. Well, Loeb, Loeb had plus, plus, and minus, minus as well. So instead of just plus and minus, he had, he had plus, plus, and minus, minus for those bits in between. Anderson gets out in front. Coming up to the line, flag forms. And it is Anderson from Osterberg, Penton, and pretty much how they were on the exit of turn two, really, isn't it, at the start of the race? But incredibly close together, but not as fast. As Riku Hukar was a 2.35.0, this is a 2.38.5, Hal. There's 3.5 seconds in that, so Hukar's run was epic. Osterberg had a hell of a good start there, didn't he? And uh, Eric Anderson had also had a good start and just managed to cover Osterberg. But I wonder if Osterberg could have gone a bit quicker. We'll obviously never know. 
Eric Anderson has got more pace than I expected, having talked to Lars earlier on today about uh, the struggles they were having with speed. You know, very honest, he just yeah, said the speed we just isn't speed. there. It's not one thing, we're just not quick enough. But uh, obviously working hard on that. His sister, uh, Eric's sister, always in the team, spotting and helping. Good family effort and uh, clearly they're making progress. Eric Anderson, 238.5, P3. a little wheelie off the line. Lorenzen almost equal on the way to the first corner. Chucks it in. Look. Someone chucked it in the background so hard they clattered the barrier on the inside, but it is Hammerquist with the whole shot, and then a late, late pass that runs a little bit too deep. I think it's Rasmus Brunkvist. So we'll get our heads around the liveries as uh, the season carries on. camera under the bridge gives you a brilliant idea doesn't it of both the speed and the noise and the fact it's under the bridge too it's very very cool indeed you can tell it's quicker now the track than it was earlier on because the cross cars are, are lifting more off the ground than they were this morning they weren't lifting that much because you just can't carry that momentum up the hill and over the crests and then they're really taking off look at that they really do need to be steered from the rear don't they these yeah Vigo puts so much faith in the uh, drivers of these cross cars that they're not just going to drop it and uh, take out the drone. But his reactions are incredible as well. So uh, some so of the drone footage here isn't just mind blowing. Hal Herskinen's parked it at the side of the road. So it was Jake Herskinen who, of course, had the fire in the previous heat. Do you remember under yes. the seat? Yeah, and Herskinen's parked at the end of the straight under the tunnel. I just saw from the rear shot that there was a car parked on the outside, and we, we had a very quick look at it as they came into the hairpin. So it's a shame for Herskinen. I wonder if they maybe sent it out knowing it wouldn't last, but, you know, get the start, a DNF rather than a DNS, which will give them better points. But I think with the depth of entry, Herskinen won't make the... Uh, it was he was 20th. Yeah, no, not going to make it then. So that's game over. Ah, oh, bummer. There it is. The Shame. A great effort to have a big fight like that and get back out. So uh, obviously the team worked hard in not a lot of time between the two sessions. <laughs> is there not? I don't know if we've mentioned it. <laughs> well, there isn't, is there? You know, it's, it's there's no time. Packed, it's, but that's where rally cross has always been. You know? Yeah, but the, the difference how for them is they're just doing one class. We're doing five. So, uh, yeah. Should you go complain to Andreas? Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> Very best of luck, mate. I know what the answer's going to be. Oh. oh! Now, that's how you ride a curve. So, I don't know if that was really intentional from... Uh, have a quest. Yeah, just hooked it up and uh, dragged you around. It's, per it's ditch hooking, isn't it? You know, in a, in a rally, that can work really well for you, but if you pop out of it, then... Uh, oh, the smoke from the back of Kong's car. Yeah, well, we saw... Do you remember we saw Johan earlier avoided it? He was at the point of riding up it and turned out of it. So, that you know, there is clearly a penalty for it. We Actually, we never finished talking about the roundabout how on the way to the track. So, we're looking at the curbs here, and they are remarkably similar to the curbs on one of the roundabouts coming through, is it Hoblo? I yeah. think, into the in towards the track. And I said, oh, do you reckon they use the same contractor to do the curbs, you know, at the roundabout? Which which came first? Yeah, did the people building the roundabout go, I've been up the track, I love the curbs, can you stick them on a roundabout? Or was it, you know, somebody was driving to the track when these are good curbs and asked them to come and build the track? What do you think? Existential question, isn't it? I know. What there. came first? The roundabout or the track? I suspect the track. The track. Yeah, but maybe the curbs were modified later. By the way, the curbs are good. I love rallycross curbs in general. Mm. The sort of thing. My my best uh, explanation of how brutal a rallycross curb is, is I drew uh, I drove Andy Scott's Peugeot 208 supercar at, at Drew, and it was one of the first supercars I drove. I don't know. I'd driven a few by then, but it, it, it was an early car. I, I didn't have loads of confidence. 
went round in the rental car and said to Andy, oh, you know, you, oh, presumably you avoid this curb. He goes, no, no, you just drive over it. I thought, no way. I'm not going to go anywhere near that curb. On the outlap, straight at the top, didn't even notice it's there. Because the suspension travel is so amazing. Kevin Hansen always made me laugh. You remember with the um, the new FIA curb from a few years ago at Riga, and everyone's like, wow, look at that massive curb. And everyone's like, no one's going to drive over that. I think Kevin drove over on his first lap, didn't he? And just literally put a black mark across the very top section of the curb. Like, yeah, oh. it's not done what we thought it would do. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, oh. The thing is, the speed of the development of the dampers is so quick, How you can probably design a curb tomorrow, and three days later, someone will design a damper that can drive over the top of it. Uh, Kala Gotherson, Lucas Orav, Martin Ugar, Kenneth Paul and Dennis Munch. Ugar and Gotherson are both super quick and the, uh, nobody in here is a slouch but we're still, what we're saying is the depth in this class is so much that, that the top time can fall a lot further into the session than you think. Ugar's not got a good start though and neither's Gotherson. Gotherson gets a little tag there. Now Ugar gets away after the two cars inside him get crossed up. Hanging on to it. Takes his normal line, doesn't defend into turn one. That'll give him a good exit. Ken nice. It was who was getting turned around there into the first corner. You guys made the best of that, having, as you said, not made the best launch. Horav went Joker on the first lap. Straight away, lose out and just uh, stick it into the Joker immediately. Here it is under the bridge. Look, ba -ba 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 -ba, all the way down there. An interesting number for uh, Dennis Munch, isn't it? Oh, is that's a great move going up the hill. Gofferson on a charge, having uh, Joker Dearly, I think Joker indicator not showing, but I'm pretty sure. Did Gofferson joke on lap one? No, or, or, well, Orav did. I don't see if Gofferson did as well. I think it was only Orav, but there was. Um it's actually, look on the left side, see the little blue J? I think that's new from yesterday. We're talking about a time screen you can't see at home, which is really helpful to you, I know. Do you see next to Kenneth Paul now? There we go. Yeah. Unfortunately, so I've got the sun in my eyes. Yeah, it's, well, it's yes, the sun or the lights. I still haven't posted the picture of the lights. I'll post it now. How? Cover me. You got on an absolute charge up front, done the fastest lap of the race, a 42.062. Some two and a half seconds nearly ahead of uh, the local driver. Yet to joker the two leaders. You guys gonna wait until the final lap, as is Munch. But uh, Munch is gonna be munched up by Go Oh, and that's quite an impact there from uh, Olav, who's gone into the back of Gotherson, I think. Olav's spun and dropped down in the order. Paul has climbed up the place. And Nugar is uh, absolutely flying, nearly five seconds ahead up front now. 41 sevens, is that enough to trouble Hukar's time or not? We're gonna find out as he gets all crossed up, but that's the skill of moving a car around underneath you. It wasn't quite what he wanted on the brakes, but he's used the momentum, he's used the weight transfer, he's got the car turned in, now he comes through on the lock stops. Watch him send it the other way. Lights are up, pulls a gear mid-corner, over the line, gonna be close. Not close enough though, 236.5. We'll see him slot into P3 in the session so far behind Hukar and Hammerquist. It's a good run from Ugar, and that's what we were saying at the start of this one. Because the depth of talent in cross car is so deep, it can get uh, that top time can get taken. Look at the start, Ugar's nowhere, but then inside him, look, that little bit of contact was enough that the two cars inside him couldn't get there. You that was uh, Gotherson and Orav, and Orav, I think, then bails and goes Joker. Here it is from the reverse angle, look, in the 70. So, say so Orav goes Joker. Great stuff from Cross Car, as always, up over the jump, look down through that dirt section. I love this track. There you go. You guys look so comfortable in that cross car, just uh, setting it up here, there and everywhere, exactly where he yeah, wants it to be. A little and bit of cross country on the gravel trap. And as you said, you know, that moment in the last couple of corners, it was all about just... Look at this, look at the gear, look, pulls the gear here, click, bop, 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 mega. So good. So Martin Hugo with a 236.5 is P3 in the session. Hukar, who was the TQ man before this session, and he's definitely, I think, while well, looking at the list, who we've got in the next couple, 
Uh, anyone? Know? Yes, Elias Svensson, Hal. Elias Svensson, Rasmus Persson in the last ones. Um, look, there's plenty of drivers here who've got pace, but there are, say, there's a couple of drivers who had a shocker in the previous session. I don't think they'll nick the TQ from Hukar because of the fact they've had a bad session. So Hukar's looking like TQ's nailed on. Grana, Eliasson, the Amy Hoffman and Nilsson in this one. Oh, amazing start from Hoffman. Going to move across to the inside line, but can't quite get there because Grana is there on the inside. In that metallic orange colour buggy. Nilsson there around the outside. What a move that was. Hung it out, Kevin Erickson style, sideways on the loose. Now, he's another of the drivers that had a, a poor time in, in Q2 and is uh, capable of upsetting the front of the order here. Yeah. So now it's about keeping it clean, getting the laptops in, is it? We know maybe the track is coming, Hal. You know, that's the thing. Look how much drier he's getting now. Look at the front of the car moving around as Nielsen's on and off the brakes, the front picking and diving. It's mint, isn't it, just seeing the move around. And then so, so, some people are really using that curve and some people are still avoiding it. There's the moment at which um, we saw the oh, flames again from the back. Yeah, when we saw Baby have his spin earlier on today. Now off for Grana into the Joker lap. It's enough. Tidy. Covers off uh, Marju Niemi, who I've been impressed with this weekend. She's significantly uh, improving. 419.9 for uh, Nilsson up front. With plenty in hand now to take the Joker. About three seconds ish in a, in a cross car. Around this new Joker lap. I think this new joke is one of the best additions of a, of a rally cross track we've seen for some time. Uh, you know, a traditional rally cross, rally cross track that's Abs been changed. Absolutely, as, as we said. It's funny, isn't it? I came here thinking, ah, no, it's going to be too flat. I don't like it. it doesn't I look long enjoy enough. the braking into the Joker yeah. you know, the, the previous time. Yeah, true, true. But I think this is... I mean, this is much better. But it, not only is it better, it's safer, it's better, it's better racing. There's more opportunities to, to take it in a race. So it's just, I say, it's, but it's because of the way the start comes across the middle of the track into turn one. And now, how I'm going to have to rethink all my, my rallycross designs in my head, all the track designs. Well, because we all need a half lap. Well, when I, yeah, when I win the lottery, I'm going to have to. I'm now going to have to completely redesign whatever rally cross track I build. I don't know how I'm going to do it. It's going to be out the back of my house. I don't know where that house is going to be yet. I guess it was Euromillions last night. I don't think I won because I had an email, and I wouldn't be here. No, I would. I would have to come in, obviously, out of respect. <laughs> Nielsen in the left hander at the end. Uh, and he's going to say, oh, T35, five, only five tenths of a second off. So Nilsson going to slot into P2, and that's what we're saying. So track conditions are coming, some quick drivers stuck in the lower races. Nilsson very nearly nicked the session from Riku Hukar. Look at the variance in starts, and then you get to the first corner. You're like, can I turn in? Can I turn in? Yes, I can. Opposite lock, look, sliding it out and then up the inside, just fire it late on the brakes. So much fun. Excuse us, we're just having a little paperwork session up here in uh, the commentary box. Hope you enjoyed those replays. Brought to you courtesy of Rally X. Like and subscribe. If you want to come to Tierp, by the way, for the next one, and yes, you do want to come to Tierp, it's very near Stockholm, so it's no excuse not to live in Sweden. Aeroplanes go to Sweden. Um, it's about an hour, isn't it, from Stockholm, I think, Tierp? Yeah. It's a like burn that. yard, side by side, all these mega stuff. Um, so come, basically. Tickets on sale now, Ticketmaster. You can find them by the RallyX website. Lindquist, Person, Spenson, and Terraping. It's a really, really long hold again. Okay, Spenson has got to get it done and does get it done. 
in the 133. This how is a threat for the top time. Svensson gets the whole shot. Now to keep it tidy. Don't compromise your exit too much. They're not that near. Exactly what he needed, isn't it? Just yeah. to get a clean run through the first corner and for Asmus Persson as well. Get away without any time loss through unnecessary contact. And now it's all about just, you know, Persson may as well just follow now. OK, you always want to to change up your Joker strategy to try and win the race because, you know, if they happen to go quicker, then you'll be quickest. But if these two can just have a clean run and not get too caught up in fighting each other, then uh, they could end up in uh, the top of the order. Of course, this is the last qualifying race of the weekend for the cross car category. Three semi-finals to come this afternoon. Svensson last year could have been the champion. Had a couple of wins. Well, had three wins. Had a DNS in the last final year at Strangnass. Made it to the final with a semi-final win. But the, the, the really key thing, Hal, as we discussed yesterday, was he was DQ'd for a really tiny technical, but a rule, you know, rules a rule. He's DQ'd from that first round at Hollius and could have been the champion. So this guy you're focusing on right now in the 133, he's one of the very best cross car drivers in this series. Missed the apex by about a foot there, and that sounds like nothing, but he's looking for ultimate lap time on every lap to try and get ahead of, uh, to try and get ahead of Hukar, who currently leads the, the session. Now, Svensson, where was Svensson in qualifying? Because yesterday, 19th hour. So this is the same as yesterday. Remember, Svensson needed a good run in Q3 to make it through. 41-1 as well in the uh, previous lap before his jokers. He's on a charge. So like yesterday, Svensson was outside the top 18 and in danger of not making it. He ended up on the podium in P3. Svensson now is in 19th, he must have a good result here and he's on for a banger but he needs it to drag himself into the semis and then he's going to have to do the work again. So keep an eye on Elias Svensson, he's like the comeback kid this weekend. Late on the brakes, okay let's have a look at this, here we go, look, look at the yellow line on the top of the wheel, lots of little inputs, chucks it in on the gas. Fires it up through, down through this long right hand and now try to be smooth, runs a wheel up big, chuck on the brake, flick it in left, on the gas now to the line, can he get that top time? I think he's going to, oh, 5.7 off, so he's going to go P3 and that will be enough undoubtedly to get Elias Svensson the one place up he needs to go semis, it might get him far enough up how that he might be on the middle row but Elias Svensson with another brilliant drive to drag himself into the semis, can he get another amazing result and uh, get himself up potentially podium yesterday from a very similar situation. I think that's saved Rasmus Persson's day as well. I think that time of a 2.37.5, 2.37.5, that's going to put him sixth in the session. So from 21st, that's going to drag him up into the semis as well. So a great run in that last race of cross car for the pair of them. There's a lot of pressure when you do that. It's, you know what I mean? When you go out and you know you need a good run, it's very different to go out and go, right, I've got two good runs, just something average to do now, and I mean... When Depends you go out... Look at it, though. If you know you need to nail it, you, you can you be can on use it the and, pressure. And, you, and you can use that pressure. Yeah. Sometimes if you're in no man's land, it's easy to make a mistake because you, you want to push too hard, but you don't want to back off too much. That's true. Either way, Svensson and Person with great drives. Linda Quist, Terraping, and unfortunately Rasmus Rusa DNS in that one. Open two-wheel drive. The ultimate in uh, home engineering and of a high standard. Victor Johansson on the inside. The uh, winner of the last session, P10 in Q1, P1 in Q2. Could he win this one as well and get himself up to the TQ after 10th out of 10 in Q1? That'd be some result. Then it's Jorgen Sievers and Kenneth Kong, Simon Tiger and Simon Engsvig on the outside. All these cars are very capable of uh, an exceptional time. How many points of downforce do you think uh, Tiger's rear wing is? Johansson's got. Uh, I don't know, really. What are you saying? Three. I just want to see a full DTM front end on that car, basically, you know? Oof. Bit of smoke from the back. Good start on the outside for Engsvig and for Johansson on the inside. Johansson should... Oh, I thought it was going to be able to block it, but that's what you were saying earlier, Hal, about being on the pole. Doesn't always work out. Simon Tiger going to look to the inside. Johansson covers him off. Oh, he doesn't. He gives him a good old clatter in the rear. 
Johansson's going to go. That was a bump, 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 wasn't it? It was, uh, I'm here, I'm here, come on. And that's a little reminder, I am here. Uh, and Engsvig leading, but Johansson looking fearsomely quick in behind. Kenneth Kong has gone joker behind Simon Tiger. There's Tiger just waving at the crowd. Brilliant. And to give you an idea of how uh, the atmosphere in this paddock, these guys are all so competitive. There's a little nudge for Ensvik from his friend Victor Hansen behind. Come on, come on, come on. We need to uh, be getting away from Simon Tiger here. Simon Tiger's been down in the paddock with uh, Derek Toho's part of the Car team. He's been letting them springs. He's been giving them some anti robot stuff just to try and help the. Oh, yeah. Johansson goes Joker Howell. I think he's been held up too much by Engsvig on that lap. Wouldn't surprise me to see if he gets eaten up or not. There's Tiger, and Tiger does get him. To me, Johansson looked quicker than Engsvig. Because it Engsvig's car that was smoking on the line, do you think? Yeah. yeah I mean, close. maybe, maybe an issue, maybe not. Look at Tiger. So, as, as how I actually took a picture of that. So, I got down there and I was like, Simon Tiger in with Derek Tohill. How cool is that? You know, one of the front runners in the country going to Derek, who he will know is a very good driver. He's a double European champion in the super, you know, the touring car class, which is the now defunct FIA touring car class. And. Like, to go to someone who you know can pedal like that and go, let me help you out, is just super cool. Yeah, and uh, it'd be great if this class can continue to grow. Ensvig's joker this time around. That's to try and cover off uh, Victor Hansen, but I don't think it's going to be enough. It's not. So that was, uh, so we were right then that Ensvig uh, was holding up Johansson just a little bit, and we are talking a very little bit. Uh, where are they in qualifying? Tiger, in, oh, Tiger and Severson uh, are tied on points. Severson leading from Tiger. So this is for that top qualifier spot at the moment, as it stands. Johansson's on 84 behind them. So Severson versus Tiger for the top qualifier. That will be, uh, I was going to say pole in semi one, but it won't, because uh, they'll go straight to the finals, I believe. They won't do semis, will they? didn't yesterday, no. It was that, though, because of the car count. Either way, here we go, Tiger coming up. Not enough of a gap for Severson. Simon Tiger going to get through. Oh, yeah, Hansen gets in as well. So Simon Tiger will take Q3. Might be beaten uh, afterwards, but that doesn't matter because he's beaten Severson, who is equal on points with them. And crucially, Hansen is in between them as well. So that'll nick another couple of points off Severson, and that should see Simon Tiger as the top qualifier. He won Q1 with P4 in Q2 where Severson was P2 in both sessions. Engsvig, look, from the outside of the grid, Hal Ridge said earlier, pole isn't necessarily where you want to be in. Look at your hands, and he has to check up more because the angle is more for him, whereas for Severson, it's just a little nudge on the wheel to turn it in. Tiger gave uh, Johansson quite a few nudges there in uh, turn two. Johansson then, Joe could, having lost that bit of time, that bumper was white a few minutes ago. <laughs> Look at that front wheel and how far off the ground it is. 25 years of experience is what Derek Terrell said they were fighting against coming here this weekend with his adapted touring car and uh, they'll stick at it because he's a rally cross anorak like the rest of us. But uh, it takes a lot of experience to beat uh, the Tiger family, especially Frederick Tiger, a former super national and supercar driver. Simon's father, Simon, taking the first race of the session to 40.8. And that is the fastest time of the day so far in this category. So track conditions are definitely good, aren't they? We've got in this one, obviously you've got Toehill, he knows quick, but he's struggling to get the Fiesta dialed. Chucked some weight on it. Has he now chucked some bits on it from uh, Simon Tiger? Berkelson on the pole, Norman, Stewart, Person and Toehill. Let's go. Derek's got a good start on the outside. Keep that power in. Oh, I've got to try and get to the inside line. He does. So Derek Toehill going to get the whole shot. Behind him, a bit of carnage is going to help him out. But unfortunately for Derek, what's important now, Hal, is, is the rest of the laps, isn't it? Because they said they watched the onboard from two corners. And <laughs> last night at the house, they read and they were like, oh, wow, there's a lot going on in there. I think he's still got the same problem he had in Q2 earlier on, whereas in first gear, it's fine. In second gear, they've got a bit of a problem. They were just going to plug the laptop in and have a look. They haven't got anyone from the engine supplier here this weekend to help because they're all on holiday, and that's really not helping their cause. He's pulling a good margin here on uh, Michael Person. 
But yeah, something in the mapping, oh, and he's all out of shape at the bottom of the hill there. Something in the mapping means that when he's in second gear, it's nowhere near as good as it is when he's high up the RPM in, in first, but still continuing to lead out front. Bertelsen all over the back of Person. Two drivers we haven't seen for a little while in open two-wheel drive. And Marcus Norman has disappeared from the back of the shot. They were saying, weren't they, it's powered in the sideways. Well, go on, Hal. Marcus Norman has just come past the commentary position with uh, a terrible misfire. I don't really understand how a misfire works with a rotary engine, but it sounds awful. Anyway, Bertelsen covering off uh, Struer. Sorry, what were you saying, Andrew? I can't remember, to be honest, mate. Oh, Toe Hill, when we spoke to him, he was just saying, remember, we had that chance. I said, well, what is it? So it's just the power delivery. Added the weight, changed the set. They've got, you know, there's tons more they can do. There's only a limit. There's a limit you can do with the limited running you have at a race weekend. But look at that again, sideways. It's just coming in too harsh, isn't it? It's coming in, it's a bit too strong. This race win would make a big difference to his overall outcome, though. This could drag him into the final. Don't think we're going to see semi-finals. Person Jokers, Toe now needs a properly good lap to uh, try and stay ahead. Person drops behind Bertelsen. Bertelsen was some five seconds off the lead last time around. Person is now 3.8. Bertelsen's done the fastest lap of the race with a 43.4. So Toehill has to produce his lap of the weekend now. If he can win this race, that might just drag him in to the final. Yeah, he's, uh, the final is 76 points in terms of uh, qualifying points at this point. Derek's on 70. But bear in mind, you know, the, the gaps are between each one. Come on, Derek, let's go. So, tidily into the left, you'll get the car as straight as you can, open it up, it's got tons of horsepower from that two litre turbo. Now watch for the exit of the Joker lap, where is Derek Toehill? Here he is, is he gonna be close enough? No, not quite, gonna get P3 in this one. But it's gonna depend then how the laps compare, the time compares to the first session. And a 2.49 is some nine seconds off, so are they behind, they're behind all five, so it's P8. Good win there for Bertelsen. He was 17 when we came here last a couple of years ago, so still a, a young driver in a former European Championship car that they've done a lot of work on. Great start there for Derek. Watch it ahead of the first corner here if we remain with uh, this shot. See, it just dies a bit there, as if it's uh, related to where he is on the track and what gear he's in at any one moment. Person avoids clattering the back of the Fiesta, and Norman had a torrid race. Where was Norman overall? Uh, Norman was ninth, so he's not going to be in the final. No. Derek was eighth, and then this one was tenth. So oh, there's the Merc looking pretty. He's in the old Joker lap there, so something's gone terribly wrong. <laughs> it was to be saw, down there. Do you remember we saw someone going there, didn't we, in free practice on um, Saturday morning? We're like, what are they doing? We, didn't, we, we weren't sure quite whether they'd outbreak themselves or just forgotten. <laughs> it's easily done, isn't it? We've seen, we've seen drivers in various championships do three jokers and one standard lap. I've seen at least two different drivers do that. They're going to remain nameless, but hell knows who I mean. It's not as easy as you think. Here's a good one for you, and uh, it's courtesy of Ben Hardy in the RX150 Championship. At, at Pembry in the UK, they rotate the direction of the track on both days. Yeah. So last year, Ben made a brilliant start on day two. The first corner is the same, but then you either go left or right, and then he went right. No, he right went the wrong the way. Oh, oh no. legend, Ben. Unlucky, mate. He was great fun last weekend at Lyndon. We haven't let him forget. I bet that's how kind. <laughs> how, how lovely. <laughs> Goodness me, there's a hurricane coming in through the side again. Uh, I can get rid of this now. I can't peanuts are still here, though, so that's good news. Yeah, just having a little munch on those occasionally. Keep the energy levels up, how you know, can't let the viewers down. How many hours have we got left? <laughs> The thing is, we actually love it as well. Like, yeah, you I, love complaining. That's your problem. But, but you see, okay, if you're, you're not British, British <laughs> I was going to say yes. You see, and Hal knows, and I think you guys at home know that complaining is a great British hobby. But if you do it with enough sarcasm and a bit of a grin on your face and a, a self-depreciating, it's um, it's yeah, self-deprecating. Sorry. Look at the front of Anderson's car on the blue yeah. car nearest the wall on the far side. Yeah. Looks significantly better than, than anybody else of them. And that's because he's won both sessions so far and won yesterday's final as well. Didn't win yesterday's final from the front, had to work for it. Casper um, Janssen second on the grid, as you can see, has spent some time in traffic. Simon Olivson on the outside, talking to Sandra briefly before this session. She was saying that they've solved the problems they had yesterday, the electrical issues they had yesterday, and uh, now she's raised the back of the car a little bit to help it turn in better, and she said, now it's all on Simon. 
Go Simon. This is a great entry here for very capable drivers. Lucas Anderson, we wouldn't have been saying that 48 hours ago, would we? But say as winner of the first round and, and uh, top qualifier so far with two wins from two sessions. Holds on to P2. Olofsson comes around the outside, passes the barrier. And Kasper Janssen goes up the inside. Didn't know there was a gap there at all. Don't you even think Anderson had seen it coming? What a move there from Kasper Janssen. Really opportunistic. Anderson does the right thing. Joker's on that one, gets out of that traffic. Hookfist lost out quite a lot there in the first couple of corners. Some way off the back of uh, Janssen out of turn two. Let's see what Anderson can do now in clear air. Yeah, I say how definitely got the pace. You can't win two qualifying sessions in a row without the pace. And yesterday wasn't winning qualifying sessions in the same way as he is today. It was Olison who smashed it in qualifying, wasn't it? it was yeah. really, really quick for the first two. Looked like uh, the champion that he is, the reigning champion, of course, Simon Olison, on the back of a, a, such a strong performance last year. Yeah, he went two wins in a second, didn't he? Janssen's going to joke you. now. Sorry, Andrew, this is no, to go. cover off Lucas Anderson in the background. How close is Anderson? Watchman coming over the crest, not close enough is the answer. So Casper Janssen holds on to that. Anderson's lost a lot there. I wonder if there's, he's made a mistake somewhere or something's happened because uh, I thought he'd be closer to Janssen than he was. Casper Janssen is 10 points behind him, Hal, in terms of qualifying points. So I think, you know, as long as he stays, he now wants to be right as close as he can, doesn't he, to Janssen really in front to hope that uh, not too many cars slot in in between them in terms of the, the results and, and nick a few points off him and he could hold on to the top qualifier. Yeah, it's all about management of your position now and that's where the experience of someone like Joel Christofferson in, uh, in your spotting team comes into play because he'll know that you don't need to risk everything, you just need to manage your position and especially when you're with the quick guys who you're racing directly against, yeah, exactly. you can afford to shadow someone, can't you? Exactly, Olofsson's in P4, he's some 21 qualifying backs, uh, points back, Hookfist is in P3, some 16 qualifying points back. So the closer um, Anderson is to the back of these cars, it means that when they go into order and they get given their points for where they finish this session, there's less likely to be cars in between, so you're less likely to lose more points and therefore more likely to hold a position. Hookfist coming back at Olofsson a little bit, but it's not enough. A couple of tenths here and there. Olofsson dives off to the Joker on this final lap. Hookfist will go with. You're looking for Casper Janssen at the merge. Olofsson's going to get Janssen. Janssen might get P2 and does. So Anderson, after a brilliant start, two session wins, drops down to fourth. It's Olofsson who takes the checkered flag with a 236.3. And that is about three tenths quicker than Anderson went to win. Two tenths quicker than Anderson went to win the previous session. Look at the start. So Anderson inside, won both sessions so far. Gets the worst of the four starts, but not by much. Took. And he's coming back against Janssen here. Look, now he's ahead of Janssen. Into the first corner, Olofsson comes across. And watch Olofsson, how he actually hits the barrier on the inside. I'm pretty sure. There it is. Just a tight, it just, yeah. didn't he? But it's Janssen's move there that mugs Anderson. How did Janssen get up that gap? He, there wasn't any contact on the way and it was brilliant driving by Casper. Anderson, as you said, how went Joker immediately, which was the right thing to do. But from there, unfortunately, he wasn't able to use the clear air to close the gap down to the leaders. This is that final lap Joker from Olofsson. Sends the 52 into the long right-hander. Front of that car might be well pebble dashed but uh, not affecting anything in terms of the performance of it. Casper Janssen coming home, P2. Here's confirmation of the result. 2.36.3 is the fastest time of the day in supercar lights. Can Anderson hold on to the top qualifier spot from there or not? Shook this with the fastest lap, but there's only four tenths between them on lap time overall, which is uh, just an indication as to how close and stacked this lights field is. Yeah. Oskarsson, Steins, Holt, Expert and Tornholt. Peter Tornholt actually with a good start on the outside. On the inside, Oskarsson has been beaten by Steins, Holt, who in turn has been beaten by Expert. Expert turns in on Steins, Holt. Steins, Holt has been beaten up today. Manages to get back to P2. Oh, I think they've gone Joker from third, just looking at that. We'll see on our time. No, they haven't. I, was gonna, uh, I reckon Tornholt's gone then, has she? Tornholt's third at the moment, the white Sorry, car. yeah. That's Matt Oskerson. Oskerson has gone, yeah. Oskerson's gone Joker. He was quick earlier on, wasn't he, Matt Oskerson? Where was he in Q2? Fifth, fourth in Q1. I mean, a good day, Matt's been on the podium here in the past. 
Was it Julius who was on the podium? He was on the podium in the opening round. Mm, what, I'm going to say what year, mate? Julius. Last year. Well, we weren't here last year, were we? So it have been 21. Yeah, Julius, I think. The dust is definitely coming up uh, in the background. You can see it's the breaking zone. Awesome. Oh. I was right the first time. Oh, there you go, Harry. So you should trust your instincts, mate. You know quite a lot about this. I don't know if anyone's ever, ever told you that. Need a life. Why don't you go on Mastermind? <laughs> Especially so subject to supercar life. That, that, <laughs> mate, I love the idea. This is brilliant. So Mastermind, I don't know if it's... Is Mastermind outside the UK? It's like a, you sit in a chair and the music goes... Dun, 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 and the host goes, how rich and your specialist subject is supercar yeah, so you know life. it's a quiz, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's a quiz. It's and you quiz. Get, and you get, so there's the general knowledge. It's a specialist yeah. subject. So you can choose anything. So you have people choose stuff like Indiana Jones movies, don't you? And, yeah. and, and other, like, I don't know, uh, Blackburn Rovers Football Club. And, and literally... Then the experts on the show write a series of questions about that subject and you have to answer them. And sometimes people absolutely smash it, sometimes they're terribly think, oh gosh, you didn't know anything about Harry Potter movies, did you, or whatever it was. <laughs> but can you imagine an expert trying to write the questions for how rich? But that's the best thing, is you would know more than the I people know. asking the questions. I like the idea they'll be like, right, I need to look on these bloody supercar lights, what are we going to do? I think there's a book about supercar lights. Who's the author? How rich? Damn it! So they just know, <laughs> wouldn't they, straight away in the screw that you're going you're gonna to get all the answers right. Do, do, do. No, but then they Your score is. 22 how rich that's a world record then I'm starting to off finish <laughs> so what chassis was uh, uh, so uh, yeah what chassis did Oliver Exxon used to win the uh, holiest round one last year in 0-0-1 uh, zero, zero, yeah there you go there you go x -Biff could be on for a, a mega time here 41-3 last time around over the line ah oh, one tenth of a second and one said, tenth of a second I said mega again so I'm very disappointed in myself well don't worry about that it's fine mate it's a good word overused as you said I'll have to re I'll retire it and come up with something else to teach the likes of Backward. What do you reckon? I don't know if Andreas is ever going to speak to me again now he's realised I've got more Instagram followers than him. <laughs> he did not like that this morning, <laughs> did he? He did not. Yeah, there we go. Hal did a, Hal did a, um, a viral video, but completely by accident, posted it on his <laughs> way. Completely, literally, literally by posted it with zero cares, as he often does, on the way to the bar in hell. Uh, and they woke up in the morning to find it had X amount of views. And what's it on now? 40 million views. Mm. He's got an outrageous amount of Instagram followers who haven't realised that he's just a total rallycross nerd, basically, <laughs> which is great. And Backer came up to him this morning and goes, do you pay for your followers? How was like, no, they're organic. And he was livid, wasn't he? <laughs> he was livid, but in a fun way. Expert 236.4, just a tenth of a second behind Olufsen, but all of that has affected Anderson. Lucas Anderson is in P6. A couple of drivers there, Steinsholt. Uh, so, yeah, so Steinsholt and Expert have gone in between, and, and Hal, I think Anderson's going to lose the TQ here. That was a mega drive from Expert. That was uh, really very good. Where was he? Seventh and eighth in the thir first two. His experience coming from uh, both uh, karting and Super National Rallycross will be working well on this high grip circuit. So, Niels Christian Haug and Martin Enland, uh, Lars Eric Haug's not there again. Uh, okay, so we could have had two five car races. Instead, we've got two fours and a two. So, so that's my official complaint because the two car race is dull. So Lars Eric was working really hard to get the car out for this race, but we'll have known right. a little while ago that it wasn't going to make it. They've so they, had they always keep the grid problems, open. Yeah. Fuel problems, engine problems. So we changed the engine yesterday. He had an electrical engine in practice. He had a fuel problem. Then the engine went, and any either of those things could have affected the engine going, couldn't they? An electrical yeah, issue or a fuel right, issue. Yeah. Uh, the fuel issue could be caused by an electrical problem. Unlikely for it to be the other way around. Anyway, the engine went. Now they've got a fuel problem. Then they have another electrical problem, and they've still got a fuel problem. So. He was, I thought there was a misfire again, and yet again it's a tired cleaning supercar in the background, isn't it? But just he just was so frustrated, Lars Eric, poor bloke. You know, the, you, you're just chasing issues all day long like that. And uh, yeah, those are the days where you think, why do I do this? this and you sort get of back in the car and have a great time, and you think, oh, that's why I do it. Yeah. And this is the sort of thing where actually you probably need two days at a test venue because one by one you've got to take. Oh! Again! Into the wall, in the broken wall. the rear right again. So Enlund's got broken rear right suspension. Gonna try and carry on. Exactly oh, what he did whoa, last time. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That is a right and a half down at the end of the straight there when your rear right wheel is going left a bit, right a bit the whole way through to me, to you. Um, you can end up facing in the opposite direction very quickly indeed. 
What's that, Hal? Any appreciation for your mastermind or not? Just grief. Grief? Grief from everybody. What about mastermind and supercar lights? No, I don't know. No, uh, I can't read it all. There we go. Oh, I'm getting criticised for calling out Ben Hardy. I wasn't, I wasn't no, he wasn't calling out ben. ben Hardy. Ben's a legend. I bet you could do a great impression of Ben with your uh, accent ability. You think so? Yeah. Well, I'll work on it at some point. Follow this car, stay with the drone, because at the end of this straight, that rear right is going to point to wherever direction he wants to point, and it's not much fun where you try and figure it out. He's actually... There we go! But it's oh. bent. Is it bent or broken? Because if it's bent, you can know what it's doing. It's when it's flapping around... Oh, I think it's bent, actually. Yeah, I so think that's you're right. So if it's broken and the wheel's flapping oh, around in the, in the arch... Oh, that's what I thought on lap one, but it yeah, is, it's is it? Yeah, it's bent, isn't it? So you can deal with that, OK? It's got so much toe out on that way, it'll really help him turn in... This way. This way. To a left-hander, but if it was flapping around, then yeah. you'd just be off, wouldn't you? And that sucks. You see, it doesn't doesn't want to in quite the same way. Here we go, lean on it, lean on it. You seen those trucks with rear-wheel steering? That's basically what what's happening here. It's just unfortunately, no choice. Look at look at the dirt that's up against the barrier where everyone's clattered it. Hal, you see the point at which they're hitting it. Look, mm. look at the side of the track, all the dirt that's fallen out from behind the grass. Most bank. of it's Martin Enlands, isn't it? <laughs> it? It is. I'm afraid, Martin. Sorry, mate. He's in good spirits when we saw him yesterday too. Done a lot of rallying over the winter in an R5 Fiesta and uh, driving a car with the suspension hanging off it will only have been helped by his rally experience. How visiting that gravel trap again did that last time. Quite an impact on that wall and as we said in the previous session, so he hit it at quite an angle there and I think that's probably saved it a little bit because it's all out of shape under the bridge. But once he knew that the wheel, it was like riding a bucking bronco, isn't it? But once you knew that the wheel wasn't about to fall off, then, uh, as we say, you can manage it. But that barrier is going absolutely nowhere with that bank behind it. So those are the championship standings so far for Supercar Lights. Um, what we were hoping for was to, to look at the overall positions after qualifying. And there they are. Oh, Anderson does hold on. So Anderson does hold on, how because he had a 10-point lead. So it's enough, despite that last session not being ideal. Got P7. He'd had two P1s and a P7, and it's enough. So he gets uh, the top qualifier spot. Kasper Janssen second. Olofsson, Schurkvist, Experth, Oskarsson, Steinsalt, Enland, Kastman, Haug, and Haug. So there's only 10 cars, no, because there's 11 entered, so they will do semis, won't they? I was thinking, would we see semis from open to wheel drive? But OK, so Lucas Anderson, yesterday's winner on his debut in Supercar Lights, has taken his first ever win yesterday and his first ever TQ today against a, a very experienced field of Supercar Lights drivers. From Supercar Light onto Supercar Heavy, that's not really what they're called, but uh, these are the heavy hitters. These are your top drivers from the previous session. Kevin Erickson on the inside, currently with the TQ. Johan Christofsson, Andreas Backerud. Then you've got uh, Ward, Calla Ward, after that brilliant performance in the previous one, got fourth in Yuri Balevsky. Backerud's car squats down on the back of the Audi, doesn't get as good a launch though as Johan Christofsson does. He's going to beat Erickson. Erickson can't do around the outside from there, so watch him do a sly one and go for the inside line. Backerud gets roosted. He'd look at Backerud's screen. Backerud can't see anything. He's got his wipers on fully. The screen is absolutely covered in dirt. He got completely roosted by Johan. He drops down to P4. Cal Award goes Joker immediately. Oh, it was a nightmare, Hal. Backward screen is cleaning now. The washers aren't working as well as they might. Oh, Blevsky just touches that wall on the exit of what is the final corner towards the end of the lap. Ericsson going with Christophson, but this is just what they didn't want to happen. Christophson having a clear run from uh, second on the grid. And there's a great example of Paul not being where you want to be. Look at backwards windscreen. Unbelievable. And it, it stuck, Hal. That's the thing is it stuck. So it must have just been damp enough from, uh, from you know, the track watering, etc. in turn one. It literally stuck across the whole screen. Backward looking up the inside of Alevsky. He's made two good passes down there today. Can't make it stick this time, so goes Joker. He'll come out in front of Calla Ward. I'm pretty confident on that. Ward was so pleased with his performance in the previous session, and rightly so. Oh, Ward might be close. 
Johan Christofferson does a 38.5 on the first complete lap. The best lap of the day to that point was a 39.1 for Andreas Backridge in Q2. So Johan Christofferson with the best of the track conditions is on a Johan Christofferson style big charge. Here he is, the man, the myth, the legend. What an incredible list of titles to his name. Just so consistent as well. He stays out. Will Eriksson go? Will Bolevsky go this time round? Nice and tidy through the final corner. Runs just to the barrier but doesn't hit it. Eriksson's gone Joker house. So Eriksson goes Joker, drops back. So Bolevsky now leads. Eriksson's gap is 5.9 to Christofferson. So that was to cover. Was that to cover back or a backer? It seems to drop time too. So Christofferson's first lap was a 38.563. The last lap he did was a 38.569. This will be that time she we took around last yesterday. It's on his bedroom wall already. On the bedroom wall. Oh, yeah. inconsistent. He needed to be identical to go on the bedroom wall. I love it, mate. He sent me that on board once in the Hollius for two years that he won in a row of when the fist pumps were and what they were like. And he was disappointed because the lap time wasn't right on one of them. I mean, it's ridiculous how good he is but he is that good and he comes through the left hand of Christopherson to take the checkered flag he's gonna go set the benchmark here to the fastest time of the day 226.1 is easily the fastest time of the day by two seconds so he's got two seconds quicker than Ericsson went to win the previous session and I would bet that that won't be bettered brilliant start by him just shuts the door on Kevin Erickson. You see, can't do the round the outside from there. Watch backward here. So watch backward screen. Look at this. It's painted pretty much, yeah? And when you see the front shot, you'll see what we mean. It must be this wet patch here, Hal, just as they've come through. Look at it. <laughs> and backwards, just look at, look at it. Nightmare. It's bizarre, isn't it? It's like it's, it's almost like it's stuck only to the screen and not to anything else. See, his wipers are going like mad. He can't see anything. He's still gunning it, just trying to find a way through. And then you're feeling your way in. You could see backward was tentative turning in to the uh, to turn two towards the apex because you might you know there's going to be someone there, but if you can't see anything, oh. you, you're literally just nudging your way across to feel who's inside you. Oof. Christopherson takes it, followed closely by uh, Vigo Koch with the drone there over the line. P2 for Vigo. Yeah, what up, mate? All right, how dusty do you reckon Vigo is still on the outside of the hairpin hound? Just looking at the wind direction for the entire track. It's headed towards Vigo. We're waving at him now. Yeah, his thumbs up. Are you dusty, Vigo? I don't know, he says. <laughs> he shrugs his, shrugs his hands a little bit, maybe. On goes the headset for Vigo, because he's about to launch his uh, drone to chase down some of these fantastic rallycross drivers up towards the first corner. Christensen, Franks, Schnack, Dahl, and OC Baby on the outside. Ola Christian. Needs a brilliant start here. And then we've got a couple of very quick drivers in the last race. So don't go anywhere as qualifying is coming to a close. Baby does get a good start. Going to be easily in front. Oh, behind him, it's all kicking off. Schnack gets a little nudge. Victor Franks goes around the outside. Schnack or the RX2E machine gets roosted enough to rip off the visor on the front of the screen there or some of the livery on the top. Baby leads, and there is no way he's going to joker until very late in this race, Hal, because with respect to the others, he's quicker, and he's got to stay out in front of them. I think I need to go and have a word with AC Baby, because I thought we'd see him much more flamboyant first corner, but he was very neat and tidy. I actually don't know whether that's quick or not. I was talking to Kevin Erickson after Q2, and he was saying he thinks the quickest way around the first corner, certainly from the outside, is just to give it a big old send. Kevin's not using the handbrake at all. He's just giving it a big flick to rotate the car, and uh, OC was quite tidy on the inside. OK, he's leading the race, and who am I to tell him how to drive? But he was uh, he's known for his flamboyance, and uh, that was very neat and tidy. He's coming in hot at the end of the straight. I think he's got away with it. No, he's a bit deep, and so is Franks. Franks has got sucked into that, Hal. Yeah. Baby came in too hot, Schnack's come in. So basically everybody there has copied Baby's uh, breaking point, and it wasn't right. We didn't actually see Baby in the corner, but you saw what I mean. He was carrying a lot of pace as he left the side of our shot. Yeah, and we uh, discussed yesterday, for those people who aren't real-life rallycross drivers, if you play uh, dirt rallycross uh, online, you regularly get sucked into someone else's mistake. But those guys were quite far back as well, so they wouldn't have seen that necessarily. So I wonder if there's more gravel down there from the exit of the first corner. Now the supercars are dragging that onto the tarmac compared to earlier on. Did you see um, oh, a baby this time comes in nice and tight? Yeah, how did you see Sebastian Lowe playing Dirt Rally 2 on a full-on simulator just before he went to the, Azor uh, the Azores and spanked everyone in the um, in the Skoda? I didn't know, but... Um, I love that, though. Uh, but it is, isn't it? It's just epic. Funny enough, I remember... Do you remember when the game first came out and it was in... Wasn't it Barcelona? 
and we had uh, Ken Block, bless him, was there. Sebastian oh, yeah, Lowe, yeah, Sidney yeah, Hansen, yeah. Kevin Hansen, Backer, and everyone standing around the Sims taking it in turns. Right there. I remember Lowe, I, I copped it up completely at Lowiak. On the next lap, I got it right, and he goes, yes, that's better. And I'm like, <laughs> you legend! Sebastian Lowe said that was better. And then he, he got on it, obviously, and absolutely destroyed me immediately with his horrifically brilliant consistency. But shout out to uh, the gang at Co-Masters for a great game. 39-4, best lap for Fabi so far. He's in the joker to finish the run, but this is some way behind his teammate Jan Christofsson on lap time. Crikey, and on the overall times, 29-0. Mola Krishna will be hoping for more than that. Still second quickest, though. That'll do. It is, is it? 29-0, yeah, it is, Kevin yeah. Kevin Erickson did a 29-4, didn't yeah. he? Here's the first corner I was talking about. He was helped out a bit, Ola Christian, by uh, Christensen and uh, Schnack getting into each other. Franks. Franks actually did well to stay out of trouble here, How because he gets squeezed, heads out. Oh, he's just found a release, didn't he, there? Good awareness, yeah. Yeah, gets around the outside of Schnack and then gets a similar route. That, look, at, look how brave you have to be to drive through the dirt. He's waiting for it to clear, Franks was, and it clears just in time. So I say, just the livery off the top of the screen, it looks like, has, has been shot off the car at 50. That's where Vaby had gone deep. Look, France goes deep. And again, and again, Schnack comes in, gets on the bar, but just a little bit too greedy. So often in Rallycross, you're on site. When you experienced that a couple of weeks ago at Lydon Hill, you're genuinely blind at different points yeah, on the lap. Yeah, and you just got it. to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post hope. one of the starts at some point because I looked back and it was like, I was even myself, I was like, yeah, it was worse than I thought. You, you can't see anything. And it's the same The start when, was worse than you thought, or the visibility. The visibility right. was horrific. It was just, you turn in and it's like literally like someone throwing a black blanket over the front of the screen for three or four seconds. And, and you look at it and you're steering, trying to look out through the side windows. It's bonkers. It's bonk, and that's what happened to Backroot with the dust. It's what Frank's there though, kept it lit through that cloud, and just appears out. And the point at which Baby's jumped on the brakes, of course, the dust has dropped a bit, and, and suddenly you come out of the cloud, and, and there's the apex. But you've got to be pretty brave to do it like that. Before the start of this race, very quickly, I always remember a Dermot Carnegie super final at Pembury in Wales, where the windscreen was all covered in mud, so we had to keep throwing the car. These Ford Focus sideways in every so corner, so we can see out the side window. Brilliant, mate. Tam, Linneman, Hedstrom, Roma. We said there was a couple of big hitters in this one. They're in the middle of the grid. Hedstrom and Linneman need a good start. Hedstrom's Hyundai, we know, is keen on the straights. Look at that, comes in on Tam. Tam's going to run wide. Linneman going to go to the inside line. Good move by Linneman. Bursts out the dust like Franks did into P2. That's what we were talking about. Tam's got no chance to go. I was going to say he's got no chance to go. Joe gets really late and has probably lost more time than he would have gained. But it is uh, Hedstrom, yesterday's winner. Hedstrom's where in qualifying, Hal? Not where he wants to be. 12th, so Hedstrom, 12th. Where was he yesterday in quali? He was uh, maybe 5th, 4th or 5th, I think, from memory. Can't quite remember off the top of my head. Oh, looking now for us. Hedstrom had a much better start there than he had done so far. And actually turned in on Tam, which helped the rotation of the car. Sometimes turning in on someone like that can not hinder them so much and help you just get the rotation done on the rear. He was second. Okay, I was so wrong. A sixth totally of, wrong. No, sixth, a fifth and a first, yeah, but I mean, still, so he's beat him yesterday, he beat 12 today. Got to get it all together, hasn't he? If he's going to try and repeat the result, semi-final, he's going to have to fight. I mean, if he gets a good result now, what are the points like? Ah, uh, he's 66. No, to be honest with you, there's a little gap ahead of him. He might move up to row two if he's lucky, but he's not going to get near row one, I think. Making the semi-final will be the main objective to start with, won't it? With uh, Schnack and Dahl, I think, behind him, are these? Uh, yeah. Oh, Dahl, did Dahl even get back out? Yes. Was it Dahl that had that crash with the whole the rear end ripped off the car? It was Roma. Roma. And, uh, amazing for Roma's team to get that that's, car repaired. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say, thinking about it. We never got the chance to look at that, did we? Wow, that's incredible. I didn't think that was coming back out this weekend, to be honest. Yeah, there's a corner damaged and there's a corner completely ripped off and it was well ripped Sometimes off. Sometimes if it rips the top mount out you get less and it's damage. given way, you get less damage because if you've got a spare damper and upright, or even the upright might be fine, it might have just pulled the top of the damper. If you've got a spare damper, it might all go together much yeah. easier than it looks. So it almost plucks it out of the car, doesn't it, rather than ripping all the suspension mountings back and bending everything, making it a bit tougher to rebuild it. There's some great stories from Rallycross about people repairing cars. There really are, you know. Uh, was it Utah where, where the Hansons had to use a forklift or something to pull the car straight? I think it was Timmy Hansons' car. Yeah, had forklifts and gate posts are oh. uh, the friend of many mechanics. There was, uh, we've had cars attached to containers, haven't we, in stretch. Uh, who was it last year? 
Was it on one of the Nordic rounds where Yol was there with a huge sledgehammer trying yeah, to straighten out? Was that, on, was on that babies, Baby's Audi? Yeah. Baby's Audi yeah. And then they bought a JCB and didn't they like an excavator? Hedged him with a 227 second one. Fastest. Second fastest. Okay, that's, that's going to bring him well up. So that could actually put him on the second row if he's lucky. We'll see if we can see the championship standings after. But yeah, there's some some of the repairs just amazing, amazing. Shout out to all the uh, mechanics and techs out there who know what that's like. Have pulled an all-nighter or found a, a piece of heavy machinery to straighten out a, a half million pound rallycross car. Let's get a digger. I'm sure we can straighten it out. It'll be fine. So when you're cutting the bench in half that's in the back of the truck to uh, get some more steel, you need to repair a suspension arm or something. Yeah, what, what, was it, what was it last year in Cuba? How wasn't it a piece of angle iron somebody had found by the jet wash that mm. was welded to something to make it last a bit longer? <laughs> All yeah. parties will remain nameless until the book. Should we, what are we going to call it? Just the book? We've promised it for a couple of seasons now. The thing is, it's every year there's more stories that can go into it. Mm. Does it need to be after we've retired? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That could be sooner than you think. You just <laughs> never know, do you? Okay, we've got a crash that we didn't see in the feed, which uh, our lovely director, Anchor, has found for us. Oh, wow. Oh, no. My goodness. That is some weekend. Oh, mate. Well, Dennis is okay, clearly. But where is that? And look at the barrier. That could be a problem. Uh, luckily, it's the end of the session. Uh, we're zooming out now, Hal. It's in turn one. So uh, he's lost it after the jump. Coming down the hill. He's lost it after the jump and ended up in the barrier <sighs> inside turn one. So, yeah, I mean, where that arm co is bent like that, it, the thing is, it's not actually protecting. If it was protecting from, say, a tree or a pond or something, you. but I think they might get away with that. They'll have a crack at repairing it. They haven't got long, because we, we will have, like yesterday, a break of absolutely nothing between now and the um, semi-finals. Do we have any footage of that in the, yeah, I think uh, we do. In the truck hanker? Because that Henk is our director. Yeah. I'm um, just wondering if we can see a replay. Because that. Wow. That's a, that's a big old hit. Look at the right. wheel in the wheel arch. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, nice no, points. Christofferson steals the top qualifier from Kevin Erickson with a win in that final session. Erickson drops to P2. Backward is in P3. Linneman is P4. So they will be the two front rows in our semi finals. Then Franks and Vaby make the cut. Vaby's further up. Belevsky and Hedstrom. Calla Ward is in the semis. Maiko Tam, Stefan Christensen, Morton Schnack. Dennis Romer, as you've just seen, is not going to make it. And neither is Magnus Dahl. So the same top 12 drivers have made it through, but uh, in a different order. OK, we're going to... Uh, close the show up I think here and get ourselves ready to head off for the semi-finals so we hope you have uh, enjoyed all the action so far we certainly enjoyed it I'd, I'd say not poor old uh, Roma's not enjoying it quite as much that's two big shunts in one day Hal yeah and that's uh, he was 11th overall so they no, were, I would have made, made, made it but not gonna, well, well, well Hedstrom and no, 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 he's yeah. dropped, no he's dropped out already yeah, but would have made it but he, he, he's Has gone made it now gone. there we go there we go it's gone there we are. What so, yes, qualifying over and done with. Three qualifying sessions today. We had three yesterday. Semi-finals and finals were good fun yesterday. We've got three semis coming up for Cross Car Junior and Cross Car, followed by two semis for Supercar Lights and Supercar. Just the finals come for open two-wheel drive. But plenty of action as we round out rounds one and two of Rally X 2023 from Nisa in Denmark. Andrew Curley, Hal Ridge, thanks for watching so far. We will be back very soon indeed.
Good evening. This is the, uh, what time is it? This is the 4.06. <laughs> Sorry, it's just more paperwork. It's just a crap news joke, basically. <laughs> it was lost on me, to be honest. <laughs> Welcome back. I wonder if newsreaders um, have their printer on the floor. I don't, I don't know. Do newsreaders wear shorts behind the desk? Who's Hal's wearing trousers today? Not really seeing how close up you're on the desk. You can see all our mess. Phones, you can't really see our messages. That's good. You should move those, Hal. You should have brought your Rally X Nordic bottle with you. See? Schoolboy. I got told off yesterday for having the tape on the desk, but it was basically it was here as a paperweight because it wasn't then none of the grids were. But welcome back. We are getting ready for the closing stages of round two of Rally X 2023. My name's Andrew Cody. How Rich has been with me all weekend and has been brilliant as always. You guys have been amazing as well watching at home. We know it's a bit of a marathon, but you've got other stuff to do. We, we got people watching who are prepping rally cars and rally cross cars back in the UK. And we got people who are chilling and just have been looking for a rally cross fix and, and they're joining us. These guys have got their rally cross fix on yesterday. They're they're in shorts and t-shirts. Today the jackets are on. It's been a bit cooler, but not out on the track. It has been red hot out there. And we are ready to go for uh, our semi-finals. Crosscar Junior up first. Three semi-finals for them because of the size of the entry. As we mentioned countless times. Were you paying attention? You better have been. Is your specialist subject Crosscar Junior? Uh, I'm missing supercar, Hal. That's the only piece of paper I'm missing. There we go. You should never miss supercar. No, that's actually the, the yeah, there we go. That's it. No, thank you, mate. Perfecto. We are all in order, and I think we're just about ready to go. Cross Card Junior semi final one. Uito, Christensen, Soderholm, Hagstrom, Nielsen, and Darback is your grid. Remember, Uito on the front row was the champion last year. Came second yesterday to Yulalami. Yulalami is on the pole in semi final number three. Uh, basically, if you're wondering, with the three semis, Uito was TQ, so he goes pole in semi one. Hallinan was P2 in quali, so he goes pole in semi two. Yulalami was P3 in quali, he goes pole in uh, semi final number three. So Uito, Christensen, Soderholm, and Hagstrom are the front four. Remember, Hagstrom made those super aggressive passes in the last qualifying round. Hagstrom gets a good start from row two, should be able to shut the door and move to the inside line. Four blue cross cars at the front, how what could possibly go wrong? Oh, look how wet the track is too. They really do deal with the trickiest of conditions and we are full of admiration for that. But it is Uito, the reigning champion, who's got a good start, tidy out front and has just got a job to do now. Yep, remember this is all about track position. Your overall race time goes out the window. Lap time only matters when you're challenging the people around you. It's all about finishing in the top two in the junior cross car semi-finals. The three semi-finals, the top two from each go up. In the classes with two semi-finals, it's the top three from each to go up to the final. And, uh, yeah, Uito in the pound seat as he was uh, yesterday. Look how wet it is, as you say, Andrew, going up the hill. The thing is, it's such great prep, Al, isn't it? You're sticking around. Like I said to you about the RX 150s last weekend, I learned way more in the wet than I did in the dry. And these kids are way more capable of learning than me. It's rusty old adult brain is no good for learning anymore. So think about a kid, and you know what kids are like, any of you that got kids at home, they're like sponges, they learn so fast, and they are kids. Yeah, you can be as young as, is it 11 in this category? Um, and is it 15, I think you move up to senior? Yeah, you can stay till you, well, you know, 16 is the, is the cut-off age for uh, senior, the, the lowest age, I mean, that's why you've got Luke Sanderson with special dispensation at 15 in, in lights to, go, to, lights. to go yeah. up. So, that's a long time, isn't it, you can spend there? It is, and the point is, when you're that capable of learning, you know, and you're sticking around in these tricky conditions, they're just going to pick it up so fast. So they also just drive on their wits, don't they, as, yeah. you know, with their learning as well. A good example of that is you at, at Lydon Hill, and that you were uh, all over the place in, in practice, and you said to me, what, what, what do I need to do? You know exactly what to do, because you watch every single week, and I was like, you need to break in a straight line, then turn, and you're like, right, right, okay. But and then, then you did. But you, you just need someone else to reassure yeah, you, you, whereas these junior drivers don't care about that, they just do what they think. Oh, how that was so... Christensen ran that as close to the wall as you can, but, mate, you're absolutely right, and that's the thing is... And that's why sometimes I think when you look at the drivers, you know, that you see them looking at data with somebody who is not a driver, and they're looking at it and you go, well, what, the, what does he know about driving that Christopherson doesn't know? The point is he's not in Christopherson's head in the car. You know, he's outside looking at data completely cold and going, as you said to me, this is what you need to do to tidy it up, and then you go and do it. 
Whether or not you can execute it is, is another matter. You don't always, but as a kid and a, as a professional driver, you're more likely to execute it than, than someone who's a novice. Yuito runs so wide there on the entry to that, that left hand, which is turn two at the start of the race. You couldn't do that later in the session because there'll be so much dirt there dragged out from uh, the first corner. So that's a real indication as to how early these cars run in the session. That's Christensen hanging Just, on yeah. to second. So th this is the important battle because out front, Uito's got a massive gap. So we need to wait and see what happens in P2. Thank you, camera guys and director. That is mega. Uito has got this nailed on unless he makes a mistake. So we might see him at the finish, but we might look for Hackstrom, who remember... This is made, where he made that yeah, move, yeah. made brilliant passes. So watch these two. Only the top two go through. Christensen hanging on for dear life. And I think Hackstrom's going to be just too far back to make those killer moves that he made in Q3. Oh, nicely done by Christensen. Uito should have come out the Joker about now. We're crossing the line any second in the background. There he was. So Uito takes it and goes through. Does he only one more lap? There's still one more lap. So Uito's not joking. He's going to wait. And I'll tell you what, Christensen here is gapping Hackstrom. Yeah, I was thinking uh, last time there's going to be uh, another opportunity, but I don't think there is. You're right, because uh, Christensen has just found that little bit of extra pace that you need just to feel a little bit more comfy. Just that few more metres, it doesn't sound like a lot, does it? But it gives you that bit more confidence in the braking zone to break where you want, to turn in where you want. And ultimately, that's the quickest way. When you're defending and feeling under pressure, that's when you start closing down the corner, start shutting the door and losing that little bit of time. Really nicely done. They lean on them because they're momentum cars, so they just don't get them quite as sideways as the guys in cross car, do they? You know, they turn in with a bit of understeer, come out with a little bit of oversteer, whereas the, the, the cross car senior guys, you see, pitch it in hard. Uito's gone through already, Christensen takes P2. Great job by uh, the two front row drivers to book their spots in the final of Cross Car Junior. Semi final one done. Yeehaw. So Christensen looking the 313 does get second off the start. But it was it was really the joke emerge, wasn't it? It was that he that he covered off Hagstrom. And that's the uh, moment you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, it was Christensen close. Well, it running really was so close, close to the wall. It, mate? Yeah, you were looking at me just at the split second that happened. You'd be amazed if you worked as a commentator, the amount of times you look away for a split second to... You're almost guaranteed that something will happen. Yeah, piece, you need a pen, a piece of paper, someone sends you a crucial bit of info on WhatsApp, you check the timing screen for a split second, and that's when something happens. So that we, uh, we have a rule, don't we, how one of us is looking at the screen at all times, and then occasionally we mess that up as well. Because we're not kids, and it's hard for us to learn. Um, Michael Luito takes the win from Victor Christensen. Uh, Christensen holding off the attentions of Hampus Hagstrom. So Hagstrom, Soderholm, Higlund, Nielsen and Darbach will go no further this weekend. But a great performance by them nonetheless. Semi-final two, cross guard junior front row, Lowry, Hallinan. Then it's Oliver Solly, Pauli Terpinen, Axel Schnack, Christian Schiel and Carl Spedland. Solly, by the way, will show up when your timing screen just debates and because for some reason it's taking the, uh, the middle name, which it didn't last year. Allen in that brand new cross car, racing anchor for the first time yesterday, gets the best start. And slotted in behind is uh, Oliver Solly. So front row starters do what they did in the previous race and get themselves in tidily. P3 man screeching in hot behind. Nobody jokes on that one, I'd have gone. If nobody else has gone, you're down in five or six. Unless you're looking... Oh, somebody's gone, in the gone, I think. That's, yeah, last, gone. Minute, last minute change of direction there then. There's a great angle that you get to see of the long sweeper onto the straight. It is fast down there, even in a junior cross car. What was Larry telling me yesterday? I think you said 115 kilometres an hour. That doesn't sound like a lot, but you've got to bear in mind it's 12 or something. Um, you know, Larry. I, I, wasn't allowed, I wasn't allowed to drive at 65 miles an hour on, on, uh, on dirt order. But he was also saying that they needed different gearing because they reckoned they were losing out by about 13 kilometers an hour to the, to the top speed. I don't know whether they changed that overnight or what they did, but... Larry and his dad have obviously done a great job of getting this car more up to pace because uh, he's been much more competitive than they suggested they might be yesterday when we first got into the paddock and were talking to them about uh, the setup of this new car. 
I saw the most wonderful junior cross car moment earlier, which I'd taken a picture, but I didn't, was uh, Larry sitting in his car and then I saw it one too. of the other drivers just sitting on the roll cage with his feet in it. They're just passing the time of day, not a care in the world. No, they were just chilling, waiting for the queue for the jet wash, weren't they? <laughs> After practice, warm up this morning or yeah. Q1 this morning. You've they? made it dirty, you're going to have to wash it, but apart from that, they don't really have a, you know. No, it's great. Kids, but racing cars, they're very lucky. I hope they realise it. I'm sure most of them do, but I really hope they do because it's a privilege to take part in a sport like this. Uh, Hallen and, and Oliver Solly, Solly, go Joker, showing on your time between the Tveten, as I say. We'll fix that, I'm sure. Ooh. So it's coming out behind Christian Shield. I'm going to take my woolly hat off. I've taken my coat off, Hal. I noticed you've taken off your, uh, I don't know, whatever, the zippy top, whatever it was. It's actually the sun shining again. No, we're going to have an issue of my head shining in the... Uh in the lights shine, uh, in the studio. Shine bright like a head. The Rihanna song, wasn't it? Maybe diamond. Or maybe it is quite shiny. You may want to, you may want to, you can get outside and just get some dust on it or something, take the shine off. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fair enough, mate. It's all good. I suspect we're both pretty shiny. Me and Hallen Hallen and Stoke, sorry, Andrea. Hallen and Stoke oh. from the lead early. So he's given up track position. This is just try and cover off Solly, yeah, Solly. Shields in between them, and actually did well to get out in front of Shields. And Shields' pace is good, like Hal, but just lost that little bit at the start of the race. That is a risk, isn't it, for Hallinan to cover off Solly like this, because if these boys all get tied up with each other, this is going to hand it to Turpinen. Did you see the difference in speed there again with Shield? I mean, that will part. Shield goes up the inside of Hallinan. So Shield, who is behind Hallinan and making contact almost, don't worry about that They've got no spotters, Hal. He won't necessarily know that Shield hasn't got him on track position because he's been in front of Shield for the whole race. Hallinan now taking a risk to go up the inside. His dad will be freaking out watching this. Locks it all up, coming up around the outside. Now Shield's going to go Joker, and he's going to think, oh, I didn't realise. Instead, he's under pressure behind from Oliver Solly. So now he's got to watch his rear as well as the leader comes out in between them. And that's cleared everything out for uh, Hallen and oh no way so Oliver Solly ends up in the wall there he is in the car you can see him taking the belts off oh disaster just and there, there you go that's what can happen that the car in between came out went for a gap that to be fair to slot into probably wasn't there but also Solly would have had his eyes firmly on Hallen and so who does that leave likely to go through I think Schnack's climbed up to uh, to second here although Turpin and Joe could and I don't know I think the timing screen hasn't caught up with the action on track. Schnack's no. in the red and black, so I reckon Schnack's... No, Turpin is still second, look. Yeah. Here comes Lowry Hallinan. Very, very marginally avoided what was going on there. He'll see his rivals in the wall. He won't have seen that on the way through. He's going to win his semi-final. Flag falls for him, and P2 goes to Turpinen, as Hal said, I think. Or is it Schnack? Sorry, Schnack. So where's uh, Turpinen? It must be... Yeah, Schnack, how bad? So something's happened uh, to Turpinen, but um, Schnack was fourth or fifth with a couple of laps to go there. Hallen and Jokering into the pack caused mayhem behind. That's what ultimately, it's not his fault that Solly got taken out, but they had that. Hallen and being in that mix just made a bit more of a. Uh, well, there were no gaps, scrub. were there? It was, it was, you're coming out into a traffic jam. Here it is, here is uh, Hallen and Joker. Nice and tidy. So it's, he's done the job he needed to do here. Although it is a risk, isn't it? Because he's going to lose out in the next corner to um, Shield comes. So Shield. now Shield, look, Shield has a look to the inside and does pass him. So Shield's speed was high. I don't know if he's geared differently or if it was literally a slipstream, how, which is possible. That the, the distance is these kids are following each other. And that's Solly behind, isn't it? So Solly's there with a the Norwegian flag on the side. But in the Joker lap here, look, coming out now and in... That's Turpinen. So that's where Turpinen mm, went. To be fair, I think Solly could have given that a little bit more space from behind. He could see him clearly. He's here pretty it is. in This front, is Turpinen coming out of the Joker. So it's just us, I'm afraid, not catching the car number, as you can imagine. Well, they're white. Speed yeah, exactly. Car wonders. Yeah. But, and, uh, Solly already knows, look, holding his helmet. And he also knows the suspension's broken. <laughs> got your belts off practically before the car's yeah. come to a rest, isn't it? I might have stayed, kept those on until the cars had cleared me, but they're learning. So Solly, a DNF after contact with Turpine and at the uh, Joker lap merge, Svedlin, Shield, P3, P4. Those drivers are all done, as we say, this weekend here at the Nissan Barn. And Lowry Hallen and wins with Axel Schnack. So Schnack has come up from row two. Good effort.
But Schnack was fourth or fifth, as I said, with a couple of laps to go, and then it all came uh, came good. You get both of those junior cross cars on that uh, you will, recovery. Yeah, you could. Oh, Solly looks gutted there, look. He's a great driver, Hal, isn't he? You know, he's, yeah. and he really is young. He was hanging around outside the tent, wasn't he, last night? They come up and they watch the feed with us sometimes. And we'll have them on as guests at some point during the course of the year, I'm sure, this weekend. Uh, we're a bit too busy. Puncture there for... Uh, so, his, his, seriously, the car. the car looks great, but I shout out to all young rallycross drivers. If you want to get recognised quickly on the telly, stick a mad delivery on the car. Dead serious. You look at the the colours on Rico Hukar's car, I'd spot him from a mile off. Yeah, you, you want and to be fair, he's one of the ones that we would recognise instantly, yes. because you know... And... Uh, Pentonen's always got a wild livery as well, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, but I think him and Hukar run out the same squad. They do, they? yeah, but, uh, but that, that's the that thing. Helps. So, what, what we're saying, so, we, uh, believe it or not, we've had this conversation with some of the best rallycross teams in the world. I remember SRT USA with the three Subarus that were identical. It's like, we are going to need some way to ID those cars. Well, that's and why... It was, when, it was when the spotters got confused. <laughs> they were like, oh, yeah. Um, it's yeah, when they put like a little bit of sticker on the wing mirror. Yeah. It's like... Or they do something that, where they put something on the grill. The grill is no good. You need the roof or the wing. Good example was Markland, wasn't it, back in the day with a red roof and a yellow roof. Really easy to spot. Here it is, look, comes out to Pynan. Yeah, a, uh, I get why Solly's gone left. Solly's tried to go left and go inside, just needed to check up a little bit more to slot through and, in, this, and caught the rear of the car. Here you go, Hal. This is one of the first examples we've had of the Joker merge being uh, contentious because Sir Pynan wasn't all the way past Solly, and Solly does have right away in theory, but you can't you can't do stand that on the brakes that, and that, concede. He's so uh, do that from 90%. But you can see front. why Solly thinks it's his corner as well. So I get yeah, it. But just look, a bit look, clumsy, if, if you look at it from this angle, can we see that angle again? That one you've just shown us is probably in a package, so we might have to wait. But if we can see that angle again, we'd love to. Just the very last shot. Here it is. So watch from this angle, Helen. Look at the. He is as to Yeah, he's a long up. way back, isn't he? Yeah. yeah he's a, look here. He's a hundred percent in front. And the, hit, the contact is actually with the rear of the rear right. But so I do think it's clumsy rather than... Oh, it's nothing malicious, is it? No, not malicious, but, you know, I don't think someone's wholly to blame. I think it's no, just no, clumsy joke and Yeah, I think if Solly had checked up the tiniest amount, he could have turned in behind and potentially made the pass. Yeah, yeah. But he's a talented kid, Solly, as is Tepinen. And uh, I promise you, you'll be hearing their names a lot more this season of Rally X and also in the future of this sport, I'm sure, and off-road motorsport. What colour would you paint your cross car or wrap it? Uh, I like Hammer Crisp's colour, that bright orange. The, you know the bright orange colour. Mm. I'd go, I'd go bright orange. What do you think about that? What about you? I really don't know. Green, maybe. There's not many green cars. No, I like Luma. I always had Kawasaki green. Not Kawasaki green. No, no that's a cool colour. No, that's a bit too wild, isn't it? Oh, how? Maybe for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd go. I always had like a, a light, just not quite Kawasaki, but that sort of green on my rally yeah. cross cars in the past. I might, I quite fancy one in the old rally car. Um, you know when they did test liveries? I mean the black and white, the zebra stripes to stop people seeing the shape of the car. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. Uh, I'd go. Oh, it's a little split screen there. Look, it was a bit of a close up. Sorry about that. Like and subscribe. Um, yes, like and subscribe. Look at that's a new graphic. Wow, liked. Did you like it? Do you subscribe? Uh, no, because I'm always here. I can't watch it, can I? Fair. Do you want me to subscribe? Well, that'd be good, wouldn't it? All right. Wait a minute. My head is shiny. I'm just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so is mine, mate. It's been a long day. Make up. Make up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go rub your face in some dust that's if you want. as well. Uh, have you that's had fun? Peter. That's one of the many it hats is, that Peter yeah, Hellman Peter wears. Peter Hellman, get down here now with my makeup. Like. The hardest working man in the paddock, along with Kevin Erickson. Well, They're basically yeah, true, actually, holding this championship yeah. together they with are, Andreas. They are. Yeah. Amazing work from. Uh, anyway, I'm trying to like a subscribe. Guys. Hold on, hold on a minute. Hang on. We could be here a while. Can, can Andrew doesn't use his phone very often. Someone, you may have noticed. Can someone send me a child who knows how to work a phone and YouTube? Oh, well, there we go. He logged in. Thank you very much. Rally X has come up Watching. straight away. Actually, I'm. <laughs> Okay, this is, what's, is this matter, is it, when you're watching yourself? Look, hold on. Oh, God, we're going to end up in... There's a live chat. I won't read that. You make sure, <laughs> you make sure you're nice in there. Oh, we're a few seconds behind, Hal. Look. So if you wait, and, the then it'll be, and then it'll there we come. Go. Hold up. Oh, I paused it. Here it is. There we go. But anyway, I have liked and subscribed. Of course I have. This, you could, this is like looking in mirrors. 
Yeah, you only need to get a mirror on you just, It <sighs> goes through infinity. The distance. But with a so time you can delay. wave at yourself in infinity when you can see it wow. both ways. We got really deep today, haven't we? Mastermind. Did, ah, <laughs> hang on. Here he is. Get in here now. Come on. <laughs> That's it. Get rich, Johnny. He's way shinier. <laughs> PT legend. <laughs> In all seriousness, that bloke got three hours sleep for you lot at home so to make sure everything was working. They, 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 it, uh, it's, a, honest, it's a small team here, isn't it's it? It's a small team because this is a smaller series and there is not tons of money here. And if you want to get involved and sponsor the series, you, you would be more than welcome. And I, I actually think in terms of bang for buck, you get great value coming here. Uh, not a sales pitch, just to tell you how hard everybody's working behind the scenes. Me and Hal, we, we make jokes about how many hours we're doing this. He got three hours sleep. And the year before, they got no hours sleep. Did they try to fix some graphics machine that wasn't working? It's hard work, and uh, I think it's brilliant. It's so, usually technology that lets the, oh, lets the job down, yeah. isn't it? But thank you. The whole Absolutely, TV yeah. team, everybody in the truck, all uh, the marshals, the, the whole race team. We normally do it at the end of the season. We're doing it today because I'm having a good day. And also what you don't see at home is it's a new TV team this weekend. Yeah. Very few of the people working on the broadcast have, have done it before. So I think they've done a stellar job to uh, keep up with the, the relentless pace of a rallycross event. We were talking to some of the cameramen earlier and they're used to working in different sports, but rallycross is just absolutely He's, continuous yeah, all day long. Was the, um, director does a lot of ice hockey, doesn't he? He said it's, it's fast, it's, uh, it's just like this. It's like, yeah, it is, yeah, it is. Literally, you don't even have time to change the pieces of paper in between. So. Um, what we got, Hal? You know, your alarm is coming up uh, in this next semi-final. Yesterday's winner. What was the podium yesterday? It was your alarmy, Uito and Hallen. And Hallen has All gone through. Uito's gone through. So if your alarmy goes through as well, then we've got our top three from yesterday through. Both, Uito both and of them have won, haven't they? So yeah, they'll both so, be on the front row. So, so actually, the front row is locked out. Well, the best your yeah. alarmy can do is be on the third inside. Yeah. So if your alarmy, who is the pole sitter here? in the 150, the yellow roof with the red front end. That's what I mean about quick to ID. Uh, if he wins, then he'll end up P3 because he qualified third and the, the P1 and P2 qualifiers won each of their semi-finals. It's a good way, I think, to do it. I don't mind three semis. I think when you've got a huge stacked entry like this, it gives the kids and their sponsors or their families a little bit more time to, to get some recognition. You can hear the local announcer in the background who's uh, Fantastic bloke commentating in two different languages. Most enthusiastic man in the paddock. Yeah, he absolutely is. Absolutely loves it. Yeah, he does. Like, genuinely loves it. He does. He absolutely does. Races himself. So, Yulalami, Tapainen, Atablad, and Jensen. Kinnan and, and Ericsson at the back. Kinnan got a brilliant start in that last qualifier. Red and yellow machine. So, a Yudra Falk cross car at the back there. Gets a good start again, but not going to be close enough. So Yulalami going to get to turn one first. Turpine going to slot in behind. And how I think you go, I'll tell you what, Kinnan has done well. Came up a couple of places. Out wide, going to get marked here, I think, for P4. He was going to go Joker this time round. P4, P4 driver goes in. So Jensen, I think that was, or was it Atablad? I think it was Jensen. So Yulalami out front. The dirt on the inside line there. You see, there's the one clean line on the track here. There goes Kinnanen. Yes, it was Jensen. Extra biscuit for me. <laughs> I've had quite a lot of biscuits today. We're running. We're running. I was, we had a bit of a lunch, didn't we? Then we needed a bit of a sugar hit. So you have to get the biscuits in. Hal got some hobnobs off the Irish crew uh, yesterday. Didn't you, Hal? Yeah. There's one left, by the way, mate. It's in the coffee really? cup holder in the front of the car. Yeah. You're going to go and get it? He's going to get his hobnob. Hang on, I'll unlock it for you. Um, so I'm just unlocking the car so Hal can get his hobnob. It might be in the middle. He's got it. Here it is. So Hal's coming back with his one hobnob. We won't eat it on air because Hal can't stand it when people eat uh, on the phone, uh, which is fair enough. I would dream of eating on air. Uh, there's mud on the screen, Hal. Have you noticed? It's been there all day. I think it's from the rain overnight. Yeah. Um, and I mean, on our screen, I mean, the, the big TV that's on the floor that we're uh, we're commentating from. Yellow Army has a 0 0.555, which is very motorsport number, lead over to Pynan and to Vlad. But done the fastest yeah, lap so far, Yellow Army. Under big pressure, though. They want to watch out a little bit for Jensen. Jensen's only 5.6 back, so he's only 2.6 off troubling the leader. So what's Jensen back from Terpinen? No, that's still five. So that's traffic to deal with though. And unless some of these kids joker in the gap, then that's going to become a bit more of a problem. Yulalami not feeling the pressure. You can see that by the attitude of the car running right out to the 
outside of the corners, just using all the roads, if you would, on your own quali lap rather than being in a, in a race situation. Kinnanen's gone joker. I think might have come out. Yeah, has dropped behind Jensen. What's Jensen? Uh, Jensen's dropping back. 6.2. So, so the front two have managed to, of the front three even, but the front two in particular have managed to break the pace of uh, anybody who's jokered. Yellow Lama's gone purple again last time around, hasn't he? So, uh, yeah, fastest lap after fastest lap. Kids, eh? Brilliant drive into the joke lap to Pynan. So trying to mix things up a bit, maybe covering off, but I think more likely just, you know, we've got a couple of laps to go. I'm going to get in there now and get it done. Great shout that, especially with no spotter, to uh, get out ahead of Jensen. And yep. that's Atterblad, who's still yet to joker. So uh, You can watch Atterblad now, so you know if you're within two seconds, although at this point you'll be panicking, because two will feel like three, won't it? It'll feel like all the time in the world. But if you watch that car in front and use it to pull you forward, you know, close like, the gap on Afterblad in every braking zone, chase them down. But that comes with experience, doesn't it? You, yeah. You'll know, you know, the, the Johan Kostopoulos and the Andreas backwards of this world will know what two seconds looks like, and then, oh, yeah, I am in the window, that's fine. Yeah. There's no better feeling than knowing you're catching someone. Yeah. I haven't had it yet. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. Probably in uh, Suzuki Swift when I did those at Silverstone. And also when I had the Super 1600 car against other cars that weren't Super 1600, that was that was good. <laughs> that's cheating though. That was um, what was that the Grand Prix? Yeah. Where they mix all the categories up. Yeah, I used to love doing the Grand Prix. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. I climbed up three finals one year, I think. But uh, very different to these single mate categories, or well, not single mate, but very controlled specifications here. Yulalami. Still yet to joker on this final lap. Turpinen has closed right up to the rear of Atablad. Atablad will go left now into the joker for the final time of asking, and that's going to put Turpinen through to the final. Yelalami coming through, gets out in front. Going to cross the line and take the win. Nicely done. Tell you what, if Turpinen had to get held yeah, sorry, up by Atablad, that would have been uh, even closer. Yulalami made a uh, solid start. Did a great job into the first corner. That was uh, Kinnanen in the red machine. Went to the inside and then looked, just washed out, stuck a wheel in that, that loose in the middle of the circuit and then ended up right on the outside. Looked to the inside, no way through. Yulalami led throughout. This was uh, Turpinen into the Joker mid-race. That was sensible to cover off Jensen. This is Yulalami, who jokered on the last lap and was whew, only just came out ahead of Turpin. And had Turpin not got hurled up behind Atablad, that would have been much, much closer. Nevertheless, though, all of the voltages make it through to the final and Turpin will start on row two of the grid. OK, excuse us for a moment, just uh, sorting a couple of little things up here in commentary. On to cross car. Hukar, Bowdens, Jensen, Anderson, Penton and Brunkvist in this first one. Hukar gets a good start, so does Bowdens alongside. The Latvian slots in behind the pin. Oh, full scene going on in the background, trying to find a way through. Going deep on the brakes around the outside. Massive headway, trying to make headway. Gets up into P4, that's pretty decent out from there. And Bowdens is looking dangerous again. Look at Bowdens' driving style, just a little bit less inputs. Yeah, Bowdens nice, neat and tidy. Hasn't had uh, anything go right this weekend, has he? Ronald has been uh, a tricky weekend for the Latvian. Was on the podium last year. I think he won, didn't he, in, in Riga, his home race. Very different circuit, the Riga track, to uh, here in uh, Nice and Barnum. But Hukar, yet again, making a great start. Just a small wheelie, but nevertheless a wheelie every single time. Oh, great break so by Bowdens there. Well, that's, yeah, isn't it amazing? When you see it from the drone as well, and you see the pace getting sucked out of the car, it's absolutely fantastic. Jensen has jokers on... Uh, Zero as it is the first time round, and is 
time behind. So that's not going to worry Hukart, but Baldins, it's 3.9 behind Baldins. If Jensen gets a wriggle on and Baldins loses a little bit, that could be interesting. Baldins, though, because now the gap's slightly there in the last sector to Hukar. Hukar with the fastest lap of the race so far on a 41.386, so the track is at its cleanest it's been so far today. Yeah, Anderson's in danger, Eric Anderson's in danger, isn't he, from, from Jensen at the back of the pack, unless Jensen catches the trap, as you say, how At the minute Baldings can stay up, he's only got a second space, and he will be saying three for the Delta. Anderson's gone, hasn't he, because... Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying, he's going to get swallowed up. Seven now. How far back is Jensen from the lead? Six point... Oh, okay. So Anderson's in that horrible no-man's land at the moment, can't really affect things going forward will almost certainly get Penton up by uh, so those Penton, behind. Yeah, Penton has come out in front of Jensen. So Penton has gone joking in the background. Baldins again close to the gap down. Hukar spits flame out the back of that car. And some jokers. This is just going to put him down the order. Oh, Baldins is joker as well. So this is going to be to cover off track position from uh, Grunfest, who is yet to joker. Penton and also still behind. So that has basically secured place, uh, Baldins a place in the final. Barring any mistakes, Hal. Yeah, it wasn't it Baldins you jinxed in one of the previous ones. It's not intentional, Andrew. No, I know, mate, I know. It's what seems to have happened. <laughs> he's, getting, he's got the skills. So Hukar, what's the gap for Hukar? Whether Baldins can close that down. He didn't seem to be able to when he was following him. 4.3. When the car disappears from your mirror, sometimes, Hal, he starts freaking out. He's, he's well in. Hukar's well in and he's going to come out in front. Here he comes through. Just back in front of Baldins again, they've got a lap to go. They hard, isn't it? Brookfist has gone joker, so he's slotted out of the traffic jam. Baldins going to book a slot in the final here. Following Hukar down. I want to look the QR code on the Hukar's car. I want to know what that is, Hal. What do you reckon it is? It's a link to something on the internet. What do you reckon? RikuTheKid.com? Maybe so, yeah. I like it. I like it. I wonder if we're going on in the background. I wonder if Vigo flew over it at the same pace. You could use we your could phone use, to take a phone of it on the broadcast. We, are, we do get excited about the most minor of things, don't we? Uh, Riku Hukar breaking down into the heaven at the end of the straight with Ronald's Bowden's behind as they get all crossed up in the fight for P3, but it is about the top two going through. Penton are going to get into third here around the outside. It's a good job by Passy Penton, but the checker flag is falling in the background for Hukar and Bowden's. They go through to the final. Here comes his third place man. Fantastic pass by Passy Penton and shame not to see him in the final. Was it the final he crashed in? Yes, it was, wasn't it, Penton? And with that incredible move around the outside, but not going to see him there. So Hukar and Bowden's from the front row go through. In the words of Henning Salberg, that was a big one for yeah. uh, Passy Penton in yesterday. So uh, great for him to complete this day without such drama. Hukar, though, off the fins in this race, was uh, in a bit of a league of his own, wasn't he? Yeah, certainly was. and Enholm straight out in front. All these drivers are quick though, how sometimes in these six car semis, you see a big gap between the front and the rear of the grid, but I reckon all these are quick enough. Yeah, and Spencer needs them to be, doesn't he? Because now he's taking the joke, he can get the hammer down. 
head down, eyes forward, as uh, Andrew Jordan would say. It's all about trying to close the gap to those ahead. Where is Fenson? There he is. That is uh, Grana that they're behind. And Grana's on the back of Hoon. Hoon doesn't seem to have the pace that he's had so far this weekend. Well, Grana looking for a way past there. And what Svensson needs is these two not to get caught up with each other and slow each other down. Neither of them joker. Or to get caught up with each other off the racing line. How, That's what know? I mean, just, yeah, just, just, just get slow. out of the way. Yeah, <laughs> basically. But Svensson's not there yet. He hasn't got to worry about it until he gets there. We'll get the gaps as they come over the line. Hammerquist leading from Enholm out front. Top two go through. It's fastest after the race so far from Svensson, though, on a 41.5. That's a tenth quicker than race leader Hammerquist. 4.2 back, though, Hal. If I, there's a bit of me, if I was out front, I might chuck him into the Joker just to cover him off. Certainly P2. If I was Enholm, I'd be thinking, go. He's point, what's Enholm's margin on He's uh, three and a half. It would be tight with Enholm that's, at that's the moment. That's what I mean, yes. Yeah, so Enholm's I'd either. stay out. Would you? Well, yeah. I'd hope that he gets caught in traffic as well. I suppose if he catches up to the previous two, the basic with concept of the joke lap, run away as long as you can and try and uh, pull out the ultimate pace. We know how, it's different because Enholm knows how quick he is. It's not like he's trying oh, to... Oh, barrier tap as well, How Sorry to interrupt, but that gives you an idea, doesn't it? And fastest lap again, 41.1. He's going four tenths quicker than uh, either of the front two cars. They've just done their PB laps and he's four tenths up on him. And Enholm's losing a bit of time there. Out of that slow corner behind Hammerquist. 3.8 now. Severson is, uh, Svensson, sorry, is behind the leader. Oh. I don't think this is going to work for Enholm. So Enholm coming round to the merge. Wait and see, does he get out in front of Svensson or not? Svensson will be on the right in the white car. And he's not there. So where's Svensson in the background? Wait for Svensson. Where he's there. there, he's there. So Enholm has just covered off Svensson, despite Svensson putting in those incredible laps. And in fact, Svensson there has done a 42.6. Hal, I reckon he made a mistake. Yeah, he's lost a bit of time there, hasn't 1.5, it's cost him. Maybe cost him a place in the final. Oh, it's gutting after seeing the previous lap, which was an epic effort. I did wonder if that was Enholm trying to get the better of Hammerquist, if neither of them could get ahead of Svensson, but I think that might be what well, is going to be enough for Enholm as it stands. Yeah, but look at Svensson's not given up, comes off the break to roll in a bit closer to the back of Enholm. It's Hammerquist in the Joker. Here he comes, Hammerquist coming out, covers off Enholm just about. So Hume is not going to have enough here, going to get swallowed up by them, but we're going to look at a three-car race here for two positions, and you can see from the nose of Svensson's car, that was straight onto the throttle and go for it. So Svensson in the white buggy, fourth on the road, too far third back. in your picture now. Can he make a little effort? Anybody's 2.1 seconds off the leader, but is he close enough to try and make a move? I think, yeah, I think you're right, Hal. Going to be do or die at the end of the straight, and I think it would be uh, this occasion, it'd be in the gravel trap, wouldn't it? Here comes Hume, Hume's going to go Joker, but it's not going to be enough because there's three cars within 2.6. Defensive in the background from Enholm, oh, crossed up Svensson, oh, he couldn't be closer. Tags in the back of Enholm, up and over the crest round to the right-hand side. Hammer Christ up on the kerbs, out from the Joker lap now, not there. Oh, Svensson tried everything, fought for a way into the semis, made it there, but we'll go no further. It's Hammer Christ who goes through with Enholm. Tell you what, that was also a great run towards the end from whom he yeah. was right in the middle of that fight. Look at how, look at that. So we're looking at 1.5 seconds between the top four cars. That was absolutely brilliant. Spenson's mistake, 1.6, would have been enough to see him win. We, he lost 1.6, admittedly, to his incredible purple lap. But he lost 1.6 on, on, I think, the fourth lap, and that might have been enough to see him win. I'd oh, be gutted, wouldn't he? Didn't see it, did we? No. Yeah, look at the look. That was that's the start of the purple lap. Yeah. Get in. Enholm drove well there as well. Mature performance to um, do the right thing at the right time was very astute in the first quarter. Ooh. It's great, isn't it? It's that's great. A, no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Just held on to it. What a brilliant semi-final! If we get a final that's like that, I'll be over the moon. That was fantastic. Oh. Epic. <sighs> Take a deep breath, Coley. Calm yourself down. Okay. Uh, who went through, mate? <laughs> Was it Hammerquist and then Holm, wasn't it? Yes. 
Alex, man. <laughs> Just ticking off things on my list. I, l I love a banger of a race. It's great. When we have to stretch our legs to keep up with them, that is when it's my favourite job. It really is. So, Thomas Eek, Merstad, Eric Nielsen, Martin Ugar, Jimmy Osterberg, Noel Jorgensen and Noel Eliasson. I don't have my money on any of the top four going through, certainly. Can anyone spring a surprise from the back of the grid? Noel Eliasson has been pretty good this weekend, but Eek Merstad has been exceptional. Eric nilsson has got the better start, though, and shuts the door on Eek Merstad. Osterberg has got up into P3, but he's going to lose out to Ugar here. Ugar's up the inside, contact between all three. Ugar goes round, Osterberg gets clapped, and got to go joking from there. That's game over for the Estonian, unless there's some kind of investigation into what went on. And uh, a bit I, of carnage, Hal. I think if it was investigated, he probably would end up on the worst end of the stick because he was on the inside, breaking late, forcing yeah. the issue. But uh, I don't think it was really anyone wholly to blame again. It was... Uh, Maximum attack, go yeah. go. See a gap, go for it. All right, OK. So... All of that... Um, fighting has really helped Eric Nilsson here. Just gapped uh, Merstad that little bit. Noel Eliasson run, running third, right on the back of Merstad. So who's jokered? Osterberg jokered on lap one. We'll get some uh, gaps on the timing screen in the next few seconds as they cross the line. Nilsson is 1.9 ahead of Eliasson. Osterberg, who's jokered, is four seconds down. So if Osterberg gets a wriggle on, he could get Definitely back get in the mix Merstad, here. Couldn't he? He's, he's 3.2 off Merstad in, in uh, second place. So Osterberg's kind of... In the hunt for the final. Yeah, tricky start, let's say. Where is he off the back of... Uh, you know, he's closing on the back of Jorinsen. Good to see the battle for uh, fourth on track. Because at the moment, it's Osterberg who is of most interest in the fight for... There is Osterberg. Yes, yes, so, yeah. Uh, cars have joked, and Osterberg's going to come through, what, third on the road, I think, now? So we'll be able to see his gap, plus 4.0. So it's Osterberg... And three versus, seconds on Merstad. Yeah, it's Osterberg versus Merstad. 3.2 is the gap at the moment. Well, 3.1 just about. So the red car in P2, Thomas Inc. Merstad, and Yimmy Osterberg in the uh, blue car with the yellow flashes on it, who is in P3. Watch for him in the background. This is the gap coming down the straight. There it is. What's it going to be this time round? Osterberg's got clear air in front. Is Ike Merstad going to go this time? No, the leader goes. So Nilsson's gone. That will definitely cover off. Maybe a little bit wide from Osterberg. Up in the turn. Comes through. So Osterberg will see in front of him. Nilsson. And this is where the spot is so important, because the spotter can say, don't worry about Nilsson. That's not who our race is with. Our race is with... 3.1, Hal. Oh, this is going to be tight, isn't it? It's going to be ultra tight. There's a lap and a bit to go. So if you must add now, if you must add spotted, you keep him out and tell him you need to go yeah, like go hell. again. You too, need to take too, out another too, lap. Too risky now. 3.1's too close. That's how Ridge. I'm inclined to agree with him. So is it panic stations and you go and you risk it? Do you think you've done the perfect lap this time round? No, he doesn't. He's going to go standard lap. You can just tell from the attitude of the car. So... Eek Merstad's place in the final is on the line on this last lap. Look at that. Smokes the tyres up on the way in. Flames from the back of Nilsson as he lifts and flicks the car the other way. Osterberg still hunting. What's the gap? It was 3.1. It's 2.6. Osterberg's got him at this point. So Osterberg. Jimmy Osterberg really pushing hard. Osterberg had done the fastest lap of the race so far. Up until that point, you guys just nicked that off him. Osterberg went quicker. Again, Nilsson also on a big charge, and Nilsson's actually helping drag Osterberg along here, and you can see how much the gap has closed down between the race leader and Osterberg, who's a third car in your shot there. Into the Joker entry goes Tom Ingmerstad. He'll know it's close. We think it's not enough for him. It's a good Joker, but watch the standard lap. And there they are, your top two go through. Osterberg is right on the back of Nilsson. It's a great drive by both these two sideways celebrations over the line for Eric Nilsson. But going to spot in the final with Jimmy Osterberg. And that is fantastic. Nilsson from P2 on the grid. Osterberg from P4. They are the final two who go through to the final. Hukar, Baldis, Hammerquist, Enholm, Nilsson and Osterberg will fight it out for the cross-car win in round two. That's going to be a hell of a final, isn't it? That's the first uh, pole sitter from any of the semi-finals so far today that hasn't made it through to... Uh, oh, that was a lot of contact there. Osterberg recovered so well from this. So Osterberg's the blue car in the middle. 
Yeah. Literally in the middle, being yeah. squeezed up in the air. Was stuck on Merstad. That's Yugar that spun on the inside. Osterberg jokered to get out of the melee. This is Nilsson jokering. This was a shoot from Nilsson spotter as well. Get in and out. Back into second. You're guaranteed to place in the final there. Even yeah, exactly. if you, even if it's, you yeah. back into the yeah. guy behind. And then this was finally the joker from Ike Merstad, who uh, Vigo was following. Of course he was. Um, and through comes Nilsson. Into, look at the flames from the back of the 34. Look at that. Every gear shift. That is the kind of cross car gear shift I want. Ah, oh, can see me ordering a cross car. How? What do you reckon? What should I get? We discussed this yesterday, didn't we? I just want one with flames, really. Did I ever tell you about the time I wiped my ECU in uh, SA in France in the European Championship? Because we it made lots of popping and banging my Clio Super 600, and we needed to stop that. So I wiped the map. Well, you wiped it to stop the popping and banging. No, no, by mistake. Oh, I was going to say. Oh, okay. that was I was horrified, Hal, for a second. I was going to remove you from I don't know, all sorts of things. Um, <laughs> Simon Tiger and Victor Johansson on the front row. Kenneth Kong and Bjorn Sturer on row two. Derek Tohill at the back of the grid. Tohill's been working on that car all weekend. He hasn't got the results he wants yet in terms of the handling. We know he knows how to drive it, so he's just got to see what he can do, see if he can scratch away into the final. Top three from each of those will go through. Reigning champion Victor Johansson goes in front of the previous season champion Simon Tiger. And these cars are all too big to be doing what they're doing, but that's what we love about it. <laughs> that is what we love about it. They're they, but they're not what they appear, are they? You know, it's not a Mercedes E30, or 190, sorry. It's a, oh, Derek's spun. Oh. They've been struggling with uh, second gear in the uh, power delivery. Good recovery there. It's BMW E30, of course it's BMW E30 that Simon Tiger's driving. But there's very little BMW E30 left in it. Probably the doors and perhaps maybe the roof. Oh, that's... Kenneth Kong's got yeah. a problem. So Kong's out. So Tohill needs to keep going. Oh, is Kong still going? Yes, Kong gets the car started again. Derek can see that while we're trying to hunt that down. Box for the neutrals, I think, for uh, Kenneth Kong. Which is a misnomer, isn't it? You can't have a box for the neutrals. Um, no. Still a good saying. Simon Tiger's car. Look at it. It's just, look at, it just looks... I know, it looks really pliable, doesn't it? It just looks not, not easy to drive, that's not what I mean, but it looks quite forgiving. Yeah, and Victor Hansen's car never looks that way in, by comparison, but it's, it's super quick as well, which proves there's more than one way to, uh, to I mean, achieve the same goal. <laughs> in fact, he is another saying there, weren't you? They weren't sure whether, he's, whether you're really allowed to say on the telly. Um, so, uh, I'm sure it'd be fine, it's just some people would misread it and you'd get people, you'd get people telling well, you off. Well, it depends if Esme's watching or not, because she's quite fond of cats. <laughs> Esme being Hal's on the half. Yeah. I'm sure she's not. <laughs> <laughs> Hal got a notification yesterday, didn't she, that Esme had spent an obscene amount of money on the cats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, brilliant. Hi, Esme. Hope you're good at home. Um, will she be watching? No. <laughs> OK, Simon Tiger leads from Johansson. Johansson looked two seconds back, just keeping it tidy. The setups on those cars couldn't be more different, neither could the tech that's inside them. Just amazing. Johansson's uh, pulled a bit of a blinder here by jokering early and uh, is closing on to uh, Tiger. Tiger does have the best lap, but Johansson was quicker in the uh, first sector. Listen to them. Oh, everything out there sounds like it's got too much power. I'm not complaining, but it does dust, doesn't it? Tiger's just done a purple lap just to uh, disprove me on the, the pace front, but I don't think the 2.3 is going to be enough unless Simon has an absolutely enormous lap now. Johansson will just be pleased that today's gone a bit better than yesterday because he had a tough day yesterday. It's almost the curse of being the reigning champion, wasn't it, that, yeah. uh, that Simon Tiger suffered all of last season? He did indeed, didn't he? final yesterday. It'd be good to see Tiger versus Johansson, wouldn't it, in the final, the two previous champions going at it properly today. Yeah, especially with the pace that Tiger's got. Not quite uh, as quick that time around. 1.9, so Johansson's just done a much better lap than Tiger did, although not as quick as Tiger's best during the race. But this isn't going to be enough for Tiger to take the race win unless something happens to Johansson in the next couple of corners but uh, they are miles ahead of the rest of the pack. 
hear the transmission chatter yeah, as he locks off on the brakes. Get it on the way down, yeah, you can hear it when it's late. And in the car, he'll be hearing that too. Tiger's trying hard in the Joker. Where's Johansson on the exit? Oh, he's in front, but not by as much as we thought. So 1.9, 2.5 might have been enough, but 1.9 was not. Johansson wins from Tiger. Is Stur going to go through? Let's see who's in P3. We need to see P3, because that'll tell us who's going to go through to uh, the semi-final. And it is Stur. Nice one. So Bjorn Stur making it through in the board focus in P3. Didn't have semi-finals yesterday because not enough of the cars were running. Kenneth Kong misses out after, uh, as Hal said, a box full of neutrals and Tohill. I'm not aware he's Derek. Is he still out there? Showing us a lap down, so maybe he's pulled it in. No, he's still going. He's, he's still, still out there. Right. across the finish line now from the commentary box window. The rear wings on these cars are epic, aren't they? Maybe, like, that's, maybe that's what adding, Derek needs. They keep so, adding more bits to them, don't let's, they? Let's go see Derek and just say, look, mate, we've figured it out. You need some mud flap material the nailed to the back it's of your spoiler. Yeah, it's the aero. You just need a, a, a what is it, a gurney, isn't it? A gurney flap but sticking up at the back it's there. Not, like that's that. not a gurney flap, is it? It's like a gurney wall. Well, they, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And also you need only three wheels on the ground in the corners. That is a weapon, isn't it? Not quite enough of a weapon in this one because last year's winning weapon of Victor Johansson has taken the win in uh, semi-final number one. Going through with Tiger and Bjorn Stewart from uh, fourth on the grid going up to P3. Semi two. Front row, Jorgen Sieverson, Simon Engsvig. Row two, Morton Bertelson and Michael Person. And I think Marcus Norman's missing. Halley had an issue, didn't he, in the last one? He thought potentially a misfire with the rotary engine. And uh, was he there? No, he's not there, is he? So four cars, only one's not going to make it. Engsvig and Sieverson on the front row. Sieverson going to get the inside line. Engsvig going to try and hold on around the outside. He'll think better. It's different. Oh, and there comes across the inside. They all cover that inside line. Pretty sensible, isn't it? And into the Joker lap uh, goes Michael Pearson on this first lap. Good move by him. Tell you what, it's great to have Norwegians competing uh, again with uh, Severson and Ensvig. We're going to Norway again, of course, this year in uh, in Rally X and. The Rally X scene in Norway, or Rally Cross scene, is very strong. So hopefully we get more Norwegians competing in Rally X. We couldn't, in the first year we did, uh, you and I did this in 2020. They couldn't cross the border. There was a real issue crossing the yeah. border. That continued into 21, and that's yeah. why some of the Norwegians didn't come. Well, COVID, just, just for clarity, it was, yeah. uh, Norway was super strict on who could come in and out. And, uh, it's like a different, it's like a long lost memory, isn't it? How I difficult travel was it. back I then. Was hopefully we get more Norwegians now, because uh, there's so many wonderful, rear-wheel drive and two-wheel drive cars up there in Norway. I think we could have a strong entry in, in Tjur next time out. We'll have a strong entry in, in Kovala because uh, the Finns will be out in force, I'm sure. And then, uh, yeah, in Norway, I think uh, Grenland will be pretty special. And of course, I think it's a blinder for Rally X to finish the season in Ilias. Because everyone wants to race in Ilias, yeah. including me. Yeah. Well, I need your help, so you can't race there, I'm afraid. The chances of me ever finishing any of my cars is so slim anyway that uh, would you? Well, yeah, what would your cars be legal for in this championship? I could do open two-wheel drive with a clear, but it would be so well, epically off the pace. Yeah, well, it's two-litre now. Who cares if it's off the pace if you're having fun? You'd yes, want to be on the yes, pace, wouldn't you? You'd just end up spending all, all the money, wouldn't you, to get back on the pace? Well, as we discussed yesterday, once you've raced a supercar, it's very difficult to be drive around slowly and something else. Right. So, yeah. Just race a supercar in Helios. Okay, that sounds like a great idea. Would you mind if I deserted you then? No, do, honestly, act, do you what, mate? If you've got a supercar drive at Helios, I'd be over the moon and I'd, I'd love commentating on it. It'd be absolutely brilliant. But let's face it, I'll be in the commentary box, so it's not even worth talking about. Well, you, you never know. <laughs> Unless I can find some budget to rent Ollie O'Donovan's Ford Focus off him, because that would be epic to take that car to uh, Helios. Well, let me put it this way, mate. If I got the budget to race a supercar, you'd be on your own. See you later. I wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't even think twice. No, I would. I do enjoy this side of it, but I'd, I'd rather be out on track. So if I, if I, I know that neither of us are going to get the budget to do that, so nah, we may so as well, we'll, we'll uh, be keep here. dreaming. But at least you all know at home that we'd still want to, still like it. All right. I'm, I, Rallycross is growing on me. Yeah, yeah, me too. 
Me too. Uh, Severson has got a 7.2 second lead. It's outrageous. Ensfix's pace has been really uh, Yo -yo. inconsistent this weekend. I yeah. wonder if he's carrying a, an intermittent problem. Yeah. Because sometimes he's right there and setting, setting the pace, and sometimes uh, not. Well, Severson then is going to end up on the front row with Victor Janssen. Still a lap to go. But got the Joker in, so uh, just to... And that's what you should do. That's what we were talking about with Oliver Erickson yesterday, wasn't it? That you should always joker early with yeah. that sort of margin. Because if you get a puncture now, you can probably drag it home. Whereas if you've got a puncture and still need to get through the joker, then you're leaving yourself up for... Uh, yeah, keep the door shut, can't you? And losing out. In 5.1 seconds up the road, Alex, you can almost get two, as in the background person comes in fully on the lock stops. Not two rear punctures, though. That would no, be that, would be, that would be too much like hard work. But uh, Severson absolutely lights the flag. Great drive. A couple of corners to go, and we'll be on the front row for the open two-wheel drive final later on. Domination. Smashed it. Severson with the win. Engsvik going to take P2. Bertelsen going to go through from P3. Ensvig got the better of the starts, didn't he? And was uh, alongside Severson, but uh, Severson nice and tidy on the inside in the battle of the Norwegians. Forced Ensvig out wide, really out wide. Stuck a wheel into the, uh, almost into the bank. And that was that. So I think we heard supercars warming up, Hal. I mean, and I'm pretty sure we're going to see supercars before supercar lights. Am I right? Are they on the grid? Yes, because, because of the of recharge the time yeah. for Franks' RX2 e car. Yeah, and because the Pro Am final versus Pro final, etc. So, supercar semi finals coming up. Don't go anywhere. Has Franks qualified for the Pro? Uh, we don't I've know that the, yet. I've got the we, grid. No, we can't know that yet because he has to do the semis first. True. So, we need to. Do, uh, yeah, this is probably supercar semis then. Well, he's, no, because no, the grid first AM comes from the intermediate classification. So, he is in yes, the AM final, whether course. he makes the pro final. But so, he'll do, they'll do semis, yeah. then a gap, then pro final, the AM final, then a gap, then pro final. Cool, yeah, he could be doing a lot of charging, couldn't they? If only someone had thought to have battery packs that you could stick into an electric car, eh? Okay, this should be fun. Uh, we're going to water under the bridge, are we? Can we see that? Let's, uh, if we, if we take it's all water under the bridge at this stage. It is. Is it for dust, maybe, for visibility? Backward was saying yesterday that he hadn't had the greatest of starts with um, the visibility issues. There's a good example of Christofferson's roof. See the white in the front of it? That's just the same as his World Rx car, whereas Vabies is all blue from memory. Yeah, and it's just enough for us and the spotters, crucially, to be able to ID the two cars separately in a pack, especially when there's dust and so on. But yeah, I think a good one is always mirrors, um, rear wing and roof, you know, if, you, if you're going to go full house on it. Backward with a pretty cool livery. Look, it's the JC wallpaper in the background of Monster Energy. Of course, the uh, races with the RX Cartel, backed by Monster Energy in Nitro. P2 in the series this year. I like the shadow wrap. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. It's like um, I liked Patrick O'Donovan's livery in uh, Lytton Hill the other week, which was, you know, not his season livery. That was test spec almost, wasn't it? Mate, carbon livery with his decals on it. I'm all over it. I'm here for it. Semi-final number one, your lineup on the pole. Five-time world champion Johan Christofferson. Next to him, Andreas Bakkerud. Well capable of a brilliant result here if we get to a good start. Victor Franks on row two with Bolevsky. Franks has qualified way ahead of where he should in that car. He's done a brilliant job. Cal Award into the semi-finals with Stefan Christensen. But I'd expect this to be between Christofferson, Bakkerud, Bolevsky and Franks really at the front end. Oh, it's a good start by the front row. Bolevsky going to be able to shut the door. Christensen coming from the back row immediately. Backward around the outside of Joran Christophson. Christophson going to try and hold tight, but he can't. Backward slots the Audi to the inside. Little nudge from the rear from the five-time world champion. Johan not going to go joker now because the traffic behind him be too slow. He's had a bit of luck there because immediately I think Christensen's gone off to the joker. Smoke from the back of Johan's car. That might be from contact tyres rubbing on it. It's Bolevsky in P3, Victor Franks in P4, and Cal Ward in P5. Christofsson got a big old shot from Yuri Bolevsky during turn two. Christofsson had a nibble at Bakkerud, and then Bolevsky took a bite out of the back of Christofsson. That's the bodywork on the rear of the polo. The bumper's tucked under the rear wheel, I think, looking from here. We can hear them out of the coverage box window going over the jump. Bakkerud's pulling quite a margin. 
Back group with a great first lap. Look, there's only that one braking zone. How, if you look at it at the end of the straight, it's kind of diagonally towards the apex from about the middle of the road is the clean piece of track. Remember, the front row makes such a massive difference when you get to the final, so you want to be winning your semi. There's only two semi-finals. Christopherson sideways through the last corner. The gap is up to 1.3, very nearly 1.4 seconds. Andreas Backward has uh, got party mode on, I reckon. He's on it. Christopherson can't joke 3.8 seconds, the gap between Backward and Victor Franks. So that's two and a half. Christopherson would come out ahead of Franks, but only just. I think he'll wait. He well, has he, to wait, he, he has he, to wait. He needs to be nearer to backward anyway, does he? He's got a nail on a couple of perfect laps to try and get close. Backward makes a mistake there. You'll lose a tiny bit of time, it was 1.4. Nobody jokers, including Franks, so Christensen and Ward are, are kind of out of this now. They're far enough back. Christensen might be affecting if Franks could go or not, and that, that might mean Franks stays out, which affects whether or not Johan goes. There is a degree of Christensen uh, and Ward both saving the car because they also want to compete in the AM final, which they've already qualified for a little bit later this afternoon. Christofsson Closer, three tenths, Hal. That's that mistake, I reckon, in the hairpin the backwards coming up to now. He went deep on the lap before. Watch if he goes deep this time round. I don't think he'll make the same mistake twice, and he doesn't. But Christofsson is getting closer. Joker. Now he goes joker. Christofsson thinks the window's open behind him. Is he going to get out in front of Bolevsky? I don't think he will. Bolevsky should still beat him to it. He does. Now he needs Yuri to get a wiggle on, because if he costs him time back, we'll stretch that gap again. It was 1.1, remember, when Christofsson hit the joke lap. I think Backward might respond immediately. What do you reckon? That's a risk from Tommy Christofsson to send uh, Johan in there and put him into the traffic, because uh, Yuri could easily make a mistake or get a punch or something, and that's immediately going to back Christofsson up in their fight for being on the front row in the final. Wonder if they ought to have gone for another lap. Will Bolevsky go this time around and get out of Christofsson's way? He's already losing time. Backwards going into the Joker. So backward response. Bolevsky goes to the doors open for Johan. Watch the merge. Here comes Andreas backward. I think he's got enough. He has. Comes out in front of Johan. A very similar margin. So Christofsson might try and stick a pass on him. The problem for me, Hal, is the end of the straight is filthy. It's about as dusty as it's been, and there really is only the one line on the brake. So You'd have to be so close. He'd have to get the most epic exit from this corner to try and stick a move on backward. I think KMS should have waited a lap, really, with Johan there and sent him in to still mix up the strategy, but get ahead, that bit ahead of Bolevsky and hope that Bolevsky follows you in. Might have been a chance then to stick a, a perfect lap in. Backward just got to keep it tight on this apex on the left-hand side. Johan's so Johan good on the brakes there. Yeah, he gives you, he's good at him, the end of both straights, isn't he? Gives him a little nudge to let him know he's there. Into the left now, Johan's there again. Through the left-hander, Andreas Baccarin wins semi-final number one, will be on the front row, pushing Christofferson back. That's a fantastic result for the Norwegian. It means that Johan's going to have to fight even harder to try and get a win here. And Pilevski gets P3. Victor Branks doing well to hold on to fourth. Whoa. Baccarin made a great start. Equal with Christofferson, and then look at the attitude of the car. Gave it a bit of an Ericsson-style throw there. You need to try and get back as far inside as you can to maintain, look look at the attitude of the Audi. Christofferson's already rotated to the Polo as well. Andreas is well past Christofferson. Christofferson's on the outside, well in the brakes, comes back to the inside, bit of rubbing with backward, and there's Bolevsky in the rear quarter of the Polo. Yeah, well, cost him half a second, didn't it? That's right there's in the, the bumper back corner. Tucked in. Lucky not to get a puncture when that sort of thing happens, especially if there's a sharp edge on the bumper. Backwards awareness in turn one of, of the uh, of the gap, Hal, and by, by the gap I mean the six inches between him and Johan. Reminded me of the two cross cars yesterday. I think it was the, the in the cross car junior. Yeah. Was it Hallinan rotating the car around the front on the Joker merge with just enough room to make sure there wasn't any contact? And, and backwards judgment in turn one was brilliant. Just throwing it in but with just enough room. Christopherson then would have liked to have looked to the inside, but backwards done such a good job of pitching it in that he was pointing his nose at the apex already, and there was nowhere to pass. And because you're get to Joker, you can afford just to back the pack up so Andreas can stand on the brakes and, and risk losing a bit of time there because everyone else is going to inevitably lose time behind you anyway. Great job, Andreas Backer wins semi-final number one from Johan Christofferson and Yuri Bolevsky. Semi two coming up. Front row, Kevin Eriksson and Ulrich Linnemann. Row two, Ola Christian Baby and yesterday's winner, Peter Hedstrom. Row three, Maiko Tam and Morten Schnack. Ericsson can't go sending on the inside line. He might keep it tight. 
Hoffman home from a stake from Linneman. Linneman's got the better start on the run to the first corner. Oh, Hedstrom's moving in, squeezing on Baby, but he gets a little tap from behind from Tam. Ericsson does go sideways, just a little knock for Linneman. Linneman could get hung out to try it here from Baby. Tries to go around the outside, he's inside. Ericsson into turn two, not enough. Baby going to try and pass him as well, and Baby just gets through. So OC Baby going through, and it is our four fastest cars we've gone. And how they've had a right result because the two slower cars have both gone choker. Tam and Schnack mean, oh, Hedstrom, look at this. Almost alongside Linneman up the straight. That Hyundai is rapid, but any of these cars can choker right now because the slow traffic's gone. Linneman tried hard, didn't need to go around the outside of two and then have the inside of a three, but Baby was able to capitalize. Fair play to Ulrich for backing out of that. Look at the attitude of the Honda of leader Ericsson landing from that jump. Oh, Lenneman closes right onto the back of OC Baby on the brakes. Baby's going to joke it this time around. So Baby goes in immediately. I don't think anyone will follow him with four laps to go. They'd be mad if they do. They haven't. Over the crest and in front. Has he got Hedstrom already? No, no sorry, Hedstrom's, Hedstrom's gone through. Sorry, yeah. With, so Hedstrom in front with Lenneman. They're 2.3 off the back of Ericsson. Baby's gone, so 4.8. So at the minute, Baby would, would come out just in front of Lenneman, which was where he went in. Um, but he, if he can nail a couple of good laps, Halley, he should be able to just gap them a little bit. So this fight has been Hedstrom and Linneman for a place in the final, assuming that Baby can close on the back of them and get back ahead when the Jokers play out. Ericsson's got that little gap. Will he Joker now and cover off Baby? I don't think he will. It's not like having Christofferson behind. They'll, they'll be confident that they've got a bit of pace on Baby. Hedstrom's gone. 2.3 shouldn't be enough to keep him in front of Baby. Baby gets Hedstrom immediately. Hedstrom can't tell you what Tam's coast I thought he'd be. Tam's bang on it, he's right on the back of Hedstrom, who won yesterday. So Hedstrom, are, were they covering Tam off? Kevin Erickson with the fastest lap of the race so far, so he is checking out up front, fastest last time around. Linneman on a charge now to try and make sure he gets out ahead of Hedstrom, but also this fight between Hedstrom and Tam. Breaking zone at the end of the straight, Baby comes through the dust, he's jokered. In front of him, the last two cars have got another two opportunities to do so. Linneman in P2, Ericsson in P1. 4.9 between Baby and the leader, so Ericsson's under no threat. But it's only 2.6 between Linneman and Baby, so at the minute... This fight's between uh, Linneman and Hedstrom, the Hedstrom-Tam battle, isn't it? Yeah. Wait, what's the gap there? How far back is it? Oh, uh, Four-ish seconds. So the Hedstrom's managed to gap uh, Tam a little bit. He's closing on the back of Baby. I wonder if Baby's got... Something going on. Oh, there's a yeah, misfire. misfire. Baby's got a misfire. Oh, it's a problem for Baby. Baby going not oh, flame out big time at the end of the straight from the commentary position. Baby's car has just dumped everything onto the track. Here comes Ericsson from the Joker lap. Oh, he comes out just behind Linneman, but Linneman's got a Joker yet. So Kevin Ericsson into P2, but with uh, a Joker in hand. Yet more great awareness oh. from Ericsson. He's gone past him. Whoa. He's gone past him on the straight, just whipped it off to the left-hand side and passes him. Yet more great spotting from Oli Ericsson, knowing that the risk in Baby had gone. Get Kevin in and out because Baby's problem might have cured itself. He might still have that pace, so they can risk losing track position to Lineman, and then Kevin passes him anyway. So it makes no difference. Brilliant stuff. Fantastically committed. Oh, the Baby's parked it all the way up in the gravel like a jet. He's got it off the racing line. Kevin Erickson through the right-hander. Yesterday he was on the podium. Can he go a bit better today? P3 yesterday, he wins his semi, puts him on the front row. Can he get the win here? P2 goes to Hedstrom, yesterday's winner. P3, Linneman qualifies for the final. So Linneman can run in both the Pro and the Am finals if he wants to, because he's in the Am category. Is he the only Am driver to make the final? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yeah, Christopherson, Backward and Bolevsky all down as pros. Kevin is as well. Hedstrom. Yeah, yeah, so Linneman is the only AM driver. And we say AM. Look, Linneman is not an AM driver, you know, but he, he, he's, uh, he hasn't won a, a, a major event recently, so that's how they get seeded for it. So effective, you know, if you're a bit of a weapon with results recently, you have to run in pro. And uh, coming third in the semi means he can go into that pro final but he can also run in the Amon as well. This is Hedstrom. Look, Hedstrom's, I think Hedstrom did okay too. So look, we've got, that's some lineup for the final. This is, uh, this is what you saw out of the commentary box window. We're just going to pan around to look it now. It. Boom. Oh, that's um, not good, is it? No, and it was from, uh, it was when you said misfire and I looked over my left shoulder and it, it flamed out big time from under the sump guards. Just, yeah, something in there is very broken.
or not in there anymore. Yeah, probably down the straight somewhere. I don't know. Pistons, big ends, who knows? Probably just a bunch of fluid. Uh, oh, look, look at that. Look Kevin at that. was so close to his tyres on the left hand side. <laughs> he was. Go on, Kevin. Andreas Backard and Kevin Eriksson on the front row for the final. Hedstrom will be on row two with Johan Christofferson. He beat Johan yesterday. You don't want to get that one back. And then Belevsky's going to be on the back row with Ulrich Linnemann. Oh, I feel for Eze Baby. What a rubbish weekend he's had. Yeah, it just hasn't quite gone according to plan, has it? That sums it up, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Look at the state of the front of the car as well. Not dialed. That's the sign of a uh, despondent driver, isn't it? Just stood stock still. He's going to put his lid in there. No, he's going to hold on to that, is he? Might be knocking it into neutral. There's our local commentator, top man. If he's got electric uh, power steering, it'll need ignition on to uh, be able to use the steering to get it onto the flatbed. Otherwise, you risk the untold damage. Well, you could tell what the damage is, but it would be a lot. I think this car might be stuck in drive of some kind because they're struggling to get it on the bed, but it's probably got a strong winch. I'm sure they'll have it tidied up very soon. That is uh, Lucas Anderson. You can't quite see through the window, but the 15-year-old, yes, 15, who won on his light debut yesterday here at Nissan Barnum. Stepping up from Crosscar Junior, straight to, slams the door. He's going to want to make sure he's got the door firmly closed up in Turn 1, because yesterday took his first win, and today took his first TQ. Nearly ready to go. Looking out of the Conjure Box window, they're just recovering. I don't see Baby's car back. Hard to sit in a racing car on the start line. This is where the spotter comes into their own as well because they can give the information. Yep, they're just recovering the car now. Yep, they're coming off because it's difficult to sit there with the engine running. You've psyched yourself up and then you've got to wait and wait and you don't know how long you're waiting for and you do you need to be ready or not so the spotter can give you all of that information and it, and it really helps. And you're 15 and you've never been on the pole before. You know what I mean? No, it's all new experiences. I mean, you've been on the pole in junior cross car, but still, Olofsson alongside him, one of the most experienced drivers in this category, and yeah, expert Steinholt, it, and it just, yeah. Pressure coming. At the end of a, end of a weekend, Hal, you see the tyre marks all down the side. You also see the teams who've had a bit of time to get things reprepped, and... Uh, Steinholt teams have been pissy this weekend, have yeah. they? It's a semi-final one. Two semis, Anderson, Olofsson, Exbeth, Steinsolt, and Ida Tornholt at the back. Top three go through. So if Anderson wins this, we'll be on pole for the finals, the top qualifier. If he gets P2, if Olofsson gets the better of him, and he moves out to the right immediately, that's a good move to try and get a bit of track coverage. In the background, it's absolute carnage. Contact there between Exbeth, Steins, Holt in the background, and now Exbeth's a bit of a passenger across the gravel on the outside. Olofsson stays out. Steins, Holt got through in turn two, and, and Anderson advantage, basically. Broken steering, I'd say, for Exbeth, of the way the car was behaving there on the exit of the first corner. Rattled the barrier so hard, I think it pushed one of the posts back, didn't it? It was a lot of uh, damage to the wall there. Good start, though, from Steins, Holt to uh, gain that position. 
But up front, it's all about this kid, isn't it? I was going to say about this man, but he's not. He's a kid, Lucas Anderson, and uh, look at the clean line going up the hill, pulling a margin on Steinsholt, who is really experienced in rally cross in 1600 cross cars. Done a couple of seasons down in lights, isn't he, Steinsholt? Yeah. But not as much experience as Olufsen behind, who is, is potentially one of the, if not the most experienced lights driver. Is that fair? Yeah, been at it the longest, hasn't he? Been yeah. there since the start, really into the 10th year of racing supercar lights. He was there in the uh, inaugural season in, in the Rally X and the Swedish Championship back in 2014. That's when drivers like Kevin Eriksson, Kevin Hansen were racing back then and look what they've gone on to achieve. Simon Olofsson have still worked so hard to continue in this class, has never had the budget to step up and uh, do something else was so pleased to win that championship last year. Someone's got an awful misfire. I think it might be Ida Tornholt, who's running fourth. Olufsen can't joke at the moment because Tornholt's close enough. She's only two and a half seconds off the back. You can hear the misfire, actually, off camera. There's not a lot to choose between the leaders. Anderson had done the best lap. Now Steinsholt's done the best lap a tenth quicker. And Olufsen's matched Anderson's best lap, basically. Less a couple of hundreds. So, uh, Olufsen and Steinsholt could swap places here, couldn't they, in terms of tactics? But you'd fancy Anderson holding on to this from here. With only a couple of laps to go, Hal, I, I think Olufsen will go if Steinsholt doesn't. Um, yeah, you've got to mix it up a little bit, haven't you? I think so, really, yeah. Anderson doesn't. And does Olufsen. Uh, okay, Steinsholt goes. So Olufsen stays out. Now I think Olufsen will hold on to the end of the race. And unless he absolutely smashes the sectors here, you'll want two laps, won't you, to try and try and give yourself a bit more breathing space. He looked quicker, marginally. Yeah, I wonder why you give up track position there for a second when there's no danger behind. Especially if Olison looks quicker. And Anderson's gone fastest anyway, so I don't think there was any danger, barring an issue for Anderson of him being caught on pure pace because they were all so equal. It wasn't like the guys behind had a, a good advantage. 2.7 was the gap. If Olufsen goes now, there's not enough time, so I think stay out. Anderson goes. I can understand that, because Anderson's looking not to lose the lead. Olufsen's gone too. I think that's too soon. Olufsen, I think, should have waited another lap, and I think Steins will get him in the background. He does. Uh, I think one more lap now, personally. Yeah. But, I mean, because he could have worked. Get, yeah, like, especially with Anderson gone, in terms of clear visibility, etc. Anderson was going to win this. I think, yeah, there we go. It's easy for us to say, you know, we've Super got timing easy, screens yeah. in front of us, beautiful pictures, we can see everything. The other spotters are stood up on a bank somewhere with a and stopwatch. No pressure, we can say, oh, I do this. No, but this we yeah. don't really have to think about it. No, you don't no. have to, it's not the same. No. I but know so many drivers who say spotting is so much worse. There's so much well, pressure being a spotter. You were there when Graham Rodemark asked me if I'd spot for Ollie Bennett, weren't you, at Lynn Hill? I'm, I'm, unfortunately or fortunately, because I would not have enjoyed the pressure of that with the pressure of driving anyway. Uh, I couldn't do it. So Anderson going to take this. Yesterday's winner, today's top qualifier goes through to pole in the final. Well, Henry Steinsholt going to get row two. Simon Olofsson going to get row three. So they're in the final. Get another crack at it. Olofsson could maybe got P2 there, but either way, into that final. Here's the start. Yeah, the schedule for the day meant I couldn't do it. And Graham, I think, we, yeah, he thought it was hilarious that I might have to do it and it was going to be all pressure. Oh, look at that. It was boom. Heavy hit. I wonder how XPS bumper got the other side of the wall when it never cleared it. Found a gap somewhere. This is Steinsholt jokering early. Did work out for him in the end, to be fair, so uh, that tactic did play to their advantage. Anderson jokering with barely a mark on the car so far. The rest of them look like they've been pebble dashed. Olufsen had a bit of a nibble into Steinsholt, but uh, there was no way through. And it ended pretty much as it started following the first couple of corners. Anderson took the win with a 3.57.8. A good margin over Steinsolt in the end, but I'd have been saving the car a little bit if I was Steinsolt and Olofsson towards the end, ready for the final later on this afternoon.
Semi-final number two. Chip car lights. Caspi Anson, he's a short fist. Oskarsson, Henland and Haug. Good start by hook fist on the outside line. They try and squeeze across on Caspi Janssen. Janssen, though, has got that inside line and gets back to the whole shot. Henland trying to come in the This is damage limitation for uh, Martin Enlund now, isn't it? Trying to get back into the final, having broken the suspension twice right at this moment. Or well, this point on the circuit, the right rear suspension twice has been in that wall today. Now he's having a look at Matt Oscar just going up the straight. Ashby Anson under pressure from uh, Hookvist to uh, round wide in the open corner. This has had some great pace so far this weekend and ultimate lap time. Getting experience now in Rallycross Isaac, isn't he? Raced in RX2E last year, did the Lights Championship in uh, Rally X to get with Hedstrom Motorsport. Now he's doing his own thing again. And uh, has been impressive. It's so close at the top, isn't it, between the uh, the top guys. You can count Anderson in that now, Janssen, Olufsen. There's so little to choose between the lap times. I'd so like to see a few more Lights cars out. Yeah, so there's plenty I, yeah. of them out there. And, um, yeah, we did... Yeah, I just think that there's, a, there's a lot of quick drivers. Come on, bring your cars out. What are you doing? This is great. Yeah, come, come on, have a crack. Interesting one for Caspi Anson, isn't it? You know, after that debut year, he was pretty wild. Then he tidied it all up, won the Nitro NRX Next title immediately. And then this year, Tommy Howman's come and uh, Howman won the Euro Series. Caspi Anson won the American Series. But after some fights with the likes of McGuinness and Cohen, and then Howman went and won the world final. Janssen's clearly very talented, but it's, it's kind of like a band hal, isn't it, in the tricky second album. You win a title in that first major season. That, that was a brilliant performance by Janssen, but exactly what you said about Simon Tiger and Victor Johansson, you, get, you kind of get the curse of the champion, don't you, the expectation that you are going to win it. Yeah, but look how close it is. The last time around, Janssen did a 41-2-6, Shukris did a 41-2-9, Oskarsson did a 41-3-2, and Enland did a 41-6-0, you know, it's just, there's literally nothing to choose between them. So, repeating that sort of performance, as you say, is very difficult. Enland was super sideways in the background on the brakes at the end as we see Hookfist go into the Joker, watch on the right-hand side, see if anybody gets in there. Yep, Oscarson gets through. Enlund Where was Enlund? Joker as yeah, well. Yeah, it was really sideways on the way down. So this is all about Oscarson versus Enland, basically, and Enland needs to try and salvage his uh, weekend, having been on the podium yesterday, I think. Pretty sure he was on the podium yesterday. He's had a bit of a torrid time in uh, qualifying so far today. Yeah, and it was P2 yesterday. It was and Lucas Anderson, Martin Enlund and he's a Hook Of course, yes, yeah, because the, the race went a lap longer than we thought, and uh, Enlund jokered on lap six of a five-lap final. Yeah, and incidentally, that was... Um, that was the locals apparently had, basically the lap counter was wrong because if, the, if they'd got the flag out on the wrong lap the lap counter would still have showed you one lap to go zero laps to go so Enland wouldn't have jokered on the you know on the after the flag clearly so it mustn't have just been the flag it was the lap counter as well so what they did was they let it stand because they'd raced for six laps and the rules say the race goes on until the flag comes out regardless of timing and graphics and all the rest of it um, and as weird said as well oh big mistake Big mistake, so that is, uh, that's going to cost Hunkvist big time. Enlund's going to get him. It was oh, and Oskarsson. Oskarsson. Wow, OK, so it's all going off. Wow. Uh, uh, was Hunkvist behind Oskarsson? He was. So I wonder if Oskarsson, something's happened to Oskarsson and Hunkvist has gone off in uh, retaliation. Kasper Janssen comes through the left hand, they're going to take the win in semi-final number two, books his spot on the front row of the final, P2 goes to Enland, who a minute ago looked like he wouldn't make it, and then Hookfist, who made that big mistake at the end of the straight, he's rescued by a problem for Oskarsson, so everything happened on the last lap, and uh, your top three there will be row one, two and three in the final. So I, th I think Oskarsson did have an issue, and that's what sent uh, Hookfist wide. Lucky escape though. Good start from Hookvist, away from the line. But ran that little bit wide, didn't get turned in early enough really. It grips up there, look at the front pushing on, has a bit of a nudge on uh, Janssen, who ultimately would win. Calm and composed from Janssen on the inside. It's interesting to me, as the, as the weekend goes on, Hal, you see people get more and more, obviously it's, it's a crucial time, they get more sendy in turn one. 
but also more sideless. Uh, it wasn't anything to do with Oscarson. I don't know. So there's two totally separate yeah. incidents. I was just locked up there on the uh, on the way in on the gravel. Yeah, people are getting more sandy in turn one and then realising they can pull it all the way back, aren't they, to the inside line after a big send, as Ericsson's done pretty much since Q1 yesterday. Kevin Ericsson was like, well, I know I can do that. Maybe taking some other people a little bit longer, but you're seeing everybody chuck it into turn one and then just desperately try and get it back across to the inside line. Kevin was so funny. He's like, well, that's just the easiest way. It's great, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. What's the easiest way? The, the most ridiculously sandy way is the most easy way. Right, we're going to let you enjoy some uh, chilled music while this car gets recovered and we get our paperwork together. See you in a minute. Okay, Crosscar Junior. Yesterday, the result was Yulalami, Uito, Hallinan. And today, the top three on the grid are Uito, Hallinan, and Yulalami. See a podium from day one in the top three slots for day two. You then got Victor Christensen in P4, Yoni Tapainen P5, and Axel Schnack in P6. Final bit of clear up going on out on track as we get that lights car removed. Uito, the top qualifier. So yesterday's P2, the reigning champion. Hallen and yesterday was beaten into P3. Was right up there in qualifying today, winning one of the sessions. But it is a great start for Uito. He's just fantastic at those starts. And they're going to go down into turn one in the order that they qualified. Hallen and Goes out wide onto the dirt, now slots back across to the inside line, sideways in. Hallinan's line in turn two was epic, really good, backed in. Got so much rotation on the car. And Uito and Hallinan have just gapped Yulalami by a few car lengths, not a lot. Victor Christensen has gone joker on that one. Hallinan runs right to the wall on the outside of that very difficult final corner. Yulalami ready to pounce as well. There's so little to choose between all of these guys, but Uito on ultimate lap time has just been that little step ahead over the course of the weekend. It was a great final yesterday. The sun's come out for the latter stages of the event today. And Uito already gapping visibly Hallen and a bit, who's right in the clutches of Yulalami. Uito must have done, must have been fantastic up at the far end, mustn't he? Hallen is going to stay out now. Needs to close that gap down a little bit, but that was class, wasn't it, from Uito? Really good. So, are they going to be able to get a little margin? Oh, oh. Hallinan, every centimetre of the track, every last bit. When you risk it that close to the barrier, the thing is how, because most people won't take the risk to go there, when you do go there, there's extra dust on the road, isn't there? And you, you just, it can all get out of shape as he comes back in. Well, Hallinan's not giving up, has he? 
Yulalami is coming under pressure from Tapine and Christensen, I think, is, is going to get... Yeah, he's easily going to get Yulalami at this rate. Yulalami's joker, though, last time around. Oh, sorry, yes, good Th shout. That's why he's dropped off the back of Hallinan. So what's the gap between them? Four and a bit at the moment, so I think Hallinan will keep going because without a spotter, you can't be sure. Oh, spin there, so that Christensen went round as Tapinen's gone into the joker. There you see Tapinen almost riding on board with the drone. Tapinen's going to come out. So the rear four cars are joking. So Yulalami is on for a podium position at the minute, but is within range of Lowry Hallen and Hallen and 2.4. That's the gap there is only what how 3.8, I think now. Yes, 3.8 between Hallen and Yulalami. That would be very close indeed. So, but no spotters. hallen has got to stay out because he won't know what the margin is. I don't think. Well, accordingly, he won't know, and it's very difficult to tell with little mirrors on these cross cars. So I'm sure he'll stay out again. He'll probably prove me wrong in about three seconds' time, but. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Hallinan, uh, he's got Hal in the name, and he's just completely stiffed Hal Rich there with uh, with another he's done it. joker prediction. But he has done it, so it was enough. So Lowry Hallinan comes out in front of Uniton Yulalami, and uh, with a lap and a bit to go, Michael Uito, the reigning champion, is uh, looking odds on here. He's got a 5.7 second lead, and I reckon he got a half a second of that, Hal, on the second half of lap one. Been great off the line as well, hasn't he? And that makes all the difference. It really does. Whether it's reaction time, we know the RPM is crucial in these cars. They were given an extra 300 RPM just to make sure that they wouldn't bog down at the starts. So... Uito going to wait till the final lap, but has a 5.7 second margin at the front of the order. His last lap was just four temps off his best, and now he's just gone fastest again. So absolutely <laughs> smashing in the lap times. Hallen and coming down the straight with Yulalami in close. Oh, who's gone round? It's Parked Schnack, in the inside. I think, okay, isn't it? so it's, uh, I wasn't sure just for a second. It, uh, we, it's, it's clearly not blue, so it's not Oito. But here he comes down towards the end of the straight. Going to go Joker this time round into the joke lap, but he won't know. But the way he's been driving, he should be pretty safe in the knowledge that he's going to get this done. Last year was absolutely epic. It was uh, three wins, two seconds, and a P3 for Ito. And this year started off pretty well as well. Yesterday, it was P2, but today it's the win for Michael Ito. Hallinan moves up one place to P2 from yesterday's P3. And yesterday's winner, Yulalami, gets P3. So. Our three are oh, Hallen and into the donuts. Go on, lad. Good effort. Um, our three junior drivers who were on the podium yesterday, that is a little stamp on their championship aspirations because to be on the podium both days, albeit in a different order, is good. Hallen didn't get a great reaction time there. Yeah, slow off the line, wasn't he? And uh, did well to try and recover around the outside of Yulalami. There was a good window there for him to slot into and uh, also had a bit of a look at the outside of Yuito. Then uh, cut back in again. I think... Uh, Hallen and his dad will be pleased with this weekend. Oh, they wouldn't have been so pleased if he'd ripped the rear wheel off there, would he? But um, that is oh, just kisses the bodywork. <laughs> he did, didn't he? But his dad told us yesterday, didn't he? You know, we've got all season. So I liked okay. that attitude actually when I heard that. I thought it was a great comment the these, whole year. But winning these championships is great. It's it's like your GCSEs in uh, or, or the, the exams you take in England midway through school. They're important at that stage, but they don't ultimately matter. And whether you win the championship at this level or not isn't as important as the experience you gain ready to go to the next step. So what they gain through learning about the car through the course of the year will be just as valuable. You eat it though, Incredible. On, on another planet really in that final, wasn't he? Yeah, two session wins to take the top qualifier. One is semi, put it on pole, brilliant start. A straight through, shaking hands between the youngsters out there. Some of them wearing uh, motocross style helmets with goggles instead. Uito, Lowry, Uniton, Yoni, Victor and Axel. Kids they are. But yeah, Uito taking it from Hallinan and Yulalami. Great driving. Okay, I've been looking forward to this one because uh, a couple of the semi-finals were amazing. Don't let us down, boys. Yeah, come on lads, don't do what you did yesterday. Don't all go binning it off in turn one. Riku Hukar on the pole, top qualifier. 
won one of the sessions. Next team, Alcott Hammerquist won one of the sessions. Row two, it's Nielsen and Baldins. Row three, Enholm and Osterberg. Revs just creeping up with every second they're held on the line. Too far away, it's another wheelie off the line. Hammerquist alongside. Nilsson's got a good start on row two, so has Bowden. Bowden slots into P4, but tries for the inside line. In the background, contact between... Uh, oh, round! Oh, it's a disaster. Nilsson's gone round. And, oh, Bowden has hooked up on him. No, lads. Look, they look at each other. They know it's a disaster in the first corner, second quarter. Hukar leading. Joker lap there as well for Enholm. So Enholm managed to avoid that in the background. There's a bit of contact between him and Osterberg, but it's uh, Hukar, Hammerquist, Osterberg, Nilsson, and as, as it stood, uh, sorry, uh, contact in that second corner. Hammerquist runs wide into the dirt. Allen just hemorrhages time immediately. If ever you could see someone's face expression behind a helmet, it was Ronald Bowden's then, wasn't it? Oh, and Hammerquist got an issue, has gone wide, now spun. So it's going to turn into a three car race at the front of the order. That's not what we we're hoping for at all. Yumi Osterberg, from fourth on the grid in the semi-final, has uh, made hay here, hasn't he? If you look at this, Hukar is absolutely checked out at the end of one lap. What is the gap going to be here for Rico Hukar? Rico Hukar has got a lead of 3.3 seconds. Hal, he could joker on lap two if he wanted to, and he'd probably come out in front. But Enholm's done the fastest lap of the race. Osterberg with a mistake, spins at the end of the straight, just goes round on the dust, lights it up and gets away. So that's an untidy lap, unfortunately, for Jimmy Osterberg. Enholm's gone through, having jokered already. Ronald so Spaldings has now done the fastest lap of the race. A rage fastest lap, I'm rage, sure. A rage lap, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a rage lap, that's great. But the way you know the way uh, what you said, the way he looked at him in the in the in the second corner, he was just he was like, staring at him like. No, it, it wasn't even that. No, I'm, just, I'm not angry. It's dis I'm, I'm just disappointed. Dis it's like, <sighs> I'm disappointed too. That. What did we say just before they went off the line? Don't let us down, lads. Uh, Hukar's not letting us down. He's on a mission. Although Enholm's gone fastest again, so Enholm's on a massive charge. It's not going to be enough though, because Hukar's well capable of managing that gap, such as the level in this category. He might be how, but if I were his spotter and, and get him in and see, out, yeah. yeah, I might as well send him in now while you've got breathing space. I think I'd send him just to cover him off. And they do. So they've seen the lap times of Enholm behind. Hukar drops into the Joker, should come round. Now what we might now get is at least a decent race if Enholm's close enough to make something of it. Uh, I reckon he'll be within a second of him. So Hukar comes through, uh, maybe one and a half. Bowdens is still going fastest again. 1.6. Yeah, is he really? Go on, Bowden, he's getting. How far back is he? About 20 seconds. Okay, it's not ideal, is it? Suboptimal for Bowden's after contact in the first corner. And uh, Hammerquist has Hammerquist parked it or carried on? No, he has carried on. So was it Hammerquist that had the issue at the end of the straight? Yeah, it was up the hill, wasn't it? Yeah. Spun uh, before the bridge. But it looked like tech, didn't it? Because to pull over again, the second one wasn't a mistake. That was more like a tech issue. Bowden to go fastest again. Oh, I said another quick possession. Is he? basically killing his own He's lap every purple, time. purple, 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 yeah. He'll be kicking himself when he sees the pace for only after him. Someone's going to need to... Why don't they do that all weekend? Yeah, someone's basically going to need someone of the team to slap him around the face just before he gets in the car, so he gets a rage lap and, and goes for it. But, um, yeah. in, in Holland in 2012, uh, 2011, I had a great feeling in the... Uh, I didn't qualify for the finals in the old European Championship. Pushed really hard on the last couple of laps, said to uh, Dave, who was mechanically for me at the time, I pushed really hard there as a mega lap. He said, why didn't you do that from the start? <laughs> That's great, isn't it? But Bowden to be like, why wasn't I pushing that hard all weekend? I, I smashed know, it. But it's not that easy, is Fastest it? Fastest again last time I ran. OK, he's got you in, dropped into the 40s. Final lap, Riku Hukar with an absolutely brilliant performance. Wasn't on the podium yesterday, but today going to take the win. Hukar gets the flag and wins round two of Rally X 2023 in cross car. Enholm cruises over the line for P2. And uh, P3, after that tricky little uh, spin up at the top, Osterberg gets it. Great drive by Hukar, lots going on behind him. You've got to be out front to get that done. Deserved today. TQ, semi-win and win again. From 13th overall yesterday, Hukar went out in semi-final one. Some turnaround.
Brilliant recovery, and that's what championships are built on, isn't it? Recovering from your down days like that. This is the first corner. That is uh, Eric Nielsen, Nielsen yeah. dropping it, and that's Baldin's. Oh, look how the wheel. they were. The wheel was almost into the cabin. Here it is, look. On the window, wasn't it? Ah, oh, you'd be gutted. Look, look, now he's like, really, mate? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> What do we do now? That's Hamakovic dropping it on the brakes. Just closed so much on Hukart, got sideways. It's this moment just continuing, continuing. I don't know. Still in the loose, still in the loose. I don't know, something odd happened there, didn't he it? Did, and then he backs out. This is Osterberg going round, I think, a lap later. So just in the dirt on the outside line. Lights of course, you're up. in too high a gear there to just bury the throttle when yeah. you've got no turbo in the response. So you need to go down the box and dip the clutch and difficult to recover from that sort of thing. Brilliant drive, Rick Kuhuka wins round two of Rally X 2023. Straight over there for a hug with Sebastian and Norman P2. Awesome. Not quite the race we were looking for with a bit too much going on in the background. You see the gap between the top three and the bottom three and all of them are capable of well, Baldins. Well, they're, I don't know, they're, they're only five laps in the race, but you set about eight fastest laps in there somehow. <laughs> so Rico Hukar takes it from Sebastian Enholm and Jimmy Osterberg. What was Osterberg yesterday? Seventh. Yeah, okay, so good, yeah. Seeing, aren't we, some of our top drivers getting the improvements we kind of expect. See, the juniors are down there, aren't they still in, in uh, Park Ferme? We're missing someone here. We are. From row two, we are missing Engsvig. Oh dear. Thanks for getting a lack of pace in the semi. So there's something gone. They've obviously decided that uh, it's not worth risking the car. Severson is on pole from Victor Johansson. That's because uh, Severson out qualified Johansson off the line. Tiger goes backwards massively. Tiger's dropped down. Is he inside enough here to hold on? Down into P4 from row two. Johansson's gone nicely around the outside. Takes the lead from Severson. Tiger gets collected. Is he going to get rotated into the Joker? He does. It's maybe not what he wanted. And unfortunately, he might now come out behind slower traffic, Hal. Yeah, Bertelsen stayed out, but isn't going to have enough to come out ahead of, uh, to remain ahead of Tiger. So Tiger's jokered and he's fourth. He'll almost certainly get back to the podium based on his pace. But how's this cost him a chance of victory with Johansson at the front and untroubled at the moment? I think probably has. Well, he's going to get some attention, isn't he, from Jorgen Severson? Um, Severson's all over the back. Of the he minute. is, yeah. I said I'm troubled. It's not the case at all. Severson all over the back of the 190 Evo hybrid. Severson got P5. Oh, it's run wide. Oh, he can look, he can, I thought he might go joking mm, there. Yeah, maybe he ought to have done really to try and cover off Tiger because and, and also how you're losing time. If you're three quarters of a car alongside, you know, if you go joking yeah. then you, you've straight away you're, you're looking at. And you've had to come out of the joker. throttle to sort it all out. You may as well stay Just in the throttle, keep the rotation yeah. going, you go into the joker. I would, have, I would have ducked in there, definitely. Where's Tiger? Tiger has three got points. fastest. Yeah, 3.8 behind. So that, that might have got Severson the win. Now they're battling together. If they're not careful, Tiger's going to nick it from both of them. It's only 3.8 back to P4. He's, he's almost close enough. You could argue that he sent Johansson now to cover off Tiger, who's a bit too sideways coming onto the straight. Something out there firing, it sounds like a machine gun of one of these incredible engines. That's Tiger on the limiter. Now it's Severson Jokers. Right. Is it too late? Yes. Severson from Tiger. How thinks it is? I think it is too. Watch for Tiger coming through the long right hander. Oh no, oh. Severson just holds on. Wow. What do we know? Now it's on. But for Johansson, this is perfect, Hal. Now it's gone the other way. Before it was, you know, it was Johansson and Severson holding each other up, and Tiger was the danger man. Tiger now lost a lot of time there in the final. He lost six tenths in the final part of the lap there, which is why Severson's gone back out ahead. And now it's about these two closing down Johansson. Well, he we said Tiger was sideways through here, wasn't he, coming onto the straight? And you think about the amount of time you lose when you're sideways onto the long straight. Not ideal, he's going to have a look up the inside though, Simon Tiger. Oh, he's close, he gives him a nudge. He gives him a little nudge, Johansson. The gap was 3.5 previously. What's it going to be this time round? Get these two points. Oh, Tiger now up the inside. Oh, contact. Broken car, is it for Tiger? Is he, is he just hold on the front right? Look, like he was moving around. Think, no, he's OK. So Simon Tiger is continuing. Him right. and Severson are well offline after contact. Severson just ran a bit. Well, Severson's got a problem. I think that's handed victory to uh, Johansson personally. There you go, Tiger's yeah. broken as well. That's what I thought. Optimistic move uh, there. Well, Severson was wide. I mean, he was up the inside. It was just a little bit of contact. Ooh, yeah, he's so a brave boy if he goes the wall. Boom, there you go. 
I thought he was going to attempt the two jumps there with the wheel flapping around. So that means that Stewart uh, is going to Stewart, take yeah. second here. Bjorn Stewart or oh, Tiger's carrying on, so they're on the radio team. Come on. Because Bertelsen's also stopped. So if he gets this to the end. Meanwhile, Johansson's been in and out of the Joker. He's uh, checked out. Yeah, Johansson. We thought Michael Ruizzo had a fair lead, and then we thought uh, Riku Hukar had a fair lead, but Johansson's. Get your candle out if you want to measure the gap on this one. <laughs> Ten seconds it was last time across the line to Stur. Amazing. Tiger, I'm going to have a look out the window. Oh, Johansson's back right off over the two jumps as well, which is fair enough. He can't there is Tiger. Tiger. There is literally one wheel steering on that car, which is why he's not going to go flat out down the straight. Oh, come on. So everybody's getting just a little bit too enthusiastic in these uh, finals in terms of contact, and we're missing out on uh, finishing off with, uh, with some fire. So let's hope that we get that in uh, Supercar Live, we've got Pro-Am. Johansson takes it, but it's the easiest win of his entire open two-wheel drive career in my book. Oh, Tiger at the commentary box window just put it in the barrier again, going up the hill, bounced oh. off and kept going. Wonder if we can look at the orange. Uh, Stur takes second. Yeah, great result. And uh, that's the sort of result that'll keep someone motivated to keep coming back. So fantastic yeah. for Bjorn. I'm pleased for him. Hopefully he comes back for his home round in Turp in a couple of weeks. And uh, hopefully we can see Simon Tiger in the background. I'll just have a look at the window. He's still yeah, going he's as we look at the it. replays. He's going to make it. This was turn one, look. Johansson got a tiny bit of contact here, but it really wasn't a lot from uh, Simpson up into the first corner and, and uh, he was away. How? Now Tiger crosses the finish line. There we go. Sir. Any second. Four, plus 44.8. Look, look, mate, Johansson was hanging on to it on the straight <laughs> there. Coming off the left-hand side of the jump, the drop is definitely bigger than elsewhere. This is Tiger, look, so he comes across, goes inside. This is the next lap, isn't it, after yeah, the joke okay. merge. So this is where Tiger's going to have a look at Severson into the final corner. Or more than a look. So now Severson, look. It's run wide. Fair, Severson, it's just a really... Unlucky. It's that flare. Tell you what, it's unlucky that Tiger's broken the front suspension there yes. or, the, or the steering arm because the contact's with the rear and then it drags him into the front. I said, didn't know that I thought he'd broken the steering, but it, you, you did, see yeah. here, look yeah, at that. There. I could see well, that moving from the from the drone shot. Good spot, it's, Andrew Thank Curry. you, mate. Um, it's, oh, he glances the barrier, but it's, it's basically it's the width of that flared arch is the difference. You got the front end of the car through, didn't you? But the rear end six inches wider and it yes, wasn't enough. Go. Oh, Vigo with the shot. Pow. And then... Uh, is this again? No, this is the same moment. But oy, on the next oy, two, oy, like... Oi, oi, Has he not realised at this point? Now he's realised, look. Yeah, but at least, at least knowing then is better than in a few seconds after afterwards. The, after the crash, yeah. Oh. Well, that gets a podium. second hand now, doesn't it? What was the podium yesterday? Because I, it was... Well, this might not be in the most exciting race. It was Tiger, Kong and Marcus Norman yesterday. So Tiger's actually, Hal, the only driver in open two-wheel drive that's been on the podium both days. So while it's not the greatest result for him now, it's going to be a good championship points haul. There's Victor. Victor was P6 yesterday, wasn't he, I think, did we say? Yeah, he retired, and he? His boys have had some work to do last night. The car was in many pieces when I went over there. What's in the boot? What's in the boot? All sorts of homemade tech. Oh, I thought he was going to get something cool out of it. top think. secret. Yeah. What, well, like it a is. dog or something. What? <laughs> That'd be a bit mean, wouldn't it? Come on. How's after all the animals in this show? <laughs> No, I meant that he was like carrying his stuff around in his, uh, in his it, big you, car. You keep digging. I'll call him, uh, I don't know, somebody. Here we go. Look at this. Is this after the damage? It Trying looks quite damaged. It, it does, yeah. Look at the rear quarter. Look. Oh, dear. And they've got a long way to go home as well, right to the north of Sweden to get that looking nice and shiny for a couple of weeks. And he's just driving it to the line here. Going to need a bit more of that orange paint, I reckon. They've got quite a lot of it, haven't they? Aren't there several cars in the same colour? Look how wide the track is on the front with whatever's broken. Gee, th this is him crossing the finish line, 44 seconds down. But he made it. I love a, I love a resilient drive. Victor Johansson takes the win from Bjorn Stewart and Simon Tiger. Two DNFs and a DNS. That's the way it goes sometimes. So this is your Supercar Am final. Linneman's qualified for the Pro final as well. So we'll get this, then lights. They'll have to prep that car quickly. Can he win the Supercar Am final first of all? Victor Franks alongside. Row two, Callaward and Michael Tam. Row three, Stephen Christensen and Morton Schnack. 
Litterman's got 150 guests and sponsors here this weekend. He'd love to entertain them with a win in this category and then go on to the pro and he gets a shocking start. Victor Brank's going to get the whole shot down towards turn one. Morton Schnack from the back of the grid, trying to go around the outside of the orange 2 machine. Litterman's still in the mix. Oh, he's going to get the inside of Schnack, is he? Do you go joke from there or would if I wasn't spun round and he spun round? That is an absolute nightmare for Linneman. If that car's broken, he's going to miss the pro final as well. And Victor Franks is out front in the amp final. And that is where he ended up yesterday. He managed to win it. So can he win it again in the RX2E machine? Linneman getting frustrated in his home round there was he lost the start for whatever reason, then stuck it up, stuck it up the inside of Franks, trying to make good what had already gone wrong in I there. I think Franks might be carrying damage hell on the rear left. Yeah, he's been smoking a lot since uh, that contact in the, on the way into the first corner from Linneman. Stop smoking now at all. Oh, I think it's tracking oh, yeah, yeah, badly. Yeah. I think the rear left wheel on Franks' car is pointing inwards. See if we can see a shot of it from the drone. Oh, it's pretty hard to tell from there. Yeah, it is definitely. There's Linneman on the left in the wall. So that's him probably out of the pro final as well. So unfortunately, you know, you lose the start sometimes. You've just got to settle in. And yeah, it's broken. See, it's towing out. Yeah. The left rear is towing out. I think Schnack's also got problems. He's had all sorts of suspension dramas this weekend, largely from hitting a movable object with the rear of the car. To it, Hal. If Franks could win this with the damage on the car, it's akin to the backward performance in the Focus RS RX at Estering. He had a he had a race last year, and I'm trying to remember which one it was in RX 2E where he did exactly the same. Oh, oh he's oh. hanging on to it. He's absolutely wrestling it. Schnack and Tam behind. I'd go joking out of them, so I'd be looking at him and thinking he's got a shunt on one of these laps because he's absolutely wild. Oh, my, my very small brain's failing me, but I can't remember where it was that Frank's had a similar moment. That wheel's moving around as well. That's not a fixed bent wheel. That's a broken bit of suspension, I think. Tam's all over the back of Schnack. One of these guys needs to mix up their strategy. I think Tam does have the pace to do this. But this is, this is, you see, this is playing into the hands of Franks because of the fact that Tam and Schnack are in a little fight. If Tam's Tam, the fastest on track. He has to joke this time around, whatever yeah, else happens. That's exactly what I was going to say. He's got to go, hasn't he? Here comes Victor Franks, all crossed up, basically, in every single braking zone. And as Schnack goes now, which I don't think he will. I want to see the Joker. I want to see the Joker. Who's going in? Schnack's in the Joker. So, so that's released it. So, so not going to have to. Or comes out. Close between him and Christensen. Ward's at the back of the pack as well. So three car fight going back there. But now, yeah, Tam has been released to try and chase down Franks. Can he get it done? I think it might have been Riga where uh, Franks had the break for suspension. I can't quite remember. But anyway. I love the fact three laps late you're still trying to remember. It's annoying me now. Ding, ding. It's oh, from wide. From Christensen's wide. got up the inside. That could be in the fight for the last place on the podium because Tam is going quickly. Victor Franks has done the fastest lap of the race so far. Largely because these guys are all fighting, but he's on a massive push. Hero drive from Franks. Is that, so they've both gone in Joker. Callum Ward's had a look, sorry, Andrew. Callum Ward's had a look up the inside of Schnack and Victor Franks has Joker up they, front. They've both gone how? Tam went, so Tam's gone on into cover Christensen, and that's given him no chance now, pretty much, of managing to get back to Franks. We've got a lap to go. The graphic on the left hand side of the screen is, uh, is completely wrong. wrong. Yeah. With a lap to go, Franks has set the fastest lap of the race with that broken rear suspension. He's using this series to learn for the future, and my goodness, is he doing that, racing against these much more powerful Rallycross supercars. I just, I just, he's got a couple of laps to go. I don't want to jinx it, but this is a hero drive. His family will be watching up on the top of that bank hill. They're going to be absolutely bouncing up and down. Uh, we have lost our graphics because we've lost our joker indicator. I think he's got a couple of laps still to go, unless they're not indicated completely. There it is, so Franks wins. Franks wins, shocking graphics I'm afraid there, Maiko Tam gets P2 from Christensen, but Victor Franks with a hero drive in the RX2E machine, damage right at the start, look at it, all crossed up, it won't even drive in a straight line, and Franks has won it, that is an absolutely brilliant drive, and I stand by what I said earlier, that's right up there, we're backward at the Estering, trying to hold on to a car under pressure for the whole race, well done. Look and this, this. Is, this is where it happened, Linneman makes a poor start, he gets thumped in the back immediately by Ward. Look, Ward gets an incredible start, boom, into the back. Is that what did it? I think it no, might be. He's not. smoking it's already. Lineman hit him after in turn two. I'm sure that's what broke the suspension. He's had one hit, so now watch Lineman in the black, white, and red on the inside. He comes in here, look. Schnack comes across the front of him. Lineman, I think something breaks when he hits with the front right. His I reckon front drive, drive shaft. Yeah, yeah. So he's gone straight round with 600 horsepower to the rear. Now Frank's runs wide. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, so it's, yeah, so it's that contact. 
But what? that's the second contact, don't forget, on that wheel. Rear yeah. left was hit by Ward off the start, then Linneman out of turn two. But yeah, apologies for the graphics there, guys. Again, towards the end of the day. <laughs> Schnack uh, He's just not working how they're supposed to. Schnack was unlucky to lose out on a podium there. Ran wide here, got done by uh, Stefan Christensen, who's uh, had a strong weekend, the Swede. And then Schnack got lunged there by Calla Ward, who's getting into being a supercar driver. And then fair play to Calla for standing on the brakes and avoiding running way too wide, not forcing the issue. Realised he'd already given Schnack a shove. And there is Ranks celebrating on the roof of the car. And celebrate you should. That's an absolutely brilliant drive. I love this, that you've got a collection of superheroes down there who've all won their races. Ranks, for me, is the superhero of them all with that drive. Really, really impressive performance. He's won both the Supercar AM finals. Supercar AM, I say, the, the subcategory within Supercar. They do their semis together and then they're split into the two. So Franks will be leading that championship by some margin. Amazing performance by him. And uh, hopefully that's going to mean how that we'll see them for the rest of the year, because I think at that point you'll be thinking, you know what, I will, uh, I'll have a go at this. So Lucas Anderson on the front row here. With Casper Janssen. Row two is Steinsholt and Enland. And row three, Olofsson and Hookvist. Marshals aren't quite ready to launch them from the looks of things. Won't be long, I'm sure. They've only just recovered Lineman's car off the uh, circuit. The recovery vehicle's just leaving the track now. Okay, now we get the go. Round two, supercar lights. Yesterday it was Anderson, Enland, Hookfist. Hookfist is on the back of the grid. Anderson's on the front with Casper Janssen, Steinsholt and Enland just behind. Olofsson at the back with Hockfist. Good start by Anderson. Should be able to keep Casper Janssen on the outside line there. Enland squeezing in towards the wall. Steinsholt, more contact there for Casper Janssen on the back of Anderson's car. Olofsson's come up from the back row into P3 immediately. Now Anderson gets a nudge from the back by Steinsholt. Steinsholt's had his fair share of beatings today, but has been beaten up a bit there as well. Now, Casper Janssen goes straight to the Joker after a bad start. Going to try and make the best of that. He comes out in front of, uh, is that Enland? I think he's got all the damage. It is, yeah. Enland in the background with the uh, front clam pushed up. That was such an even start between all six of the finalists here. Anderson got a big old shove in the rear, didn't he, in turn two. You can see the damage on the front of Steinsholt's car. He's had a difficult weekend. I bet he's on new tyres now as well, because he's got bright white clean wheels and the rest of the car is covered in rallycross dirt but Casper Janssen having been in the joker was yeah we're gonna need to see what the gap is so Janssen's your danger man in terms of whether or not he can close everyone down but Anderson's been doing great lap times for Janssen he's getting there isn't he already Casper Janssen with a big push in the background I was impressed with Anderson's patience at the end of the straight how it was a little bit crossed up he waited turned it in got on the throttle the pressure's coming here it is the black and red car Fourth on the road, fifth on the road, where is he? Casper is 4.0 back. So Fastest he's a lap of the race from Casper Janssen, so he's on a big charge. Yeah. Going to try and close that gap down. Doesn't want to catch up to the back of Hook Fist in front, who seems to be having a, a little bit of a sideways moment. Pack of four cars here. Yo, Christopherson spotting, I think, for Anderson. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if... Uh, I'd send him in. Oli Eriksson spotting for Casper Janssen. I wouldn't send him in, I don't think. Oh, it doesn't... No, OK, so there we go. Steintold goes from P2. Someone's got a misfire. That really oh, nice. No. It's another pre win start for the supercars. We've had that all day. Oh, oh. oh Hockfist gets out on Steintold. No, sorry, on Janssen. So that's covered off Janssen. Steintold on Janssen, sorry, yes. So the OSC stable mates. I thought Janssen had done enough there. So Steintold spot has done a great job to he, get him in and out ahead of Janssen. I reckon they must have covered Janssen because he did that fast lap, but then Janssen's just not got it done on the next lap. Made, made a mistake. Looks like he's lost about six tenths compared to the previous lap. So And Anderson's on a massive charge up front. The fastest lap of the race so far last time around. I'd send him again. Yep. Yeah, keep him out. Hookfist is in a bit of no man's land now, isn't he? Because he's 2.7 off the lead, 4.1 is Steinsold. So 
Steinsholt will get Hookvist and you don't want to joke with someone into this fight between Steinsholt and Janssen because there's nothing to choose between them. Hookvist goes fastest on lap time. Hookvist has a great pace so far this weekend. There's that patience again from Anderson Hall on the way in. Just a little bit of rotation on the brakes. Wait, wait, wait. Gets on the throttle again. 15 years old, driving like an absolute pro. Down the straight, lap four out of five. Do they send him now? His gap last time out was uh, would be enough to cover off the people who joked. No, I'd go, I'd go again, yeah, lap. because Olufsen's only 1.3 behind. Hookvist is 2.3, so if they didn't joke, you'd end up in a fight you don't need to be in. Hookvist has joked now. And gets in behind them, so they both edged it. So there Sens we go. Sensible from Hookvist there. This is a long season. He's, yeah. They're all here to get mileage, and he could have plowed into the side of Steinsolt then and opted not to. Lucas Hansen goes fastest again as they cross the line. Fastest lap of the race again oh, so far. Wow. Absolutely amazing performance from this young man. As you say, Anderson made debut yesterday. First time out in a lights car. Tiny little bit of practice. Moving up from Super, uh, Super Cup to Junior cross car to get into this position. Slides through the joker. He's going to come out in front of Olofsson, who's in behind. Is Olofsson going to get the jump on everybody else? Olofsson's going to get P2. But Anderson, yes, they took a debut win. He makes it a double win, having taken the TQ earlier today. And you should flick that over the line, because that is an epic performance. And his confidence will be sky high for the rest of the year. Look at that. Backs it in at the end of the straight. Oh, yes. Come on. Sideways again. 15 years old. Steps up from Cross Car Junior to take a double win here. And that is just the dream start to a supercar light season on your debut weekend. Stunning performance, absolutely stunning. Look how equal the start was for the entire pack here, away from the line. Enlund's the yellow and white car gets into the rear of Caspi Janssen. Caspi Janssen in turn gets into the rear of uh, Anderson. Janssen was fired wide there, wasn't he? Did well yeah. to recover as, as much as he did to fourth, but there's just so little to choose between any of these drivers. And up front here, this is Anderson getting a bit of a shove from uh, Stein's Holt, but that didn't cost him anything in the end. I'm pleased for Olofsson, Hal, after yesterday. Olofsson, oh dear, that was not ideal for Enland, was it? Olofsson, if you remember yesterday, was leading, wasn't he, in the final and had an issue and has now managed to get P2. This was the merge. And Stein's Holt sinking up the inside of Janssen, who Janssen gave him racing room. And this is the final lap with uh, Anderson. Just through the Joker. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Say, so, I know it said it, I'm going to say it again. 15 years old, debut weekend, and has won both rounds. Yesterday from the back, today from the front. And Top look how close it was. Just brilliant. As, and look at the... These That's are, what I mean. It's so close drivers. between all of these brilliant drivers. There he is. I'll be... <laughs> that cool and calm he looks. Amazing. So we got a load of cars parked down there in the uh, holding area. They have a little bit of scrutiny here and check out everything is tickety-boo and just how it should be. Anderson with the win from Olofsson and Steins Holt. But we've got one race left to come and it's the one I think everybody's been looking forward to. Round two, Rally X 2023 supercar. Kevin Erickson is on the pole alongside him. Andreas Backer, who got a brilliant start in the previous race from that grid position. Can he pull off around the outside on Kevin around the outside, Erickson? Row two, Johan Christofferson and Peter Hedstrom, P1 and P2 yesterday. And at the back of the grid there, Belevsky. Linneman missing after last time. Here we go then. One last race from Neeson Barnen. Round two. It's go. Good start by Christofferson. Ericsson's definitely got the jump on back row. Peter Hedstrom going to try for the round the outside move. Taps into the back. Christopherson moves up the inside of Backward, Backward in a three-car wide run. Going to get dumped to the back here, but Levski's inside him as well. Backward should go Joker now with my books, but he doesn't. Gets past Christopherson. Has Christopherson got a problem? Johan drops back in the polo from the outside of turn one. Kevin Erickson leads this from Belevsky. Christopherson out. He's gone, so Christopherson's pulled over. He's out. Hedstrom's gone Joker on the first lap, and he's now going to try and close them down in front. So we saw Christopherson run wide, but he's gone, and it's Erickson leading. I wondered if Christopherson had a problem in the loose gravel on the outside there of turn two, but clearly broken the steering or something similar. Can't get round that next tight right hand, a uh, left hander, sorry, but Kevin Erickson has been handed a really big opportunity here to win in the Honda Civic. 
The two Audis behind backwards, piling the pressure onto Yuri Belevsky. Backwards going to joke this time around, I'm sure. Yes, he does. So a good move by Backward. He's going to try and find himself some clear air now. Where's Hedstrom? Is he going to cover him off or not? We're on board with Backward, and he is in front of Peter Hedstrom. How far back is Hedstrom? Far enough back. So now Backward's got no pressure from the rear. P2 this year in Nitro Rallycross. He'll be looking to get himself up to the top step of the podium, but at the minute, Ericsson has got a lead of... Well, it's only 3.6. What do you do? He's mm. only, uh, no, sorry, 4.6. 4 I, I might joke at Kevin now, you know, just cover to cover backwards. him off, because I wouldn't be so worried about Belevsky, although Belevsky's gone purple on the last lap. No, they've left him out, so Ericsson... Oh, Belevsky goes, so now watch this. This will be close between 3.6 between Belevsky and Backward. Backward coming over the crest in the background. Belevsky has the inside line. Backward will get the cut back here. Goes up the inside, into the side of Belevsky. Amazing race car from Backward there. That is him at absolutely top form. Lifted off, ducked in behind him, gets the position. Now he's got to chase down Eric. Such experience from race car from Andreas Backward. He's some of the best in the business at that sort of overtaking. He's been so good at that for the history of the World Championship and in Nigel Rallycross today. I would joke at Kevin Ericsson now. Don't let Backward get his head down. Keep Kevin with track position. Will Oliver send him in? It was 4.5 last time round was the gap between Backward and Ericsson. He's gone. Kevin Ericsson goes in. I think he's got enough of a margin here. He's going to come out in front of Andreas Backward. That's great tactics. How bang on the money, as is a spotter. Holly Ericsson sends him in. Couple of laps to go. Everybody's joking. Lineman didn't start. Christopherson isn't going to finish. Can Backward do anything about Kevin Erickson from there? He's going to have to close him down. Halley made those passes at the end of the straight. I'm not putting it past him. He will have a crack if he can get close enough. Backward's done the fastest lap of the race so far last time around. That included passing Belevsky through that final corner. That was what gave him the run. He's not close enough to have a look at Kevin Erickson at the back end of this straight. Kevin careful on the brakes. Gets it nice oh. and turned in, but Backward's closing. He is. He's doing what Chris Johnson was doing on the brakes earlier on today. Look at Erickson's rotation through the right and then the left. Can Backward would get nearer. It was 0.9 last time round. It's definitely less than 0.9 now. Andreas Backward has got the bit between his teeth. He's taken three tenths off him as we go on to the final lap. Can he have a look at the end of the straight? Backward has gone fast again. He's got two more opportunities. One more opportunity now. Backward's chance to win this race is at the end of this next straight on the brakes. He's done this a few times already this weekend. He's got to get a good exit. Watch for him moving across to the left hand side of the road. He goes late on the brakes. Ducking up the inside. Oh, tags the back of Ericsson. Ericsson holds on. Backward spins. Belevsky goes through. So does Hedstrom. Andreas Backward had to try. It didn't pay off this time. Kevin Ericsson whipped in the Honda Civic. And that's a hell of a result for him. Fantastic. Belevsky gets P2. Yesterday's winner, Hedstrom, is P3. Backward. He had to try. And I admire him for it. He doesn't get the reward. But good on you for having a crack. Andreas Backward very much back in the box today. Absolutely brilliant. Did the fastest lap of the race, had to try on Kevin, but he knew that if he braked any later, he was going to fire Kevin off. He opted to, like the, the car started to rotate, didn't it? And he didn't take Kevin out. Go I am on, so Kevin. happy Hate for Kevin him. Erickson. He's here. He has worked so hard for this championship to take place this year. He's running the team. He's helping run the championship. He's got his daughter here in the paddock who he's looking after between the races. He was what exhausted yesterday, Hal. Absolutely exhausted. He really was. He's also been struggling with his foot from his injury last year with a different seating position in the Civic. He got a P3 yesterday. He was so apologetic for a tiny bit of contact on Johan Christophson. He has been Sandy McSenderson around the outside in this corner every time. Look at backward against Sandwich. Let's just look at Christophson's yeah. damage here. So Christophson's got it turned in. He nudges into the back of... Nobody hits him, no, I think so. He's just gone tech, hasn't it? He, oh, he's got a puncture. Oh, front, right. front right puncture. Front right puncture. So where did that... Must have been must in have turn been one. Must have contact in turn one, mustn't it? There it is. So he comes in with a puncture. Meanwhile... Belevsky, look, going through the joke lap. Watch for Backward. This was an epic piece of race car. He, he's a little bit too sideways in. Now, Backward, lift, chuck it in, in, lean on the door, OK, maybe on the wheel, and make the pass. That was a, a great piece of race car. That, I say, I said it then, Backward at his best. I was unfair on Belevsky then to say he wouldn't trouble the front of the order, but uh, it's Backward who set the fastest laps, and Yuri nearly hung on to second there at the joke emerge. Look at the smoke pouring off Belevsky's front tyre. That was a proper cliffhanger, wasn't it? This is the move, look, where he tried and it was just too late. He dropped the rear left, then he guns it, look, flicks it round. Here it is, coming in hot, 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 and it's just not quite enough. It, Kevin was lucky that Your that off. didn't put him into those tyres because he would have rotated too far to save it then. Well, there we go. Kevin Erickson. Come on, Kevin, get back in the car at the next round. Get in in a Tierp. Might we see Ollie Ericsson in the car at Tierp? Ericsson is down there and uh, 
in the holding area. Hedstrom looked Nick in third, right at the end of the race. Belevsky gets P2. Salvaged a podium, didn't he, Hedstrom, in the end? Because yeah. he hasn't had the pace today no. that he'd had so far he this weekend. He smashed it yesterday, didn't he? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so uh, we have got, I think it's Pete, I think we got our man down there. Peter should be down there, hopefully trying to find us some interviews. We want to try and have a catch up with our top three if we possibly can. Uh, we're done with the racing. We can take a deep breath. It was good. It was. Yeah. Well done, mate. Cheers, mate. Yeah, good fun. fun weekend, as always. Fun weekend. Uh, you'll have to forgive us. We've got a monitor on the floor down here. So, um, and you know, incredibly light, bright light. We're, we're not, not <laughs> looking at the camera. We just could do with the cap. There we go. That, that sorts it out. Um, here we go. Kevin Erickson is down there. Kevin, congratulations. P1. Andreas chucked it at the back of your car on the last lap there, but he couldn't quite get to you. How are you feeling, mate? Ah, really happy. Uh, you know, to be here with the Honda, the old girl, uh, still, <laughs> still performing well. So uh, it's nice to get a win. Is the old girl the car or you? We know you were saying that your, uh, your ankle was hurting you, but it hasn't held you back. You've had two podiums, mate. P3 yesterday and a win today. Amazing. I'm more the fat guy right now. So <laughs> I, I, I need to get back in shape. But, but yeah, the final was good. I got my pole position, you know, which, which I needed. Uh, Yuan has been a couple of tenths uh, faster than, than the rest all day. So I knew I had to have, you know, track position over him in, in the start. Uh, and then I actually, I, you know, he was my biggest threat and I saw him pull off and I maybe was a little bit too cautious because he's still, you know, the field here is so, so tight anyway. And, uh, you know, I was maybe too cautious and I let back into the fight there, maybe too much to the end. And uh, yeah, I got a hit in the bumper and uh, I was a little bit surprised, but I don't know what happened. <laughs> you, you, you have lived up to your nickname of Kevin round the outside Ericsson all weekend. Some of your moves in turn one have been epic. I think you told Hal earlier in the weekend it's just the easiest way in turn one. I don't know, for me, it's almost easier than having pole position. I mean, everyone, of course, remember Estring 2016, but it's kind of been something that I can pull off out of my hat when I need it. And <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so confident in that move and I know what I need to do. And yeah, it's just, for me, it's kind of normal, if you know, if you understand what I mean, not to be cocky, but uh, yeah. Hey, Kevin, nobody thinks you're cocky. We're all here for it, mate. Anytime anybody goes around the outside, we like it. You're the master of it. You've taken the win here at round two, a podium yesterday. Can we persuade you to do some more rounds? I know you were saying it's kind of a, you're busy running the series. I know you've got some nitro stuff as well to do, but come on, man, you've got to get back in there. You're right up there in the points. Yeah, I mean, it's been so much fun. Uh, the level is so high, but also it's been awesome to see the Pro-Am guys. And like you say, I'm, I'm kind of doing a little bit of everything here. And t is coming up. We have a lot of plan there. I was kind of telling myself that that maybe I should, you know, have Oliver in the car, maybe in the race. But, uh, you know, we have two Honda, so we will see what happens. Were well, you actually leading the championship by two points, mate, from Johan Christofferson. Peter Hedstrom is a further six points back in, in P3. So championship leader we'd love to see you in uh, in tiep if you fancy it mate but I, I do understand you're a busy man yeah so we we will see it, it was fun and you know when you get a win you get a lot of uh, what's it me at this in sweden a lot of wind with you if you know what uh, I mean. yeah 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 following wind i know <laughs> yeah, what you mean yeah yeah right. yeah congratulations well done well on, and Kevin. thanks for yep. thanks for putting on such a brilliant show mate thank you so much well done thank you Amazing. So we're going to send Peter, our, uh, our man on the ground there with our camera off to see if we can find somebody else to interview, preferably uh, P2. Oh, I'd actually like a chat with Andreas Backer, but I suspect he won't be down in the holding area. He'll probably yeah. send his car back to um, back to the to the tent. To pop him, I would imagine. Yeah. Like and subscribe. That's what that little graphic down the bottom of the screen means. I hope Kevin comes back for Tierb. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Would, to, yeah. uh, we're just looking at the point standings in, in front of us there, and this man is right up there as well. He is, yeah. Peter Hedstrom. Um, so, mate, that's uh, you, you managed to get a result there at the end. Uh, you ended up third after a bit of carnage in the second to last corner. With the win yesterday, it means you're third in the championship standings. That's a good start to your season. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yeah. run good. We start the day with uh, not so good. We have puncture in the first uh, Q1 and the Q2. We have a gearbox problem. And uh, Q3, uh, it was uh, second fastest. So. And uh, ah, it's uh, not so easy to go uh, in the second line in the final and do something. But we, we try in the semi final, it was uh, second. And um, in the final, uh, yeah. Well, I try. I try to go out, 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 outside, but no, not this time. 
Well, you, you told me and Hal yesterday that the car was incredibly fast, but you were you were struggling to keep up with it. But you uh, you did a brilliant job yesterday, and, and you're right back up there again today. You feeling comfortable in the Hyundai? Will, will you carry on with that, or is it just going to depend who who wants to rent it? Uh, we will see. We, uh, I have something clear. I, I, I think I have that, but uh, I, I know more uh, next week. Okay, okay, so Peter's not going to give us away any secrets, but that's fine. Uh, with a P1 and a P3, Peter, congratulations on a, on a great weekend's work. And I say you're third in the championship standings, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in Tiep. Yeah, I hope so. There we go, Peter Hedstrom uh, with, with a third. Howley he said he tried for the round on the outside. We, we saw him head out that way. I think if, if he was going to do that, he needed to really commit and chuck it in. And, and he backed off and came in. With a championship in mind, I don't think that's a bad approach. It's hard to commit to, to that round the outside move because it can go terribly wrong, especially if the pack comes and joins you there and you get forced right out. We saw that a couple of times, didn't we? So, um, yeah, solid, really solid weekend for Peter Hedstrom. He's, he's made some comebacks, hasn't he, in, uh, recently, and it's not all gone very well, but a, a brilliant performance this weekend. Um, Yuri Belevsky is with us. Yuri, you managed to get yourself uh, P2 in the race there. Good performance by you. How was it from your side? Uh, well, I mean, we started last in a final, so we really didn't have our hopes up. We also drove on the used tyres uh, most of the day, and yeah, we kept them for the final because our hopes were not big. Yeah, went for a classic undercut, of course. Sometimes it works, so it worked this time as well. And then, just to be honest, concentrating on the driving, pushing. Uh, a little moment with Andres on his exit of the Joker, but was clearly his line, so yeah. But at the end, I don't know what happened with him. I saw him spinning and, yeah, just brought it to the end. P2, super heavy. He, uh, he tried a pass on, well, not a pass. He closed the gap down on Kevin. On, he made some brilliant passes at the end of the straight there, but it was just too dusty and he went round, basically. So, yeah, that was a nice surprise for you, I guess. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, uh, you know, I was thinking, yeah, P P P3, but then it was P2. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Yuri, how's your weekend been? I mean, you've had some, you've had some great results, and then also you've, you've had a couple of little offs and stuff. What are you taking away from here and looking forward to for Tiep? Uh, well, I mean, one thing, it's definitely I drove a bit more kilometers in a car. We had only one test this year so far, and last year I almost have not driven the S1. So it's still a bit getting used, you know, finding the optimal setup, which works for my driving style. I think we made a bit, a big progress there, that's for sure. Um, that's the one thing, and for sure, yeah, I mean, the second thing, uh, also focusing uh, not maybe on a result of individual stage, but more on a championship, because we committed to the full season Nordic, and, you know, um, I think it's, yeah, sometimes uh, it's a bit smarter maybe to stay a bit back uh, instead of going all in, uh, and, yeah, keeping the better result for the championship. Thank you, mate. Well done, Yuri. Well done, Yuri. Great Thank result. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Have there we nice go. Ah, uh, thank sure. you, mate. Yeah, we've got a four-hour drive to Copenhagen Airport. I'm sure we'll find a way to make it entertaining. Um, um, and also missed our flight. <laughs> Brilliant. We can hear. I hope you guys at home can hear Yuri saying they've, uh, yeah, they're going to miss their flight. So there we go. Um, the price you pay for being on the podium. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I can live with that. It's a, it's a price we're willing to pay. So uh, I don't know if Peter's got any more interviews or not. We're seeing whether or not we can find uh, Johan Christofferson, who's second in the standings, or potentially Andreas Bakker. But uh, neither of them, of course, is down in the in the post race uh, holding area, so maybe not. Uh, let us know, Henker, where we're gonna where we're gonna go, or if we're gonna finish up. Tell you something we do need to do. If you want to come to the next round of Rally X, remember it's at Tiep in Sweden, and we might be able to take another look at the map for the venue, and then we can fill you in with some of the brilliant activities that are going to be taking part there. You can head to the Rally X website, or you can head to Ticketmaster, and you'll be able to pick up your tickets from there. Uh, and we hope that we'll see you. We've got a uh, Hoonigan-style burnyard, so we're going to be seeing some drifting. We've got some partying going, and we've got a side-by-side -side course out in the woods. Uh, what else have we got? How we've got a rally sprint. And we've got two rounds of Rally X Nordic. So if you think you might be able to make it along to Tiep, then please do head along and, and have a look. If uh, you want to grab a ticket, and come and join us. So Kevin Eriksson leads the supercar standings on 52 points ahead of Johan Christofferson and Peter Hedstrom. Backward is in fourth, Belevsky fifth. Linneman, Victor Franks with the RX2 e car, and Mike Cotam down in eighth. Faby ninth, Stephen Christensen tenth. And let's give a shout out for everyone who's here. Schnack, Ward, Roma, and Dahl are your top 14 who've provided us with a lot of entertainment today. That's it. 
We're done. We are out from uh, the brilliant Nissan Barna with its brand new Joker lap down there. I just, everybody said how much, how good that's been. What a way to open the season up. It's a great race. The finals today, not quite so good as yesterday. I think there was a bit of carnage and a, and a few retirements, but I've enjoyed it. You? Yeah, the supercar final delivered, didn't it? it that did, that yeah. was great. The pace is great in the lights. The, the juniors and the, the cross cars supply great racing all weekend and open two-wheel drivers. Open two-wheel drivers, isn't it? It's all, all, always great. Um, yeah, but the supercar final, I think, was a real indication of backward laying it all on the line to try and beat Kevin Erickson, and I think that topped the weekend off nicely. Yeah, very much. So. Hal, thank you so much, mate. Hal's thank off you, to mate. the European Championship next weekend, so you'll be able to get more of a rally cross fix there. I will be back uh, for Tiep in two weeks' time with Hal as well. Said we just told you what's going on at Tiep. How can you miss it? Cheap flight to Sweden, an hour from Stockholm, side by sides, rally sprints, rally X. I mean, come on. Get those tickets booked. Thank you so much for all your interactions on social media. Thanks to everyone who said hello to us and everyone who's worked super hard to bring in this production this weekend. See you in two weeks' time for rounds three and four of Rally X.